Why, hello. How's it going? What is up, guys? Good morning. Yeah. Yeah, Beans is doing good. He is doing good. My voice is thrown out. I'm sick. You can hear it. It's so gravelly. <laughs> yeah, all right. How's Beans? Beans is good. Yeah, puberty 3.0 is happening. Dads. Yeah, Beans is doing alright. He's currently sleeping next to his poop bin because he threw a baby fit earlier because he wants to go play, but he's not allowed to. Not even five minutes in, here have some ads. Yeah, we run them two minutes after the stream starts so you don't get any free rolls for anybody who's piling in. So, yep. It is not my birthday. Do not believe, chat. Is your voice okay? Yeah, no, I'm sick, dude. I got like a slimy throat thing going on. It's great. Not the best. Yeah, boo sick. It's fine. Why does chat lie? Chatters always lie. That's what they do. Yeah, I hate to hear it. It's fine. It's just kind of like, uh, you know, it's like, wait, I can talk all the way down here. My vocal cords are mad. I've just been coughing a bunch. <laughs> the voice changer is malfunctioning. Shut up. <laughs> uh. Is Beans fine? He is resting. He's going to need to be alone for two weeks. He can't interact with the other ferrets until then. It's a whole thing. It's kind of shitty, but it's not much we can do about it. I'm just glad he's alive. That's the biggest thing for me, you know. How do you think he developed such a large hairball? There was a tiny piece of blanket in the center of it. Beans is one of the ones that really likes to eat blankets. So he ate a piece of blanket, and then over time, fur got attached to that. It never passed, and it just slowly built up. In fact, give me just a minute. I'm going to go get it. Alright, I'm back. Alrighty, let's see. And yeah, my voice is going to be a little bit off that I am sick. But I will get better. It just takes time. 
Let's see here. Is this a typical start time? Yeah, it is. Yes, indeed. Normally starts at midnight, ends at noon. think we're good. Boop. Look, it's me. I do exist. That's right. Although I'm sick and I'm eating a bunch of Ricola. It's great. Yeah. Yeah. I'm gonna be coughing up a bunch of shit in my throat the whole time, dude. Yep. How do we know you exist? Because I do. That's right. Get some honey tea? Here, let me just... <laughs> I'll get right on that, you know? Even bots get viruses? Nah. Not a bot. Not a bot. Google AI conference? Are you going? No. That's exactly what a bot would say. Nah. I'm just gonna fight the bugs, dude. Don't worry about it. Uh, but no, it's rough, dude. It's just like in my throat. That's the part that's annoying. You guys want to see something gross? Well, I can't show you this now. Because it's cloudy and shitty. But I might be able to show it to you here. Yep, found it. This is what we pulled out of beans. Look at it. It's huge. Like... Like it's huge, dude. It's freaking enormous. I mean, look at it. Beans is a ferret. This thing is huge. Like, I don't understand how this gigantic object could be inside of beans. But basically, in the very core of this, there's a piece of blanket that just got stuck inside of his body, and then it slowly coated itself in fat and hair over time, and it made this massive hairball, and then he almost died. So we had to surgically remove it from him. And this is what I'm telling you, is like, ferrets are super obnoxious all the time, like they'll just randomly have all these medical problems. It, it's huge. It's the size of my thumb. It's, an, it's like a cat turd, dude. Yeah. So we're switching all the blankets out for sheets now. To stop this from ever being a problem again. Yeah, it's all fur and fat. That's all it is on that. So yeah, no, we're... It's, it's a big deal. Do ferrets typically cough up hairballs like cats? No, that's not a thing, dude. That's not a thing at all. So, um, yeah, we got him the whole surgery. We did everything we needed to do. And, and he's, uh, he's going to be okay. But he's got a big cut on his belly and then uh he's got to heal for about two weeks and that's the whole thing it's even the vet was like we've never seen anything that big it's ridiculous it's completely ridiculous we're calling it his beanie baby yeah or his beans pearl either way he made a pearl or a beanie baby yeah it's gross yeah yeah it's just it's just pretty ridiculous to be honest with you and now it's in this little thing. However, it's in formalin, and formalin slowly dissolves fat, so it's just getting cloudy and gross. It's slowly eating the fat off of the thing, which is nasty. Yeah. It's slowly turning into like a... like a smoothie. Yeah, it's gross. It's really gross. It's not good. It's not good, dude. <laughs> Alright, there we go. 
Why you like this? Why you like this? Mm -hmm. One moment. How's Henry doing? Henry's doing all right. It's actually I'm pretty surprised with how well Henry is doing. So I don't think I don't think he's having a bad time. I think he's having a really good time. Just takes time. He's drinking it. I already drank it. It's gone, dude. How else would I absorb Beans' power? You planning on playing Dragon's Dogma 2? Here, let's find out. Let's let's see let's see if I'm gonna play Dragon's Dogma 2. Let's look at this. I mean I was going to, but I guess not. Yeah. Not really a fan of that shit. Not even a little bit. Your voice is adorable. Dude, my voice is trashed right now. Yeah. So this is I'm gonna show you how I feel about this. Let me show you this for just a moment. Yeah, no, I'm sick right now. It sucks. I'm just gonna we're just gonna do this. I'm gonna take this. I'm just gonna just gonna put this like over here. Just gonna zoom that in. That's kind of how I feel about this right here. Just, I'm just gonna give it that. Yeah, it's pretty much where I'm at on this. Yeah, I don't understand the reasoning behind this, because to be real with you, yeah, this might make a little bit more money, but I don't feel like it's working out. I feel like it's really not working out. You know. So I feel like this was like a really unnecessary thing to do. And I feel like it's it's really not helping the game, frankly. Yeah. Yeah. I love the Andicart level, same dude. But yeah, no, my voice is shot. I'm sick right now. It's not the best. Capcom did it already with Yakuza games? You had to buy save slots for real money? Oh, no, 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 no. You don't understand. It's not just buying save slots, right? So let's say that in the game, you have a scenario where you get softlocked right now. So if you get softlocked inside of Dragon's Dogma 2 right now, you can't delete your character. So if you go into your files and modify your files to delete your character, guess what happens? You get banned from a single-player video game. Cool. What, what the hell is this shit? Like, that... I don't get it, man. It's freaking insane to me, to be honest with you. Absolutely makes no sense. Hundred percent ever touching that? Yeah. Yeah, no, it makes no sense, man. It makes absolutely no goddamn sense. I was just sitting only at at makes honestly impressive. So this is being driven by a couple of things. One, the microtransactions are insane bullshit. Denuvo's really bad, and then on top of it, it's also got really, really bad performance. So you just have all of this shit all at once. It's tanking the shit out of the game. And a lot of people that would have left negative reviews are just refunding it. So, you end up having a problem. Denuvo is like, uh, basically anti-piracy. And it's horrible for performance. It's always very, very bad. Monster Hunter Wilds will make you want to hunt monsters? I mean, yeah. We'll never know why the performance is so bad. <laughs> Rhymes with Denuvo. I know, right, dude? It's crazy. Makes you feel hopeless for Monster Hunter Wild? I mean, are they going to be using Denuvo? That's the big question, right? I'm thinking of refunding it, honestly. I think the funniest review I've seen so far, the moderators actually sent this to me, blows me away. You ready for this? Let me go grab this. There's two hilarious reviews. 
This one is very funny. Come on. You gonna you gonna do it? Jesus, what the hell? My browser was like shitting itself. Whew. Look at that. <laughs> you can purchase a good review DLC for a buck ninety nine. So that's one of them. What happened to your voice? I'm sick, dude. It sucks. Yeah. I could try to push it, but then, like, nah, it's just gonna make me more sick. Yeah, here we go. Here's the other one. In spite of the negative reviews crying about the microtransactions, this game is pretty good. Product refunded 0.9 hours on record. <laughs> This game is pretty good. Refunded. Shit is hilarious, dude. That's so goddamn funny. It's so funny. So yeah, no, I'm gonna be real with you. The game looks really cool, but this business model, you had to know this is gonna piss people off. There's no good way around this. Everybody's going to hate this. There's No one is gonna be happy about this. And the people who do pay into this system are not going to overcome the amount of lost faith that people have in your studio and your games. That's it. You know, there's no there's no benefit in doing this. You're going to lose overall. Yeah, it's shit. And it's funny too because everybody was excited about this. Is that all DLC? Yeah, because for some reason they didn't understand how to make an in-game store at all. So they made all of these one-shot DLCs like <laughs> buy a a resurrect for one of your dudes for a dollar five different times as a one purchase DLC like what are you doing what are you doing why why yeah it doesn't make any sense dude doesn't make any sense Is this... Is this to escape from jail? You can spend a dollar to escape from jail. You can spend two dollars to change your character's look. Once. <laughs> Dude, this is a single player game. This is a single player game. What in the hell, man? Fast travel is paywall? Where's the fast travel on this? No, you gotta be shitting me. Warp location marker. Obtain a port crystal, which can be set at a destination of your choice. Use a fairy stone to instantly transport your party to the port crystal's location. They've monetized the town portal? Is that what I'm seeing here? Like, seriously? Dude, that shit's awful. Like, this is like the opposite of, you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be real with you. I was excited to play this game. I was excited to play Dragon's Dogma 2. I was. I've been thinking about it for weeks. I'm not playing this. I don't even care that I could avoid doing the microtransactions. I don't even care that I could avoid any of this system whatsoever. I don't even care if I can get these items in game. I don't want to support a game in our industry that is going this direction. I won't. I'm not going to going to keep playing Helldivers. I don't give a shit.
very fluffy. so many ferrets but yeah I mean I'm gonna be real with you dude I don't I don't want to engage in this type of business practice I don't think this is very good for our industry I think it's a bad look I think it it sucks because I know that there are people that worked very very hard on this game and did a very good job on this game there's a ton of developers that worked on this but I don't want to engage with a game that is doing business practices like this. I, I don't like seeing this in our industry. I don't like our industry moving in this direction. And I think it's something that I don't want to monetarily support. And that's kind of how I feel about it. The game could be amazing. The developers are not at fault for this. It is absolutely a marketing decision and likely a decision by Capcom, you know, and their, their predatory business practices wing, otherwise known as marketing in this case. I find this to be disgusting. I find it to be incredibly distasteful, especially in a single-player game. The idea of, of banning players from a single-player game because they have to delete their save file because they get into a situation in which the game is soft-locked is also equally disgusting. This is something that I'm just not going to play. I'm going to completely avoid it. That's it. Yeah, no, my voice is messed up because I'm sick. That's just kind of how it goes. It'll get fine over the next couple of days. It was much worse two days ago, so... Yeah. Yep. <coughs> Sucks, dude. Doesn't need to be like that. No, it's not COVID. Thankfully, not COVID. Imagine, yeah, I mean, like, imagine if I did that for Heartbound. Imagine if I did it for Champions of Breakfast. Imagine if I did it for Block Game. Every time you die, pay a dollar to keep your gear, you know? It's, it's just not stuff that I think is any good. I don't think it's good for us at all. And, like, I'm going to be real with you. If this was a free-to-play game, I would understand this. But this is a $70 game. This is a $70 game. Like, what What are you doing? What are you doing? Like, this is pay-to-lose shit. Because the game is already $70, and then you're adding all of this shit on top of it. Like, why? Why? That's insane to me. No, it's not. It's 101.95. No, it's right there. For US dollars, it's $70. Right there. It's very clearly $70. Yeah, if you're talking about Australian or you're talking about Canadian prices, yeah. I'm talking about the US price, right? So we already have a problem where AAA games right now are going into a direction of $70 games. And we already have kind of a thing like this. Like a $1 game, people are like, oh, that's shovelware. $3 game, they're like, oh, that might be an arcade title. $5 game, they're like, oh, that's like a normal arcade title. $10 game, they're like, oh, that's indie. $15, they are like, oh, that's kind of a premium indie. $20 game, they're like, wow, that's a really good indie. Yeah, I know my I'm, my voice is trashed right now, dude. It'll be fine, I promise. And then you've got, like, the $40 to $60 range, and you're like, oh, that's a AAA. This is a generous AAA. This is a AAA. And then $70, everyone sees this as a scam. People hate this. They're like, oh, that's a scam. It's a ripoff, right? This is This is what people feel. So you've already got that $70 price tag. You've already got the, I hate this price price tag. And then on top of it, you have all this shit. And it's a single player game. Like why? It's, it's not necessary to do this. It's not necessary to do this. $70 should be the deluxe. This isn't even relevant, dude. Like this could be fine at $70. If the game was single player and didn't have all this shit, I don't think anyone would mind. But it's not, it, it, it's just not. There's, this shit is here. So it doesn't, doesn't make any sense, dude. Just go play Helldivers. Just play Helldivers. You know, like that's, that's it. Go do Baldur's Gate 3. Yeah, go play Elden Ring. Look, Elden Ring is $60. It's $60, and then they have an expansion. That's it. So like, why? Why? And it's very clear that the general market has completely rejected this. 
And it's going to go, it's unfortunately, it's going to go down as something really negative. And the thing that sucks about it too is it looks freaking rad, man. I mean, look at that. That looks cool as shit. That looks cool as shit. The gameplay looks cool as shit. But I'm not going to support a game that does shit like this. I'm just not. I won't do it. Because I don't like seeing that shit in our industry. Those are my standards, man. I'll miss out on a cool experience because they're moving our industry in the wrong direction. I'm fine with that. So... Yeah. How can a game be so bad and so good at the same time? Microtransactions. That's how. <coughs> Alright. Yeah, dude, I am... My voice is trashed right now. Why is prices going up when it's supposed to be cheaper for digital? Because the US dollar is worth less today than it was yesterday. <laughs> That's why. Yeah, my voice is trashed. Yes. So, I'm going to guarantee you that for the rest of the stream, people are going to be coming and be like, You sound funny today. You sound weird. Hey, hey, Thor, your voice is weird. I'm sick. I'm sick, you goblins. I swear to God. I swear to God. It's going to sound like that, dude. So, I was actually thinking about adding some new bosses, too. I'm going to save this out. I want to add some new dungeon stuff. So, let's go draw something. So this is all of the different rooms inside of Ragnar's Bastion right now. And I think what I want to do is I actually want to extend this portion here. So I want to extend this portion here. And I want to extend this portion here. So we're going to add some new rooms, I think is what we're going to do. Yeah. Looks good, the new voice just Shut up, dude. I'm just sick. It sucks. Did Thor ever find out how he got owned that one time in Greyhack? Yeah, I got owned that one time in Greyhack because uh, streamer mode didn't work yet. Yeah. Thoughts on the Broken Arc Tour for Helldivers 2? So, like, that actually makes me really sad. I'm kind of disappointed. So, they've got... They've got a bug out for this. Look at this. This is actually in the official announcements. We have identified the cause of the freezes that many players have been experiencing, and we're in the process of building a patch to fix it that should be ready to deploy early next week. In the meantime, we advise against using the Arc Thrower, Arc Shotgun, and Tesla Tower, as those appear to be the link to the issue. You actually can't play with the Arc Thrower right now. It'll just crash your client at random. Any lightning effects in the game cause this to be a problem. Like, pfft. Just disable the weapons, frankly. <laughs> yeah, no, it's insane. We actually couldn't play it. The Arc Thrower works fine for you. We couldn't get through five minutes of gameplay with it. It was crashing everyone in the party. So, like, I, I don't know, dude. Maybe they fixed it and they just didn't say anything to anybody? Because, like... Yeah, I'm sick. I'm sick. I have a cold, so, like, everything sounds weird. 
Not fixed? Yeah, no, it just crashes randomly. Maybe it's GPU specific? It might be. But, like, the weapons are basically just crashing everybody. The other thing that's really wrong... Let me pull this up. Missing a tail. No tail. Preferred sketch human colds? Yeah, but not this one. My cold's gone. It's just my... Because I cough so much. I was coughing so much before that my vocal cords are like... Hissed. So I'm not actually sick anymore, thankfully. Just healing. So I stopped having this problem. Make all the faces you want at me. That one's name is Peep. After this... Yeah. But no, I was coughing a bunch. My uh, vocal cords are upset. That's it. Shouldn't you rest your vocal cords? Meh. It's kind of whatever. <laughs> Why is the mold name Avocado? Oh, wait. I have to set these up. One sec. Speaker bot. Where's my speaker bot, dude? There we go. Oh god, wrong button. Dralens has obtained the cursed quest. Oh. Get the cursed quest, huh? Let's see. What do you get? Did it not go through? Where's my answer TTS? But Why did this not go through? It's not hooking to Discord and I don't know why. Uh. 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 It's also using like a shitload of processing power. What the hell is going on with this thing? So I don't know why, but StreamerBot is using two and a half gigs of memory right now. And it's pissed. And it's not sending things to Discord. I'm going to try pressing this again. Atlas has a Twitch with 500 bits said chat. I need your help. As I am the only runner for block game president, I should win. However, there are murmurs of a second party forming to counter me. Why isn't this Please working? chat, if you hear of any false new report it to your nearest Malcorp official. It is only with your help that we shall achieve greatness and wealth upon these barren block lands. This ad was paid for by the Mal Association. Privately funded by the California Hotel Collection. Why is this not sending stuff to Discord? You've got to be shitting me. One moment, Discord's updating. Yeah, no, something's wrong. It's been laggy, to be honest. What's been laggy? No, I don't want to know anything about Discord Nitro. Go away. Stop it. What 
the hell's going on here? The timestamp is there. Yeah, this doesn't make any sense. The Twitch URL is set correctly. Like, it's right here. So... But? I don't understand. No, I can't turn it off and on and get it to lose all of your guys' alerts. No, I can't restart. Guys. <laughs> Not restarting StreamerBot. No. That would delete all of your alerts. We're not doing that. What if I asked really, really nicely? I would still say no to you. Hmm. It's not really about an export function. It makes me wonder why this is happening in the first place. It doesn't make any sense. Possible to dump and restore it? We'd have to build a function for that. And then dump it out and restore it. It'd be a whole mess. I just don't understand why this is happening. Because it stored the value correctly. If we go to the next one, it does action queue decrease. Which is doing correctly here. Calculate uptime from local global. Are Discord webhooks just not working? Here, one sec. Line one, line two, alert time. Alert time is being set. Variables. Non persistent globals. No, this doesn't make any sense. Why is this broken? Yeah, it's showing the actions is completed. Juicem. And it's just not dumping them into the thing. And it's using 2.6 gigs of memory right now. What the living shit. Like, what the hell am I looking at here? Look at this. I'm sending it all over to Juicem. Doesn't make any sense. And it's showing these completed. So... What? <laughs> the hell's going on? I started it just before the stream, too. Yes, it doesn't make any sense. Doesn't make any sense at all. That's such a weird problem, dude. Hmm. Okay, so... It looks like... I'm gonna go look at the log file. That's the only thing I can do at this point. I'm going to find out what's going on in the logs. I'm going to take this, put it over here. I'm going to take a look at the log file. Because this is really, really not okay. I don't understand why this is happening. It should be dumping out the information correctly. Logs. Where's my logs? Where's today's log? What day is it today? 3.23. Grabbing the whole log. Discord. Unable to fetch your Discord avatar at the moment. 
Okay. Why is it pulling... <laughs> what in the living shit? Why is it doing YouTube client get my video over and over again? Dear God, the nightmare is real. Oh dear. So even just from today, even just running before this stream, we're at 23,819 log lines. <laughs> Why is it so many logs, dude? Holy shit. It's a massive log. I'm gonna try to get it to dump this. One sec. Alright, hold up. Yeah, this is an insane ass amount of logs. It's already 12,760 kilobytes. Hey, okay. I'm gonna hit this button. Atlas has a Twitch with 500 bits said ha 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 Thor, you thought you'd be rid of me that easily. Nay, for I, Mal, will take the presidential seat of block game. Give me your hungry, your rich, your greedy masses yearning to earn money. For Malcorp shall rise, rise I say. You shall not disappoint me block game, as I do all that I do with you in mind. Like a pearl I swish around my enormous moor. You went in as little grains of sand, and will come out a gem. It's not even putting this in the logs. This, this action isn't even in the logs. Buh? Buh? Well, what am I supposed to do with that? And it says it's fully completing the action, even though it's obviously not. Because action queue decrease is actually going off. What do you bet anything it's doing that thing that it did last time, where one of these actions is failing, and when it fails, it just kills everything after it? What do you bet? What do you bet? I bet that's exactly what's happening. Because this is working. This is working. We know those two are working. I wonder if this is what's breaking. I'm just going to put that at the end real fast. Just to see what happens. Because if it's reading the log file, if it's reading the file incorrectly, maybe this will fix it. Zero siphon zero with 500 bits said, hey Thor, looking That's forward exactly to seeing some shenanigans. Happening. Loving the content so far and learning new things. By the way, is that your glass is glitching out? You might want to check your algorithms of your AI coding. 7 septillion 777 sextillion 777 quintillion 777 quadrillion 777 trillion 770... Who made you this way, I swear to God. So with that in mind, why does it think that Line Tune contains that symbol now? Because the only thing this is checking for is the backtick symbol. Which it shouldn't contain. It's just checking to see if they have that because they're trying to do a breakout because you can do at everyone. Why the hell is this suddenly thinking that every one of the messages contains this? Why? Why? <sighs> Why? Why is this different between last version and this version? That doesn't make any sense. Read lines from ttsq.txt. All right, hold up. So go back into StreamerBot. Just streaming, and then files. ttsq.txt. 
Where the hell are you? Buh. There we go. Yes, reload it. Stop. And we can see right here, if we go and look at this. This message doesn't contain that at all. I don't understand. Because this is only checking to see if that line contains this symbol. Which, this check has always been there. This doesn't make any sense. I'm gonna run it again. Atlas has a Twitch with 500 bits. And now it works some fine. chatters will ask, why vote Mal for block game what? president? Well, let me tell you of my plans. I shall change every song in the block game mod to Mr. Blue Sky, what? recorded by Penguin and myself. I will also enforce the Ferengi rules of acquisition. Every woman and child shall be safe in block game. However, on every Thor's day, the blood moon will rise over Merc. I number. We will take this realm by storm. Mal's tomorrow, a better tomorrow. So all I had to do is I had to move that check and then move it back. Okay, you know, that's fine. Yeah. <coughs> I don't know why, but you know, that's fine. That's fine to make. I got nothing. Actually, we have to move it to there. I'm gonna try it again. Alucard with $5 said Dragon's what? Dogma 2 getting not so good reviews, but the game is pretty fun despite the major performance issues. Hope you're able to enjoy it. Why are some of these working and some of them not? Sooner in Texas 10 with 500 bits said, Hey Thor, I just wanted to say thank you. I have been working on my game for months now and I'm getting close to a beta. All because of your insight and encouragement. Stay awesome. That one just didn't go through. Let's disable this. Killer Squid 2603 with 500 bits said, Did you know that if you put a banana into the exhaust pipe of a car, you are a very weird person? Also, and more importantly, how is Beans? This one worked. Nekowari underscore with 500 bits said good morning Thor. Hope you and the goblins have an amazing morning. No. So this doesn't make any sense. Here's the reason why. That isn't a quotation mark. It's a back tick. A back tick is not the same as a quotation mark. That's a very different, different symbol. So, it doesn't make any sense. Yes. I've tried retyping it now. Like, it's the difference here between that and this. They're very different symbols. I'm trying to get rid of the back tick, specifically the back tick. To stop people from doing, like, Texas speech injection on our Discord. So, what the shit? Is that thing detecting that? Okay, I'm gonna re-enable this. Yeah, Beans is doing good. He's doing really good. He's recovering. It's gonna take him two weeks, just about. Evangeline with two dollars said, I hope See, Beans is doing through. well and you're good too. That one has a your, so that one's working fine. No, something's wrong here, dude. Something is super wrong here, because look, this has a your, and that one's fine. Is this his voice? I'm sick right now. So kind of, my voice is deeper and weirder than normal. It's a little flat affect right now. I can't has, have as much emotion in my voice currently. There's not much I can do about it. API issues? There wouldn't be an API here. There's no API. I mean, maybe it, maybe it's on Discord side. It seems like an intermittent issue with the webhook. That's the only thing I can think of. That's the only thing I can think of.
Like here, we'll hit it again. Casey underscore case with that 500 bits said, Hey Thor, messaged you like three weeks ago about being an XR dev for a college. I have had multiple businesses come up to me in the last few weeks asking for XR training software for their factories, facilities. Any mm. idea how I should even begin thinking about pricing an app like that? Multiple businesses come up in the fact last few weeks for the XR training software for their factories and facilities. You'd have to come up with a rate on a per person basis, frankly. Like that's the only thing I can think of, you know? Multiple businesses come up. XR training software for the factories and facilities. Yeah, you'd have to do it based on the user's license or based on a company wide license at that point. I don't even know how you would how you would price that, frankly. It's not really my my side of the house for pricing that kind of stuff. I don't know what the going rate is for that. I have no idea. I have no clue whatsoever for that. Yeah. I wish I could, but it's not something I've ever done. I, no, nobody was putting in strange characters, Joseph. The only thing I can think of is that Discord just dropped the connection randomly. Because one of them was fine, one of them was not fine, then one of them was fine again, and it didn't seem like I changed anything on my end at all. And one of them doesn't have any messages in it because it's actually my text that I inject. It's it's literally the text that I inject into it, which is the Curse Quest one. The Curse Quest one didn't go through. Despite that one having no user-defined text whatsoever. So, I got nothing on that one, man. Yeah, I think Discord's just shitting itself. Yeah. I, I think this is actually a Discord problem. Also, I heard that Nacho fell in the soup. Just want to see this. I heard Nacho flopped into the soup. Let's see. Oh, 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 oh. Soup, man. Just, there it is. See, in that moment, he could see the soup. You can see his little face, and then, oh. Oh. Why does he have to do this? Jesus. He's so covered in soup. <laughs> He's so... <coughs> He's so covered in soup. Look at this. That's the most ferret moment I've ever seen in my life, dude. Multi-soup drifting, dude. Oh my god. Oh my god. He lands in it. He slips in it. He's screaming. Look at him. <gasps> Look at this one. Actually, I have a... I have an idea of what that looks like. Hold up. That was weird. Showing Discord down on the other monitor. Uh, where is it? I have the exact image that this reminds me of. I think that's whiskey. Same kind of face, dude. Like, look at him. You know? <laughs> oh, hey Shay, come here. I have to show you this. Look at this. <laughs> uh. Ugh. Well, that's a little bit better. And it's so good. Dude, he's losing it. He's losing it. I love that he runs in a circle. Like, what the hell is going on? Why is this happening to me? Good old soup flop. So, yeah. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to build some new areas out here today. And we're going to extend Krognar's Bastion to be a longer dungeon. I also kind of want to do the same for... I think Sunken Cells is in a good spot. I think that one's fine. I don't think there's anything wrong there. So I think that one's fine. I'm just going to do this to Krognar's Bastion, which would be good. Also, I'm going to go get a bubbly. So I'll be right back. One moment.
All right, I'm back. It's with sugar? No, 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 no. No sugar at all. It's like TV static with a flavor. Uh, it's the blackberry one. It's really good. All right, let's do the cursed quest now that this shit is working. Although I need to go back and find out who got it, so. Technology, it's always broken, chat. All right, let's see. It was... Drillance, are you there? Drillance, you there? Are you here, Drillance? Mm hmm? Mm hmm? There you are. Mm hmm? Any update with the hacking situation since IAP lead? Yeah, I put out a new video. We actually have everything wrapped up. Everything's pretty much done. We're just waiting on um, Respawn at this point to actually announce their fixes because they're fixing everything. They have everything. They have everything they need. Um, they've done a really good job. So I put out a secondary video of just like all of our stuff talking about it. And here you go. There it is. So if you haven't read this stuff yet, if you haven't watched the video, it's like two hours and 54 minutes long. Just skim around it. Uh, do stay away from any other videos out there that are just like clipping me. I've been seeing a couple of these that are kind of stupid. We're like, like it's like two minutes of like a dude talking about it and then like 20 minutes of me talking. And they've just taken my whole video and like cut it up into like pieces, which is dumb. So if you see that shit... They didn't get permission to do that, and they're just they're just being dumb about it. So, and they're cutting it up in ways that lose critical context. So that's really annoying as well. Uh, usually, trying to do it to generate clicks off of like portions of the investigation rather than the whole thing. It's really goddamn annoying. Our inspector rating with a party of two hundred eighty nine. What's up, dude? My voice is shot today. How's it going? It's great. Yeah, John Hammond's awesome as hell. He was great to talk to. Really great to talk to. Mouse on paint? Yeah. There's a mouse. Mouse. That's a weird ass. Whoop. You freak. I know, right? Yeah, some person tried to take it out of context. Kind of stupid. One person? No, dude. It was dozens. I've actually been filing DMCAs against everybody who's been doing this because so many people from the Apex community have been trying to take my video cut it up into tiny little pieces and then release that out of context to be like, oh, the, this major hacker is saying that it's this thing. And I'm like, no, I didn't. Shut up. DMCA'd. And they're just taking my shit out of context completely. It's it's really disingenuous. It's just there for clickbait. And I, I have I will have no part in it, frankly. None. Yeah, they can eat my entire ass. They get nothing. They 100% get nothing. It's outrageous to me, dude. And it's even worse because like, It'll, it'll literally be like a 20-minute video. And and 30 seconds of it is that dude. And the rest is just clips of me. And I'm like, no, dude. That's not going to happen. It's definitely not going to happen. Like, you're going to get owned. Why didn't you stream yesterday? Uh, Beans almost died. We've got ads. We're going to wait for the ads. I'll talk about it afterwards. Yeah. And then we're going to get to the curse quest right after that, too. Yeah, clickbait pisses me off. Wasn't it your day off? Yeah, but I didn't stream. I didn't stream on Thursday, which is my day off, and then I didn't stream on Friday, which is not my day off. Yeah, I hate clickbait shit. Pisses me off. Yeah, Killer Squid, I might do that today. I'm not feeling great, so... Is TTS safe to do? Yeah, 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 it's good. Yeah, and Drillance is here. We're just waiting in the ads, dude. <laughs> Beans almost died. Ads. It's funny as shit. Yeah, no, I don't sound good. I am okay, though. I am okay. I'll likely end the stream early today, just because my voice is shot. But I'll be okay. Don't worry about it. I am doing okay, our inspector. Don't worry. Don't worry. The ads are almost over. Ugh.
Let your voice rest. No, it'll be fine. Eat some pho? I actually had some yesterday. For exactly that reason. God, I love pho. All right. So ads are over. So anyway, um, beans. Beans is one of our ferrets, right? Beans has a habit of eating blankets. Over the last six months, he likes eating little pieces of blankets. He always passes them. There's no problems. Until now. Uh, he suddenly dropped a bunch of weight. He had a bunch of problems. We didn't know what was going on. And we felt a mass in the center of his stomach. Now, the thing was, is the mass was about the size of my thumb. It immediately made us think that it was juvenile lymphoma. Because he's about the right age for that. And the mass is too big to be something for him to swallow. Didn't make any sense. So, we had the option of euthanizing him or exploratory surgery. Because of you guys watching the Ferret Channel, we have the money to just say, no, let's do the surgery and see if we can save his life. Knowing full well that there was a very good chance that if it was juvenile lymphoma, we'd never be seeing him again. That'd be that. Because if it was that, there'd be no way they can finish the operation. They opened him up, and they found it was not juvenile lymphoma. It was this. This is... A gigantic hairball. The size of my whole thumb. He had swallowed a piece of blanket. The blanket stayed inside of his body. And then his hair started connecting to it and getting stuck on it. And fat that he had eaten got stuck to that. And it slowly calcified into basically a pearl. He made a beanie baby. It's enormous. It's actually sitting right here. But the liquid that it's in is like a preservative liquid, and it's slowly dissolving the fats. So it's turned gross. Yeah, he made a beans pearl. So they surgically extracted this from his body. Um, he was able to survive, and he is currently in an enclosure right next to me over there. And he has a big, you know, suture down his stomach. And it's going to take him about two weeks to recover. He's not out of the woods yet. I'm a little bit worried about him because... That was major surgery, and this object is enormous. So, why did you keep that thing? You you telling me you wouldn't keep it? He made it for me. Why would I not keep it? I keep everything like this. It's weird. It stays on my desk. Yeah. We're slowly building a box. Actually, do you want to know something funny? Do you know why I'm keeping it? I talked to Shay about this. I'm going to keep every object we ever get extracted from a ferret. And the reason why... It's because I want it to be a cautionary tale for new ferret owners. To show them, this is what you're in for. You need to very much so pay attention to what ferrets are going after and what they eat. It's literally going to be, it's a collection of scary objects. Be like, look, they will eat everything. Everything. So I have two of these objects now. Yeah, one of them almost killed a ferret and the other one did kill a ferret. Horrible shit, but... Keeping those types of objects is one of those grim reminders of, like, you really have to pay attention. Yeah. Is that a rotted peanut? No. It's mostly fat and hair, which is weird. The other object is this. One second. How to prevent this? We are not putting fleece in there anymore. This was the other object. It's a small piece of rubber. Rubberized plastic. We got it out of the stomach of a ferret named Rose. We actually renamed her to that. She did not make it. She was one that was brought to us that had not eaten in 11 days. She didn't survive. There's not much we could do. We did everything we could, but there wasn't anything we could do. Tried. Failed. Sucks. Yeah. So I keep these objects, and I'm going to be putting up them on the website to show people. You really have to pay attention to them. With this, we found that ferrets like eating fleece. Fleece is generally the most used bedding for ferrets, and we're trying to find a better solution. So we switched over to thin sheeting, very thin sheets, because it seems like they just like chewing on the thicker fleece. They just like it. So we're, we have to move away from it. So we immediately went off and, and moved away from it. We got a bunch of sheets yesterday. I went and bought a whole bunch of sheets, and we're just switching it all out. That means, Zach, that you knew you could tell something was wrong. Back leg muscle weakness wouldn't eat and was light sensitive. He clearly felt bad. He also started grinding his teeth. So when ferrets are feeling immense pain, like they're in serious pain, 
they start grinding their teeth in a very loud clicking way. And he was suddenly just doing all of these things at once. So this thing had been building up in his body for months. Don't know how long, frankly. Just slowly over time until it got so big that it was causing him pain. In fact, the biting thing that he was doing where he's biting other ferrets ears and he was being really aggressive and mean, it might have just been because he's acting out from pain from this. We just didn't know. He was slowly building it up over time, and there was no way to tell that was inside of him. So we've removed that from him, and he's in really, really good spirits. He's just, you know, kind of tired. That's about it. The scary thing is that most people will not realize something is wrong until it's too late. Yeah. Even with this, it's like crazy. Because this is the last time he ate blankets was months ago. Literally like th like two or three months ago. So this likely was inside of his body for that amount of time and just slowly building up these layers after layer, you know. Wild, it didn't kill him. Absolutely wild. If you really want to see, like, the size of this, here's my thumb next to it. And you can see, like, that in the palm of my hand. It's huge. It's a massive object, dude. It's, it's not small at all. And you have to remember, like, if I hold two thumbs up next to each other, that's, like, the width of his body, frankly. So, like, that's... Yeah, they actually grabbed it, and this was this is so dense with hair and fat that it is it is radio dense, meaning that X rays don't go through it. It shows like a big black mass in the body, and they're like, "Oh, that's not good." And then they try to use ultrasound. They're like, "Oh shit, it absorbs that too," because it's just a a thick mass of hair and fat. There's no way to get through it. How is he? He's sleeping. He had his big pain meds. So he's, he's got his pain meds. Can I see him? I'm going to show you guys Beans. Beans broke the X, right? No, he made a pearl, dude. So this is what he normally looks like. You got him here. There he is. Hey, Beanie boy. You got a little bruise? You're mostly, mostly skinned. Hey, buddy. So here he is. He's not looking so good. Sniff, sniff. Hey, buddy. Yeah. You're all shaved. Come here. He's doing okay, though. Sniff, sniff. Sniff, sniff. Sniff, sniff. Oh, my God. He's just going to sleep for a second there. Where are you going? <laughs> Where are you going? Yeah. You can't go to bed on me. Because I'm really tired. He wants to run here. I'm not allowed. Not run. So he's doing okay, but he's... I want to say about 30% of his body is shaved right now. He's got his big suture that's slowly healing, and uh, he's very tired. So, And he he's also got an ear infection. <laughs> and he's also got ear mites, which is great. All of it at once. It's fantastic. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He can go with Bandit? No, he has to be alone right now. The reason why is if another ferret messes with that suture, it could kill him. So, just let him be let him be alone. Let bro rest? Yeah. That's the idea. He's got two weeks alone. Yeah. How many followers did you get since the Apex stuff happened? I don't know. It was kind of a burst. Huge amount of people. Are you okay? Voice is shot. It'll be fun. Just need some time. Thank you very much. Holy shit, dude. XDNB Panda with his 69 gifted subs. Dude. Number one. Nice. Number two. Holy shit. That is a lot of subs, dude. That is outrageous. Thank you very, very much. Sure, Lance. Are you ready? Are you ready? Yeah, I'm slowly going to get my voice back over the next few days. Just takes time. Is this what coding is? Sometimes. Depends on what I'm doing. Remember, this category is software and game development. You know, we're making video games. Were you sick? Yeah. Best way I can describe it. Is that liquid death? No, it's bubbly. It's just TV static. 
should I drink beer or have breakfast? <laughs> I don't know, dude. Yeah, I've been having a week. It's not a great, not a great week this week. Let me tell you. Let me see, Dre Lance. Let me see what you got. Art, I can't dance. Bum leg. No worries. That's fine. So you choose art. Let's see. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah, dude. Honestly, it's it's just one of these things that no matter what happened, no matter how how stressful it is, he got to live. So thank you. Yeah. Because that doesn't happen without you guys. You guys kick ass. Thank you very, very much. Oh, by the way, I managed to get the internet working in the new house. Hey. So while I think of an art thing, uh, I actually managed to get the internet working in the new house, and the way that I did it is pretty funny. So, most ISPs allow a hotspot, but some ISPs, like most most uh, phone companies, they allow a hotspot. And the hotspot capped out at 60 gigs. And then it was like, oh, I'm going to drop your connection, right? Well, turns out that entire area has really, really good 5G coverage. Really, really good 5G coverage. So, I contacted the phone company and they were like, no, nah, we don't allow internet there. And I was like, what if you did allow internet there? And they're like, nah. So I just kept calling different stores. I cherry-picked stores for about, I want to say six hours. And to one of them was like, yeah, we could totally give you one of those. It's pretty great, actually. So now we don't have a hotspot. We have 5G internet with no cap and no reductions in bandwidth. So... We should have unlimited bandwidth. Right now, I have a stream running over there that's going up at 8 megs a second and has been running for 48 hours. So if we're looking at that, I believe... Let me see. How many megabits in a gig? A gigabyte. Oop. It's like 8,000, right? So we've got... 8 per second times 60, so that's our minute, times 60, so that's an hour, times 24, so that's a day, and then divide that by 8,000. And it is 86.4 gigs of data per day. Times that by 2, we're at 172.8 gigs already. And even better, I actually have it doing download at the same time because I'm making it watch its own stream. So times that by 2. We've done 345 gigs in two days. And it hasn't limited it yet. Hey, so it looks like it might be good. Yeah, it looks like it might be good. And we're doing it completely over 5G. So I don't think there's a problem anymore. And I think we might be able to move the ferrets into the new house, which would be kind of nice. Yeah, pretty happy with that. Which stream? Uh, no, it's just a tester stream. It's just running it on the side. One terabyte by the end of the week, Lamal. I know, right? That's exactly what I was looking for. It's like, hey, is this going to be working? So we're going to move. No, ain't no way that'll last. It will. Do you know why? Because it's the contract. And the contract says there is no data limits and there is no throttling of any kind. So it's unlimited bandwidth and no throttling. Feels good. Yeah, for now. Yeah, for now. It's called a contract. We signed it. Yeah. Yeah. Feels pretty good, man. Good old 5G home internet. Oh, God. I'm going to sign into it right now. Boop. It's pretty good, though, to be real with you. I'm pretty happy with this outcome.
Yeah, we don't have a problem with that. Yeah. So we actually have no issues here whatsoever. The contract is the contract in the United States, and the contract does not have anything in there for that. We're allowed to use as much data as we want, however much we want to, over the network. No problems. Yep. No problems. No issues. What is the up-down expected? Um, so I'm actually getting 20 up, which is the only thing that I have to care about. Yeah, all the fine print. No problems there. So with that in mind, I'm getting 20 up. We only need 6 up for the ferret stream, so it's fine. Yep. You love your contracts like a D&D, &D, real D&D &D devil? I'm going to be honest with you. If you sign a contract with me, you better damn well read it, because I'm going to fit to that contract, and you better as well. A contract is a contract, my dude. And if you don't want something to happen, and it's in the contract, then you better get it removed before you sign it. Hmm. Hmm. And I will fight you about that contract. Yeah, that's how it works. Contract. Contract matters, dude. Dude sounds like Markiplier's twin older brother. Nice. Stealing my contract back from the Scrooge McDuck vault? Hmm. We signed a contract together? It just says contract on it. Both sign our names with two witnesses and a notary. I love notaries, dude. Do you read TOS too? Yeah. I always read the TOS no matter what it is. I always read any of the EULA stuff. I read absolutely everything. A lot of the times companies, especially game companies, will hide jokes inside of the EULA, by the way. There's a lot of really funny ones with that that I've seen in the past. And then also, um, yeah, prenups fall into that category too. Absolutely. Always read that shit. Read if you're gonna if you're gonna get married and you're gonna get a prenup, you should probably all parties should probably read that, to be honest with you. Yeah. Reading TOS and EULAs take like weeks? Yeah, they do. Anytime I'm going to sign a contract with another business, dude, you think I'm not going to read that? Do you, know, do you know how many times we've actually had a contract come by that's like a sponsor or something like that, and the contract is like insane? Like, and then you're like, whoa, what, what do you mean you own my firstborn? And they're like, ah, shit, he noticed. <laughs> of course there's some wild shit that goes in there. Because a contract is don't ask, don't get. So of course they're going to over ask. And you're going to go, no, no. And they're like, well, what about this little piece? And you're like, no, you're not doing that one either. And like, okay, well, what if we reworded it like this so it doesn't look like it's the same, but it is definitely the same. And you're like, no, you're not doing that shit either. It's the same. It's the same with any of this. So when I'm dealing with an ISP, I'm reading the contract. And if they try to touch any of the stuff that I have, I go, hey, do you see how the contract says that you're not allowed to do that? Now you're in breach of contract. Would you like to go to court? And they go, oh, well, let's just fix that problem then. I go, cool. This is generally called the curing window. You have a cure time for the contract. It's like, you're in violation of contract. Fix it, or I sue you. And they go, hmm, well, I guess I'm going to go fix it then. And then they do, and we don't have a problem anymore. Yeah. Kind of how that goes. All you have to do is scare them with it, too. Be like, you've you violated the contract. Here's where you violated it. Also, thank you for that raid, Paige. The raiding party of 167. My voice is shot right now. It's really shit. So I hope you're having a good day. Yeah, you're awesome as hell, dude. You violated the law. Exactly. Yeah, I'm up in Washington State. Your voice is as good as ever? No, it's not, dude. My voice is so messed up right now, it's broken. I can hear it. Even if you guys can't hear it, I know some people can tell. I can definitely tell. My voice is really messed up right now. Ugh. Slowly getting better, you know. Man, yeah, it's... My voice is fried. Voice changer is broken. Shut up. It sounds shot. What happened to it? Sick. Had a cold. It's not good. Thor, if you were a smoker, I, get, I have to talk like this because I smoke ten packs a day, Chet. If you don't want to sound like this, then, then you get, you got to stop smoking before you start. That's right. I'm like one of those dudes that they like bring around elementary schools to scare kids from smoking. That's exactly what's happening to me right now. It's great. 
It's fantastic. Yeah, voice sounds like you were sick, yeah. That's nah, shit. I was just coughing a bunch on it. <clears throat> no, that's not supposed to encourage you to smoke. Now it's having the opposite effect. Great. Fantastic. How you doing, Cardboard Cowboy? What is up? Yeah, dude, smoker's cough. Definitely. So, Dralance. Let's think about this. What do we need to do with this? What are we going to do with this? Looking at all my plan information stuff. Let's see. Yeah, so over that 5G plan that I actually have, I'm getting 260 down over 5G. And I'm getting about 18 up, which is nuts. And it's just a little box that I just put on the wall. <laughs> it's not even a wired connection. So I was like, all right, man. Like, that seems pretty fine to me. Yeah. And it's just been running, so it's like, buh? Buh? You know? I wish 5G was in my hick town, but it's not. Yeah, it sucks. You you wish it wasn't shit. Yeah, it, it's crazy good internet for what it is. And it costs me like 40 a month, so it's not even bad. I got 40 up in my 5G. Really is wild. Yeah. So on your 5G setup that you actually have, Eternal, you don't have any data caps on it either, do you? 5G specs at its full potential are amazing. Yeah, they're crazy. Yeah, I don't have any data caps. I have no data caps at all. And there's no throttling or anything. So it was like, okay, we can just run this and it's fine. You're not buying a 3G gigabyte sec? No, we definitely are doing that. This is the interim where we can get the ferrets moved to the new house because they're going to have so much more space and it's just going to be a better setup. So starting tomorrow, we can start moving them, which is such a big deal, like a really big deal. Are data caps still a thing? Yeah, generally what they do is they'll be like, hey, a certain amount of data, and then after that, they throttle you. So you just get less throughput. And with this, I don't have to worry about weather, because I could have gone Starlink, but Starlink has, anytime there's cloud cover, it just runs like shit, right? You would have ferrets? We run a ferret rescue, my dude. Yeah. What about the roof? We're getting the roof replaced. We can be in the house when it gets replaced. So, like, that's not going away, right? Isn't 5G kind of weak if you aren't close to a tower? There's a tower here, there, there, and here. And the house is here. That thing runs like butter, my dude. <laughs> uh, you feeling okay? I have I had a cold and my voice is shot because of it. Yeah. Feels pretty good. Feels pretty good. I know fiber is better. It's going to take two and a half months to get it installed, my dude. Butter doesn't run, though. Put it in the microwave. You'll find out how fast it runs. Well, I do want to play Persona 3 Reloaded. I really do. Yeah. <coughs> you ever get sick of explaining the same thing? Nah. People want to know answers, man. Nothing wrong with people asking. All right, so, Art, Drillance, let me think about this. Actually, you know what? Cardboard Cowboy is here. Hey, Cardboard Cowboy, do you know I have to eat your hat because you didn't win at the Stream Rewards? You know that, right? And you still haven't sent me that hat. So, Drillance, are you still here? I hope you are. I hope you're still here, Drillance. Hmm. Mm -hmm. It's a curse quest, yeah. Imagine the shipping at it, right? I'm gonna make sure he's still here. <laughs> oh, he is still here. Okay. I'm here. 
watch this all day, bud. All right. You have to draw... You have to draw a comic of me eating Cardboard Cowboy's hat. That's right. And I think, I think at least one of the frames... At least one of them. Let's see if we can find this. One of them has to be me making this face. That's right. It has to this this face, and I'm eating the hat. You got to draw it too. Yeah, you got to draw me eating that hat, eating cardboard cowboy's hat. This is going to become a series, definitely, definitely fun. Look at that face, dude. Look how many necks I have. Did you guys see that the uh, Block Wars Twitter actually edited out my necks? Did you see that? <laughs> I actually commented on it. It's funny as hell. Who's ever going to find this thing? Uh, 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 where are my replies? Oh, here we go. They hid the power of my necks. Look at this. Look at it. They hid it. They hid it. They hid my neck power. They feared it, frankly. Yeah. They feared my neck power, and they wouldn't allow it to exist. Now it looks normal. It looks too normal. It does. It should look like this. Is my voice okay? No. It's, it's like horse as shit. It's more horse than Douglas on Cardboard Cowboy's stream, dude. Sponsored by Chipotle? Ugh. Have you seen that new sponsored thing, actually? Have you guys seen this shit? Let me show you this. Twitch is doing something new and weird. This kind of freaks me out, actually. Twitch is now placing channels running Twitch sponsorship campaigns at the top of your followed channel sidebar. It takes up three normal spaces and ignores viewership sorting rules. What? So, like... If you accept a Twitch-specific sponsorship, they put you into a new Kingmaker slot. So, everyone's going to have to do that because it puts you competitively at the top of the follower list, which makes you more visible. It's kind of how that's going to go, man. That is how that's going to go. People are going to do this, 100%. Sellout, gang? I'm going to be real with you, dude. Ad revenue money like that goes to make a lot of good shit. Yeah. They absolutely do. I am interested to see how this even works. Because this isn't even something they normally allow. Right? They don't even have something that works that way right now. Because, like, if you go to their bounty program stuff, it doesn't contain these. So... Bleh? Bleh? What about when we unfollow for making our UI worse? I know, right? This is the best way to get me to not click on it, even if it would be supporting the streamer? I, bingo. I feel like that's going to happen, though. Like, we're going to see a lot of this. I want to see if it's even on my list right now. Because they're supposedly trying this, but I don't see anyone in my list doing this. Which likely means that no one I know is doing this. Which is really funny to me. Wait in the ads. Yeah, I don't like this. I think it looks bad. Yeah, no one on my list has it either. Hot pockets are delicious either way. Make yourself food. Real food. How's it look in combat view? I have no idea. Why do I crave Hot Pocket? You're impressionable. Yeah. Alright, ads are gone. So, the reason why I think this is really interesting is nobody on my list has this right now. 
And if I go to the sponsorship second section for Twitch, which is like the um, the bounties or whatever, I don't have an option for any of these. I don't want to do this, but also I don't see anyone else doing it. So either it's not technically available yet and they were piloting it here to see if people enjoyed it, or it is available but only for select streamers, right? And I think it's really weird. It could be an A-B testing thing. I think it's really weird because this looks off-putting to me. It's something that I don't think is good, frankly. I can understand Twitch wanting to drive more traffic to a sponsored stream because Twitch will make more money off of it. The streamer is going to make more money off of it. I get it, right? I understand that completely. But this is done in a way that, like, I think the general viewer is going to reject it. Like, you guys don't like it. I guarantee other people don't like that. Because it looks bad, right? And it feels greasy. More greasy than a Hot Pocket would, right? Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, it looks bothersome is the thing. It looks bothersome. At least it's transparent. I agree with that. I agree with that. But I don't know. I don't think I'm going to want to watch a streamer more because they're sponsored by Hot Pockets. Does that make sense? I feel like I'd want to watch them less. And I don't know why. I actually don't know the reason why I would want to watch them less. But if I saw somebody in my in my followers list and they had, you know, Hot Pockets next to their name, I'd be like, that's an ad. And I've been trained by the internet to not click ads. So when I see an ad in my followers list, I don't want to click it. So I don't want to click this person, which means I won't end up following them or seeing their shit. No, it's not even sellout. Who gives a shit about sellout, right? We were on sponsored stream here. You know what I do with them? I fund a ferret rescue and I pay the moderators. You can use you can use sellout money to do cool shit, right? But this just looks weird. It looks like an ad, and I don't want to I don't want to click an ad. Yeah, only watch streamers from Mountain Dew. God damn it, dude. Yeah, it's just weird. It's just weird. It is an ad. Yeah, I mean, it is an ad, but it looks like an ad, right? There's a difference between those things. Something can be an ad and not feel like a greasy ad. This one feels like a greasy ad. And I don't know specifically why. There's just like an innate reaction where I don't want to click on that. I think it's two things. I think it's showing the logo of the product and doing this. Putting that there to like call it out and be like, hey, look at this other thing. It reminds me of like, like pages where you have like all the links to like, you know, supporting videos and then a bunch of links to like advertisement videos and they're slightly different they're more shiny a little bit yeah it's just a little extra yeah like google search like these are sponsored search links right things weird shit like that didn't even notice the purple i did it's immediately trying to show that it is distinctly different to call it out and something about it just feels weird i don't know why was that falling in the left what on the left side of the stream? Oh, that's when you guys follow and stuff like that. So the action of changing your started opinion for money? Is that really something you've done? No, I've never done that. In fact, I actively stay away from sponsors that have a differing opinion from my own. Like, I'll never be sponsored by VPN software. Or Raid Shadow Garbage. Or Gamer Subs or any of that stupid shit. Because I don't think you need an energy drink to sit on your ass to watch me. And VPNs generally try to market themselves as security products, which they're not. All of that shit is garbage, dude. Yeah, it's trash. No, Eve is trash. I would never do that. In fact, uh, even even with Eve Online, even if they approach me for a sponsorship, I'd be like, no, dude, I don't want that. Do you know why? Because we can have other sponsors that generate income for the studio, for the team, that don't go against my standards and beliefs. You you The moment you sacrifice your own standards and beliefs, it's over. Like, what's the point at that point? That's what being a sellout means. That means like, oh, yeah, I'll totally take that money. Even though you produce baby killing formula. Fine, whatever. You have money. Like, that's what that is. That's all that shit is. Why the hell would I want that? No. No. Do you drink coffee? No, I don't. I drink water, orange juice, and chocolate milk, my dude. Sometimes cranberry juice. Sometimes. Yeah. So, like, to be real with you, what sponsors do you take? Video games. Anytime I do a sponsored stream, everything says sponsored and everything like that. Like we played, um, in fact, I have them on my list here. Look, I have a whole section for sponsored streams. Um, we've got Persona 3 Reload, Last Epoch, and then uh, I think that's all that we have on here right now. 
Let me see for ones that I've uninstalled. So we've got Stolen Realm, Unfortold Witchstone. These are all the ones that I've done so far. And we have one that's queued up eventually. So that'll be a thing. But yeah, so like that's that's what I do. I stream games. And they're only games that I think are good. Or games that I think are interesting. Or, oh yeah, Pacific Drive was in there too. Actually, wait, no. Pacific Drive was not sponsored. I just had the developers on. That was not a sponsored stream. Yeah, they didn't pay me for that. Nope. Nope. I had the devs on because I thought it would be cool. We had the devs on for like, I want to say like four hours. Yeah. They didn't pay me for that. I thought the game was good. I was excited for the game. Yeah, just an interview. What's your opinion on Last Epoch? I liked it. I actually thought it was really good, especially as somebody who worked on Diablo 3 and has been in a Diablo my entire time. I like the entire time since the beginning. Loved it. Would you sponsor cool artists? I don't know how that would work. Be like, hello, look at their art station. Right? <laughs> like, what does that mean? Right? Anyway, Drillance, do you agree to your cursed quest? Let me see this. No, dude, I'm I'm sick. Don't worry about it. This contract sealed is the best of my ability. All right. Contract is sealed. Drew Lance said yes. How many frames would you like it to be? What does that even mean? Oh, as many as you want, dude. Whatever you want it to be. If you want to make that like three frames, three frame animation, if you want to make it like 10, or not animation, but like comic, go for it. Yeah, I'm sick, dude. That's all. What do you think about Riot's MMO? I'm interested to see what they make. A new MMO is something I'm always down for. Always. Genuinely curious why I wouldn't take EVE Online ad? I was the alliance leader for Strybog Clay, the largest Triglavian alliance at EVE Online. The developers screwed us over. They um, specifically did not fix vulnerabilities that we turned in to gain in-game advantage for some of the people that were actually playing the game as devs. Then after we basically burned all of Potchfin to the ground, they fixed the bugs for other people thinking and said, Specifically, I thought that was just a Strybog problem. We had hundreds of reports. They completely removed all of the goodwill that our entire faction had. It was 1,200 plus players out of a game that usually only has about twenty five to 28,000 online players. Yeah, I quit the game. I quit the game immediately. I can fight players. I can fight their wallets, right? I'm fine with that. I, uh, I won't fight developers that refuse to fix bugs because they have an in-game bias. And that's it, dude. Sucks. It's really shit. I played Eve for 15 years as well. Yeah. Really shit to watch. Thoughts on Dragon's Dogma 2? I'd give it a miss. I'm going to give it a miss. I'll give you an example of this, right? So, like, somebody was saying, like, get, getting rid of your morals for, for income. I could play Dragon's Dogma right now. I could do that. I could go play Dragon's Dogma. I can get a bunch of ad revenue because that category is going to be really fire. There's going to be a lot of ad revenue for it because all the advertisers are like, oh man, new game, everything like that. I won't buy the game. I won't play the game. If you try to gift it to me, I will refund it. I'll, I'll cancel it so that you get your money back because of this. I The game could be very good. Eventually, it could be very good. I won't play it because I don't like seeing this in our industry. And I, I feel bad for all the developers that worked on this. I feel bad for all the, all the devs that poured all of their heart and passion into it. But this marketing decision has soured the game for me in a way where I don't want to play it because I don't want to support that kind of behavior in our industry at all, frankly. I don't want that. And it's not just $41 in DLC. It's $41 in consumable DLC, like bringing your characters back to life in a single-player game. So, I won't be playing Dragon's Dogma 2. I was looking forward to it. I was excited for it. I played Dragon's Dogma 1. I was very, very into it. And I won't be playing 2. And yeah, I'm probably going to be missing out on funny experiences and hilarious moments and all of the cool story that goes along with it. But I won't. Because of this. And I also won't be doing it because of other things too. Such as, you only get one character slot, and you're not allowed to delete your character. So if you get softlocked, guess what happens to you? Let's say that you get softlocked, and you want to go and delete your character. This guy did. Character stuck in floor, can't reload as it autosaved. Can't delete character and make a new one. Off to a really bad start. He fixed it. 
The way that he fixed it was by deleting his save file out of this program. Except the game uses Denuvo and it detects when you change files. People are getting banned from a single player game for deleting their character when they get softlocked. What the living shit are they thinking? That's insane, dude. It's insane. Like, I don't understand how this could be happening. What, is it, what even is the benefit? I don't know. I don't know. So, like, these types of reports from players, should that end up being true, that's crazy shit, dude. Like, I don't understand why this needs to happen. If you look at this, the players are pretty mad about it, dude. 45% positive. This was at 26% before, and a bunch of people refunded the game. Yeah. It's a single-player game. You should be able to do whatever the hell you want. I agree, Crux. I super agree. If you want to turn your character inside out, if you want to give him a wizard hat or, like, a clown suit, I don't give a shit. It's a single-player game. Why all of these restrictions? Why all of this shit? And on top of that, the game itself is $70 US. $70 so that you can get $41 in microtransactions, most of which are consumable microtransactions? Like, dude, I can't get behind this. I love this series. I think this game is really good, but I'm not going to support this. I refuse to, because this is a really shit direction for our industry. And I just, I can't, man. I can't do it, and I refuse to do it. So, no. And I wouldn't accept any sponsorships from them. I wouldn't do any of that shit. I won't work with the studio that does that stuff. I can't. That's, that's completely against how I feel as a player and how I feel as a developer. Ever. Ever at all. And I'm going to be real with you. To put on top of that, if you are out there and you're a streamer and you're playing that game and you're doing it for money or anything like that, go for it. Have fun. This is not a reflection on anyone else who's doing this, and you shouldn't treat people badly just because they're interested in playing a game that they enjoy. Nothing wrong with that. You shouldn't go down, like, go be mean to them just because they're taking a sponsorship, or you're mean to them just because they're playing a game they want to play. I won't play it because I don't want to support that industry. I don't think that's a good direction for the industry at all. So, yeah. How am I? Sick. Got a weird voice going on. All right. Let's get back into the alerts. Something the wise with 500 bits said you showed the other day that Heartbound is actually quite close to completion. Yes. Do you have a goal of when you want to finish it and start the next? It's pretty awesome that with streaming you can work on it until it's how you want it, not until a budget force deadline comes up. TTS just didn't go through again. <laughs> I don't know why this keeps happening. This is really weird, man. Something's wrong. It looks like Discord's webhooks aren't working randomly. Let me go look into this again. Yeah, Heartbound is actually quite close to completion. It is. Um, when, a goal when I want to finish it and start the next. I'm trying to finish it by the end of this year. That's kind of the big thing. Yeah, I'm sick. So my hope, and I, I may not reach this goal, but I'm. this is kind of what I'm hoping to do. I'm hoping to reach, by the end of this year... I am hoping that we finish Heartbound by the end of the year. And the, the reason why I want to hope for that is I'm thinking we can do it, frankly. I'm thinking we can. And if we can, then I can move on to making the next game that I want to make, which is a monster battle. So the next game that I want to make, I'm actually hiring in Tofu Pixel as well to do art for us. And I want to show you some of their work real fast, just so you can understand what we're going to be building. Because this is, well, it's kind of cool. <laughs> kind of excited for it. We want to make a cosmic horror monster battler, monster collector game. Think Shin Megami Tensei and Yokai Watch and Pokemon. And then things like Etrian Odyssey. Combined with that, as a single player game. Not like Pal World. No, single player game. 2D pixel art is the whole idea for this. And this is some of the work of Tofu Pixel. It's going to be real spooky, is the idea. The whole idea behind it is that we want to have these kind of old gods, and then each of the elements 
on the monsters in the game are actually bound to one of these cosmic horrors. And that creature that is on your team is like a dripping that has come through into the mortal plane as an aspect of that creature, as an aspect of that old, horrible thing, right? So you can't view the old god directly. You can't see it, the cosmic horror, because it'd kill you. The, 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 just understanding it, viewing it, would kill you. So instead we fight with the echoes of them, right? Yeah. Lovecraftian Shin Megami Tensei. Bingo. That's the idea for that. Yeah. Yeah, like Cthulhu. Cthulhu is, is definitely that. So cosmic horror is something that I've always very much so enjoyed. And I like the idea of, as an example, you wouldn't have a name for it. Because a name for it wouldn't make much sense. But imagine, imagine a cosmic horror that is the feeling of being watched. It doesn't have a name. It's just that feeling. Everyone gets that feeling once in a while. The feeling of being hunted, being watched. Like something's after you. Just that feeling is what it is. And that is the cosmic horror. Just the way that you can perceive it, barely. And then things like kind of manipulation of data, right? So we have things like this. Where it's slowly creeping in through the news, through media that you consume. So that's a whole nother cosmic horror for going through that. And then things that only you can see in the game. The idea that other people don't even know that they're under the effects of one of these cosmic horrors, but you can see it. So we can have all these different types of interesting ideas. I've, I've got a whole mood board for this, you know, and maybe giving in to the insanity is something that you can do. Well, no one else can see these things, but you can, and maybe it tears at your mind. So, like, I think it's going to be a lot of fun to do. I think it'll be really interesting. And I, I had this idea where, kind of like in Pokemon where you have gyms, we wanted to do something where it's like you're entering the domain of a cosmic horror or maybe a avatar of that cosmic horror. So you can go into the domain and then it's like a procedurally generated dungeon. Kind of like Etrian Odyssey, but randomly generated, right? So anytime you do one of these, you find these in the world and they're random every time. So instead of having like a Pokemon game where you can beat it, it could effectively be played forever. And it would just be totally different domains every time you would go into them with different higher level, you know, difficulties. Kind of like um, Diablo 3's Rifts was sort of the idea with that. But made like Etrian Odyssey's dungeons with monsters like Yokai Watch or Shin Megami Tensei and Pokemon. So I think it'd be really quite cool to do it. The idea is neat. The execution is what we need to do now. How much will the Cosmic Horror demo cost? It'd be free, you got one. Yeah. Sounds like a mix of varying genres. Yeah. All the pieces that I enjoy the most. Which Etrian Odyssey is your favorite? Yes. <laughs> I have, over my lifetime, I probably have probably seven to 8,000 hours in Etrian Odyssey. Yeah. That's a lot. That's a huge amount. So I'm, I'm really excited for doing this kind of stuff because I just think, I think it'll be quite good. If we can pull off the vibe for it. Because it's it's very hard to do cosmic horror. It's very difficult to. You have to kind of like ride the line between like, oh, that's a bit cringe. Or, hey, that's a little that makes me feel gross, right? Because you can you can just kind of pass over that uncanny valley line and it becomes it becomes humor where it's like over the top and kind of stupid and, and campy. Or just before the line we're like, uh uh, it makes me feel gross thinking about it, right? And that's what we want the we want you to feel gross when you think about it. We want you to feel gross is the idea. And like if we put it over to the next one, like just a little bit over the line, it just becomes stupid and it's just funny. Yeah, I want it to feel gross. I don't want it to feel like so gross it's funny, you know. How many DLC consumables will have? None. Zero. And, like, that's the whole point, right? I, I want you guys to be able to do that. Maybe at some point we'll add, like, monster battling stuff where players can fight against each other. Tofu follows you. Tofu's awesome. Has the development of the game started yet? We've done what's called pre-production, where we have the general idea for how we want the game. And then there's also things like this. We want to have no jump scares, but moments like this. Where, like, did that just happen? You go back and you look and it didn't. There's nothing there. 
you know, moments of building tension without actually doing a jump scare. Because I think jump scares are stupid. I think they're they're kind of like fast food of horror, if that makes sense. I also like really strange environments like this. We we kind of played around with the idea of having a Waffle House at the end of the universe as like the uh, the Poker Center, effectively. I thought that'd be kind of cool, or a burnt out old arcade. So like an old arcade or a Waffle House as the area where you actually like regenerate your monsters. Be kind of fun. Yeah. Because like games are supposed to make you feel stuff. Ideally, yeah. <laughs> it's sort of the idea, right? You know? But also like I'm also big into Junji Ito. So having stuff like this, like the Planet Romina, I'm very into Junji Ito stuff. So seeing World of Horror is also very cool for me. Yeah. I love this stuff, dude. You have no idea how much I'm into these things. I'm super into like grim, dark, cosmic horror. So I'm really excited for this because we get to do some crazy looking shit, you know? And I don't know. I don't know how it's going to go, man. Well, fun. I also like weird old photos like this. Like, look at that. It's like a modified Polaroid, basically. That's what that looks. I just said surreal. A little bit. Warhammer 40k Grimdark? No. I I would say Warhammer 40k is too on the nose. And the reason why is because everything in Warhammer 40k is like up and in your face. I'd rather have something where it's like, if you know where to look, if you know how to look, you might be able to see it. But only just for a moment. And only just the edge of the carpet. You know? Because if you saw the whole thing, your mind's already gone. That's the idea for that. You like Lovecraftian shit. Yeah, I do. Super do. I love Lovecraftian shit, dude. Need more eyes inside? Well, I mean, if we go and pull open Heartbound, yeah. There's a lot of that. It's a huge amount of that. I don't know if you've noticed all the eyeballs in the game, but there's a reason for that. It's testing. Testing. Is it 2AM where I am? Yes, it is. I love SCP, dude. Yeah, I love that shit. Better have kernel level any cheat Our games will never have any cheat There's no reason for it. Have you read Berserk? Have you read Kill Six Billion Demons? Mm hmm. Have you read any written any SCP? No. I love SCP though. Yeah, Kill Six Billion Demons is great, dude. <coughs> have you seen the World World of Horror game? Yes. Yes. Is that a legit title? Yes. It is Kill Six Billion Demons is a uh, webcomic, and it's brilliant, dude. Absolutely brilliant. Phenomenal. Addiction is stupid scary, it is. But you know what's scarier than addiction? Think about it this way. You've got... You don't want to have something that on the nose of just addiction. But what about the fear of addiction? What about... What about the idea of addiction? Not addiction itself, but the idea that addiction could happen. Right? That's more of what I'm going for. Something that's a little bit even disconnected from that, just kind of slightly beyond that. Yeah, it sounds like anxiety. The feeling of anxiety. Not anxiety itself, but the feeling of anxiety. Not being paranoid, but knowing that you could be paranoid right now. It makes you hesitate. Bingo. Just a little bit, a little bit before that, right? Your voice returned. It's getting a little bit better as we go on. So I'm always interested in, in that kind of a thing, right? I know addiction exists. But the feeling of that, the idea of it, just kind of creeping at the end of like, oh man, maybe this could happen to me. Second guessing yourself, bingo. 
Those are the types of things I'm going to go into. Not actually being hunted. The idea that you might be hunted. The idea that someone might be watching you. That's way scarier than actually being hunted. Because if you're actually hunted, then you have an opponent. You know what's coming. You know where it's coming from, maybe. And you know that you have a reason to fight it. But the idea of maybe being hunted. That there could be something out there. Not that there is, but there could be. That's way more spooky to me, frankly. Yep. Mm-hmm. Atmospheric, 100%. How would you show that? Very carefully. <laughs> Counterpoint bears are scary. They are. But which is more scary? You're in a forest alone, and there could be bears in that forest. Or you're in a forest alone, and there is a bear, and you can see it far away. Which one's more scary? Knowing where the enemy is, or knowing that you could be surrounded by enemies at any time. That's way more scary to me. Yeah. That's why I want to do it that way. It's more fun. And it's way harder to write. Hearing it but not seeing it is scarier. How about this? How about you hear it and then you second guess yourself. Did you hear it? Hey, did you hear that? No, I didn't hear anything. Are you sure? That's way more interesting. What if only one of you hears it? But did you really? What if only Bezos hears it? Where is he? He could be all around us, Chet. There could be ads here. At any moment. Oh, God. Oh, no. Tax evasion. It's all tax evasion now, Chet. Look, he's not even, he's not even showing up. Clearly not tax evasion. Hmm. Ads. Sponsorship money. What do, we, what do we do to summon him? Tax avoidance didn't even work. Yachts. Two yachts. A s oh, he wanted the two yachts. All right. We got him. Yeah, it took two yachts this time. Difficult, I know. <clears throat> You're scaring me? Good. Any advice about choosing a studio name? I, names have a great deal of meaning to me. I would only choose names that make sense to you. It's a deeply emotional thing, you know? Your throat sounds sore. Are you okay? Yeah, my throat is definitely sore. It is rough right now. It's going to take a little bit of time. Slowly getting better. I had a cold. Never seen a streamer pause for ads? I always do. I don't 
like the reason that I pause for ads, man, and I've I've always done this, is I don't like ads on live content, and I don't want you to feel like you're left behind just because you didn't pay for a sub. That's not okay. We have a community here, and just because you decided not to monetize, or you couldn't monetize, doesn't mean you should be left behind. So I wait, unless we're playing video games that can't be paused, then I can't do shit about it. So, hell divers moment, just a little bit. Yeah, nothing I can do there. We're going to find the update on how is Beans. Beans is doing okay. He's resting. It's going to take him about two weeks to recover. He's doing just fine. Yeah. Yep. Really pleasant here. Well, thank you. Got ads. Lister All underscore Marifay with 500 bits said, Hey Thor, Still doesn't work. thanks for inspiring me to stay working on my game. Even inspired me to finish work on the breadboard CPU I have been making. I'm now on building a assembler for it, and decided to name all the functions, Thor. It's very amusing all the colors it's making on the chips. Conclusion, Thor is a wizard, as he makes magic blue smoke. No. Not a wizard. Not a wizard. I'm trying something. Gabby Von Rose with 500 <laughs> bits said, Ya cheer 500 hello work? Thor, quick question. Do you happen to own Gandalf's ring? I swear, every time you're around, it feels like you've got the power to inspire hope in everyone. You'll never figure it out. You'll never know. If I told you, then you'd know. Clearly, I'm not allowed to tell you. I don't know why my I don't know why my TTS stuff is not working right now. And thank you, by the way, for that. It's very nice of you. Part of this works. Part of it doesn't work. And I don't know what it is. I don't know why this is happening. The Discord webhook is not connecting randomly. Only randomly. Sometimes it works. Sometimes it doesn't work. And I don't know why. It's very weird. I'm going to try something stupid. I'm going to copy the sub action. I'm going to paste the subject sub action. Where is it? I'm going to put it in the Discord webhook. I'm going to put it all the way up here. I'm just going to say butts. I'm just going to have it say butts. I'm going to hit the button. Descendancy with 500 bits now said come works. on Thor. Even Chipotle knows we need free beans. Glad to no. hear he's okay though. No. No. It doesn't work for the last three and then it says butts and actually sends the message. You son of a bitch. Doing it again. Nico Spud with 500 bits said Thor is the staunch campaigner against misinformation you are. How does it feel to also be one of the people with the most falsehood shared about them? Happy birthday. What? It's a wig. Thor's an eye. Thor has tiny hands. It's a voice changer. You have tiny Buy hands. the demo on a dark desert highway 7. Why did this one just say butts? Why did it just say butts? Why? Why? Now if I click it again... Evangeline with $20 said what the dot you think of the Fallout hacking game. What? I heard the VOD got yeeted. I think it's weird that you have to guess before using the brackets to remove guesses or you risk getting tries reset with max Why? guesses. Why does it just say butts? Why is it just saying butts? Clearly the Discord link is working. Okay, we're going to try this again. I'm going to duplicate this. I'm going to duplicate the sub action. I'm going to put it here. And I'm going to go listen to this message real fast. I'm going to look at it under Super Chat. The Fallout hacking game? I think it's kind of boring. Um, yeah, I, I actually didn't like the Fallout hacking game. I think that there are better hacking games than other games. Like, fall, uh, like for instance, Cyberpunk 2077 has a more interesting hacking game. The reason why is because there's stakes in it where you actually can do better at it or worse at it and get better or worse rewards. I think the Fallout 1 is boring by comparison because it is basically you can just spam it. Like some people don't even pay attention to the puzzle. They just click on it and they're like, oh, I got it. I'm done. Like to be real with you, I, I just don't think it's very good. It's not that interesting. Yeah. It's just not that interesting. Yeah. 
And I, I think the other ones actually give you... I like the reward scaling with your, you know, skill at it. I don't know why this isn't working. This is so weird, man. Okay, I'm going to try this again. Servant of God 777 with 500 bits said so, typing before I head to sleep. But to sum up a bit, I know people trying to do an indie comic book company and using crowdfunding to sell them and had a PayPal account with 20k in it hacked and the funds stolen. Any advice for how to manage that stuff and a Jesus. good way to get new customers on board given they can't get the books out they wanted due to lost funds. Also glad to hear Beans is good. Just lost my own cat Simone, had her 18 years, she was 24, glad Beans is okay now, bro. Beans is doing just fine. He's doing really, really well. Use crowdfunding when you sell them and had a PayPal account with 20k and it hacked. Okay, so number one, and this is going to be surprising to no one, do not store money in PayPal. PayPal is not a bank. You should never be storing money in PayPal. Ever. Ever at all. Like, that is... That sucks, but you should never be storing money in PayPal, and I don't know what else they can do there. At that point, you've got to go to the police. Like, that's pretty much all you can do, because that's a really big deal. Um, yeah, you're... Here in the U.S., I don't believe we're covered by FDIC insurance unless it's in the bank, right? Yeah, you you shouldn't be storing money in PayPal. You should not be storing money in PayPal. Stripe just goes as a path pass-through. It goes directly to something else. Stripe doesn't store the cash. You you should not should not be using PayPal as a bank. Move that into, into a wallet somewhere. Move that into an account. Yeah, it doesn't make any sense. It's very bad. Really, really bad. So this one's really weird. Because we have it do Discord basic webhook. Let me see this. Delete that sub action. That one just worked perfectly, and I don't know why. But why? Where did it even get butts from? Geosim, that's me putting a message up there to have it say butts. I have it do that. Because what I was trying to do is if we go into here, I was going up to here and I was like, well, add the word butts here, right? Just to check to see if the if the Discord webhook was working. So I copied this over and I changed it to the word butts and then put it up there. The butts would go through, but then this one wouldn't go through. Which leads me to believe that sometimes this is giving some kind of bullshit result that then is crashing. Which doesn't make a lot of sense because this is just doing this. So... Why would that die? That doesn't make any damn sense. Literally at all. Whatsoever. And this compiles just fine and isn't having problems. So I don't know why this is an issue. I don't know why this is an issue either. I don't understand. Hmm. Yeah, vaudyroll.index of question. Because I modified this to remove the switch. Juicem had sent me one that was a switch between YouTube and Twitch, but we can't use the YouTube one, so just ripped it out. a little bit weird, huh? This, see, here's the problem. This is why I know this doesn't make any sense. There's no reason to debug this. Do you know why? Because this worked two days ago without any changes. And it worked perfectly. So something broke on Discord's side. 100%. Like, I don't even know why I'm debugging this. We know that this system works. We, we used it for an entire 24-hour period with no problems. 
It's breaking now with no changes. Yeah. I, I guarantee this is going to be something on Discord side. It has nothing to do with Twitch whatsoever. This is going to be something on Discord side. For sure. Yep. Because this worked. And there's no reason it wouldn't work. So now when we press this... Miho's underscore gaming it with does 520 nothing. bits said Yar cheer 520 hello Mr. Thorb. People are complaining about Dragon's Dogma 2 this whole problem feels like the meme. Hell Divers 2 puts pay for convenience for in-game resources in their non-competitive PvE game and everyone is fine with it but Dragon's Dogma 2 puts pay for convenience for in-game resources yep. in their non-competitive PvE game and everyone loses their minds. Capcom has done this since 2008 and with him confused at the blatant double standard that is being held. Makes sense. One second. We'll go through that in just a moment. The Discord API rate limit is 10,000 requests per 10 minutes per IP address. So... Yeah, no. You look like you sound... I sound like shit right now. How dare you? Your name is Dogwater. It's true, actually. I don't even have to change that. Yeah, so now this is definitely not rate limiting. His name actually is Dogwater. Yeah. Check the event viewer. There's nothing in there. We've already looked. Hmm. I'm going to go through your message now. Copying it out into here. People are complaining about Dragon's Dogma 2. The whole problem feels like the meme. Helldivers 2 puts pay for convenience for in-game resources in their non-competitive PvE game. And everyone is fine with it? No, they don't. No, they don't. Absolutely not. The reason why this is a problem, dude, there's no pay for convenience in Helldivers 2. There's not whatsoever like let me let me show you something if we go to helldivers 2 we go into here look at the video game what do we have we have the video game do you see anything else in here no no you don't you're talking about the war bonds in game that's through in-game points we didn't spend a dime on any of that shit whatsoever there's no problem with in-game stuff in helldivers 2 because you can just earn all of it. Now, let's go over to the other one. Let's go to Dragon's Dogma. I'm going to show you something in here. How do you earn another character slot in Dragon's Dogma 2? In endgame. How do you do that? How do you earn any of these in, in Dragon's Dogma? Let's take a look at this. Explorer's Camping Kit. So that's cosmetic, right? Gain one special camping kit and make them available for purchase at shops in game. Oh, okay, so you, you can't actually purchase those unless you purchase this. You can't actually get them in game. Unless you buy this thing for $3. It says right there, gain one special camping kit and make them available for purchase at shops in game. The special camping kit says right there that it's not available for purchase unless you buy this. The wording is bad. What else could that possibly mean? Let's go to the next one. Music and sound collection. Custom sounds. That's fine. I'm okay with that. You want to have a cosmetic, you know, sound pack? Nothing wrong there. Harpy lure item. Obtain three harpy smoke beacons, which emit a scent enticing to harpies. Do you know why this is a problem? Let's take a look at this. Let's take a look at each one of these. Change pawn inclinations. Escape from Gowl. Character editor, one-time use. Warp location marker, so you can do fast travel back to your location. Town portal. Restore the dead to life, one time. Five of them. Why do you think these are a problem? Why do you think I think these are a problem? 
because they're consumables. And these are basic mechanics. Imagine if Diablo 4 made you pay to learn Town Portal. That's what that is. Why would I ever get behind that as a design? Imagine if Helldivers 2 made you pay to resurrect your character. Why are we taking base mechanics in a video game and locking them behind a paywall? Why are we making it so that you can pay to get, cos not cosmetics, but pay to get consumable items in a game? It's not locked? Then what is this shit? Obtain a port crystal, which can be set at a destination of your choice. Use a fairy stone to instantly transport your party to port crystal's location. You can get them in-game, too? How many hours do you have to play to get it in-game? No, not Psy. How many hours does it take for you to get it in-game? People say two to four hours. Took me three hours. So three hours or three dollars. The reason why I hate this, and you may not understand this, if you're not an old gamer like me. When I was growing up, we used to have something called a cheat code. It came with the video game. You just got it. Now you have to pay for it. And it's not even permanent. Why are you okay with that? You are paying for things they used to give you for free. There's no defense for this. There is no defense for this. It's a single player video game. Blows me away, dude. Yeah, that shit used to be free, dude. That shit used to be free. I'm not a fan of that. I'm never going to be a fan of that. The way that I feel about it, dude, and I'm always going to feel about it this way, sell the video game. That's all that matters. You don't need all this extra shit. All you're going to do is you're going to split your community between people that are fine with it and people that hate it. And I'm in the camp of people that hate it. And to be real with you, I was looking forward to Dragon's Dogma 2. I was going to buy the game and I was going to stream it on stream today until I saw that page. And I decided not to. And I won't be buying the game. And I won't be playing it on stream. So they lost a customer there. Because I don't like that. And I'm going to vote with my wallet. And my vote says I don't want that in our industry. So I'm not going to vote. Not going to vote for them. Not going to buy the game. And you can go play the game if you like it. That's fine. I'm not going to be mad at you. I don't think you suck. Anything like that. I'm just not going to support it. No one should treat you like shit for playing a game you want to play. At all. You can have fun at it. I just won't. Because I don't want to see that shit in our industry. Should Honestly, I wish the industry was selling more games and less storefronts. We don't need that shit. It doesn't need to be a problem. But Helldivers? What about Helldivers? I haven't spent a cent on the game and I've unlocked everything in the game. All of it. Everything. You want to unlock a new war bond? It takes an hour. Just go play. It's really not bad. They even made it so that super credits in missions that used to give 10 every time now randomly give 100 to everyone in your team. Even if you fail, even if you crash, even if you leave the game, you keep it. That 100 is worth $1 in microtransactions. Yes, really. So you just jump into games, you start killing stuff, people are finding those things. If you find one, everyone in your team gets it. I haven't spent a dime. I've spent thousands of super credits, too. I think I've gotten like 6,000 so far, and I've spent all of it. 
Like, and it's a multiplayer game. This is a single player game. Why the hell do they need this shit? On what? I keep buying all of this, all of the armors, everything I possibly can. <laughs> uh, this today was actually the first time that the uh, the armors came back around, and I had all of them already. I was like, done. Don't have to care. There's literally no difference between the two. No, there is. Do you know why? Because when I unlock an armor in Helldivers 2, I get to keep it forever. It's not a consumable. Show me where in Helldivers any of those items are consumables that are not a permanent unlock for my account. Show me anywhere in there where I had to spend money to get any of it. And then tell me that it's the same. It's not. And it never will be. Nades are not consumable, you goblin. You equip the grenade to your character and you have it unlocked forever. The hell? Have you even played the game? No. No, you haven't. Obviously. Jesus. Your Helldiver is consumable for democracy? Okay, that one might actually have some merit to it. That may be true. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, no, that's true. So here, here's the biggest problem with it, right? Let's say Dragon's Dogma was a free-to-play game. This would make sense to me. If Dragon's Dogma 2 was a free-to-play game, all of this would make sense. I'd be totally down for it. I'd get it. 100% I'd get it. But it's not. It's $70. You see the problem now? It's a $70 game. None of this shit should exist. None of that shit should exist. At all. That, that makes no goddamn sense. Yeah, it's a $70 game. That's generally what people see as a premium AAA game. And that's not even the, the Deluxe Edition. Deluxe Edition's 80 bucks. I don't think this is good. You can be fine with it. I don't think... It's not a scam. No one's scamming you. I just don't think it's good. I just think it's a bad idea to do this. I don't think it's a good direction for the industry. Yeah, I don't, I don't think we should be monetizing consumables. I don't think we should be monetizing core mechanics. I don't think we should be monetizing this stuff at all. If you want to monetize shit, monetize cosmetics. Make it so my, my followers can wear, I don't know, clown hats. Who gives a shit, right? I want, to, I want to have a multicolored wig on every one of my followers. I'd be down for that. That's fine. But monetizing consumables and core mechanics in a video game? Hmm. I can't get behind that shit. That's where I, I, I have to draw the line on that, dude. It's gross to me. It's not a core mechanic. It's town portal. That's a core mechanic. It's resurrecting your character. That's a core mechanic. That's what that means. That is a core mechanic to the video game. It's getting out of jail. That's a core mechanic. What? How is that not a core mechanic to a video game? Yeah, it's $2 to activate jumping shit. No. No. Not a fan of that. It's having your character editor to change the look of your character in a single-player video game. For $2. Like, how can you defend that, man? Do you want to pay $2 for that? You can't even delete your character. And if you go into your save file on your actual drive and you try to delete it, you know what happens? You get banned. This dude actually got stuck in the floor and he couldn't reload because it auto-saved. He couldn't delete his character and make a new one. Because he's off to a bad start. And he went into the actual program files to delete this. And other people did the same. And they started getting banned for modifying game files. It's a single player game. You can't defend that shit, dude. You know you can't defend that shit. It's a single player game. Just let people play the goddamn game. And don't monetize core mechanics and consumables. On a $70 game. If they would have taken all of this shit off and just sold the video game, this wouldn't look like this. 
and they'd have a shitload more sales because it's off-putting to a lot of people because people don't like this. You may be fine with it, but there's a very large number of people that don't like this, and I'm one of them because I grew up in a time where we didn't have this, where this shit came for free, and it was just part of the game. Or you had cheat codes that came with the game if you wanted an easier experience. So I'm going to vote with my wallet. I'm not buying that shit. And I was looking forward to it. And I won't play it now. At all. It is free? No, it ain't. It's right there. For money. See piracy rising for this game? They're using Denuvo. On, like, doubtful, to be honest with you. Can we talk about the fact you can ban someone in a single-player game? Yes. That's also very strange. I don't like that at all. Denuvo always gets cracked. It always does. It, it destroys performance, and then it gets cracked, and then they remove it, and then performance is better, and people are happier. Happens every time a game comes out with Denuvo. Is this a free-to-play game? No, it's a $70 game. So if you pay $70 up front for a video game, and then they monetize core mechanics and consumables. You're fine with that? Because some people are fine with this. And I, I want to understand why. It just doesn't make sense to me. No, no, no. I, I want to know from somebody that thinks this is fine, frankly. How you bitching about microtransactions and you don't even got to buy them? I don't have to buy the game either and I'm not going to be. Because of this. Now I don't have to give a shit at all. If you're going to over, overly monetize your game like this, I have no reason to buy it. Yeah. It's fine with them because they were born into it, like you said. I think so, too. I grew up at a time where you got this shit for free. And I'm going to tell you right now, if you grew up in a time where you think this is okay, you're being ripped off. Because you don't know how good we had it. Not even a little bit, man. Who's the publisher? Capcom. Yeah, they normalize this bullshit to an extent that there are a generation of people that think it's fine. Doesn't make any damn sense. Reminds me of diamonds. We'll talk about that after the ad break. Cray 5 sold consumables, not their first rodeo. Yeah, it's gross. I'm never going to get behind that. It, I find it to be disgusting. I, I just can't get behind it, dude. I miss Game Genie, don't we all? You feeling okay? I'm sick. My voice is shot, dude. Co Carnage said it well. Check his tweet. Let me go look at his Twitter. Let me go see. Oh, yeah, here we go. Oh, he's totally right. No, he's 100% right with this take. We'll talk about it in a second. Thank you, Karma. For the three dollars to the moderators. I know we're waiting on Bezos. Don't worry about it. He's got two seconds. 
All right. So, Co Carnage is 100% for this. 100% correct. Just don't buy the microtransactions. Easy. One of you actually had that take a minute ago. No, for many, that's not how this works. The problem is simple. When you want to sell something, there has to be a need for it. It's easy for us to surmise that everything in a microtransaction list, take Dragon's Dogma 2, for instance, is extra or unneeded since you can get it all in the game. No harm, no foul, right? Wrong. As a developer, I can also add on to this and say, that's 100% wrong. When you try to sell items, you try to make a need. You need an impetus for purchase. When you start attaching money into items you earn in the game, who is to say, quote, the game developers were told to make sure that we limit X item because they are selling it as DLC. This becomes part of the design philosophy for the game. The purchase path for that item means the item has to be rarer to give you a reason to buy it. It irrevocably changes the development of the game. It changes the content of the game to incentivize your behavior of purchase. And back in my generation of games, we got that shit for free. Why? Because the main goal was to make the game more fun, not to make you buy something. That was the difference. Co is 100% correct here. 100%. And I hate this direction for our industry. I hate the shit out of the direction, this direction for our industry, which is why I'm not buying the game, and why I'm not playing it on stream, and why I'm talking about it now. Because it's a very gross direction. A very gross direction. And it's not even the dev's fault. It's 100% the marketing and sales teams. That's not their fault. It's not the dev's fault. They did a very good job making that game. They did a very good job. Game looks awesome as shit. But I won't play it because of these shitty business practices. It's gross. It's 100% gross. Yeah. Well, let's, you change pretty much everything for your race for 100 gold, bingo. The fact that you have to pay for these things is insane to me. The fact that it's even there is insane to me. Good job, Co. Awesome. Yeah. This is 100% correct. I'm going to link this out. That. 100% that. Yeah. Do you want to know the best example of this that I have for you? It's not even games. It's diamond rings for marriage. The De Beers Corporation actually put out an ad campaign in 1947 that started making diamonds what you have to give if you want to marry someone. Before that, we actually didn't buy diamond rings for people. Do you know that? But it just seems like something that's always been around. You've always bought a diamond for someone when you want to get married, right? Except no. It is the most successful ad campaign that has ever existed in the history of man. And now, you couldn't fathom the idea of getting married if they don't give you a ring. A diamond ring, specifically. They took something that was largely seen as worthless and turned it into the most important thing you can give someone to show them that you want to be with them for the rest of your life. And they did that in two generations through ads and marketing. When you see games doing this kind of shit, it's the exact same practice. They've taken all of the things that they gave to you for free in my generation, and they've made it normal to buy them now. It's not that bad. It's only a couple of dollars. You don't even have to buy them. Until eventually, it gets so bad that you get Dragon's Dogma 2. So no, I won't support this. I refuse to. 
And I think it's a really shit direction for the industry and it's manipulation. And for the people who are growing up in this kind of an environment, they're just going to think it's real and normal and they'll have no idea. And you'll look at people like us and say, old man yells at cloud. Well, old man got this shit for free. Well, you have to pay for it. All right, we've got all these done. Let's go to the next one. Oh. Two months, goddamn, dude. All right. Sydney Brookie with 500 bits said if ferrets war dance, that means they have mm. a concept of war. It's Does true. this mean there is ferret Valhalla? I figure asking someone named Thor would best answer my question. Please there hurry, is. the army grows restless without this knowledge. Yeah, there actually is. Um, the website that I'm building for the ferrets, all of the ones that have passed on, I'm calling that section Valhalla, because they are little warriors. So, yeah. 100%. So why doesn't this work? Run action immediately. Hmm. Q decrease. Yeah, it just looks like this just isn't working randomly. And I don't really know why. I'm going to try something. I'm going to go in here and I'm going to rebuild the webhook. It may just be that the webhook is broken. Creating a new one. Copying the webhook URL, putting it up here. I'm gonna try it now. This might work now. I've changed out the actual webhook. We're gonna make a whole new one now, right? The and Jocker with 500 bits said, "Hello, Thor. I am a truck driver by trade, and I'd like your opinion on an article one read this morning." Sure. To summarize, attackers are able to gain access to the truck's Wi-Fi enabled electronic log device via default passwords that usually can't be changed by the drivers themselves. Do you think these vulnerabilities have any merit? Yes. Link incoming, https colon slash slash www. Let me kill that link off. It's 100% it. Truck to truck worm could infect and disrupt entire US commercial fleet. God damn it. Vulnerabilities in electronic logging devices required in U.S. commercial trucks could be present in over 14 million medium and heavy-duty rigs, according to Boffins at Colorado State University. In a paper presented in 2024, Network and Distributed Security Systems Symposium, Associate Professor Jeremy Daly and Systems Engineering graduate students Jake Jepson and Rick Chatterjee demonstrated how ELDs can be accessed over Bluetooth or Wi-Fi connections to take control of a truck, manipulate data, and spread malware between vehicles. My dude, I hate the Internet of Things. The Internet of Things is the worst. It is the worst, and now it's in trucks. It's the Internet of shit. It's the Internet of shit all over again. Why? Why is it like this? Why? God damn it. That's wild. I'm going to send this to my buddies. Here, I'm sending this in chat. Enjoy this. Enjoy the fear that this, this brings on. When it started going into cars, it's bad. That's why I have a dumb car. Oh, let's see this. Yeah, no, Geosim, I think it's a Discord issue. For sure. Yeah. It would still post something. I think it's a Discord issue.
I guess we could do that. I'm going to try and dump out the log. I'm pretty sure it's a Discord issue, though. Legitimately. Where is this? There we go. Compile. And save and compile. All right, we're good to go. I'm going to have it dump out of the log just in case. And we'll see what happens there. Because I'm pretty sure it's a problem with this. But yeah, no, that's wild, dude. I'm going to send this over to my buddies in the Psychoholics. Where are you? Where are you, glorious nerds? I'm putting it in dumpster fire. Dumpster fire is pretty good. <clears throat> No, no, no. Psychoholics. Psychoholics. They're a bunch of hackers. They're hackers, dude. Don't worry about it. Alright. That's a wild one, man. Huh. Hey, they changed something in, in Helldivers? Check this shit out. They changed the new liberation calculation. The impact multiplier scales inversely with the running average total population. This means as the galaxy has a target goal at how much liberation can be done across the entire galaxy, check out some graphs at planets for all data points, this new method rewards higher difficulties. Impact is based on experience and community alignment. Diverging efforts impacts the rates of each other versus the previous method. So if everybody is in one place, doing higher level missions like level 9s actually does matter. That's really awesome. I'm actually really excited for that. It'll give a reason to keep doing level 9s. Yeah. Hmm. Hmm. So, what is the deal with other planets? This is people who are playing the game as an individual and are having very little impact on the galactic war. They're dealing less damage than the planet regen's health, so it's constantly at full health. The Game Master can account for this, so they aren't negatively impacting the user, user base. So basically, if you're running with the rest of the community, if the community bands together on a single target, and you're all running level 9s, they're actually effective. No, level 9s were not more effective than level 7s before. Level 7s gave the maximum amount, so 8s and 9s were sort of irrelevant. We were just running them because they're fun, right? We want it to be really difficult. Now, running 9s is actually optimal. At least, that's the going theory. So that's good. That's a good thing. How's Beans doing? He's doing really well. We have to. He's going to take about two weeks to recover. Yeah, about two weeks. Kind of feels like anyone who caps out at mid-difficulty is being punished. No, it's not. Just because you're only at mid-difficulty doesn't mean you're being punished. It means that you give reward to the community based on middle difficulty. Why would you not give more reward for somebody who's doing a harder, harder difficulty? That's like saying that mythic raids should give normal raid loot. Right? Yeah, if you're playing, you're contributing. Doesn't matter, right? Have you yet to be able to finish an 8? Play more. Level 9 may not be optimal because you take longer to complete the missions. No, we don't. <laughs> We definitely do not take longer to beat the missions. The only reason that we take longer on, on level 9s is because we clear the map, which you don't have to do. Yeah, we don't have to do that at all. Having FOMO from difficulty is kind of wild. I agree with that. It's very strange. Yeah, you still contribute no matter what the difficulty is. You just contribute more. Yeah, take too long and on a level 9, you just die. What is the map like? Oh, shit. Oh, shit. Well, that's good to see. Wait, why did they say minus 0% per hour? Are we just winning those planets? Shit. But to take Astana? Did we take all this? Wow. All right. Hmm. What? Wait a minute. No, 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 no. Don't trust Joel. No, 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 no. If they've paused percentages on every one of these, 
that means that because of the bugs in the game, like the game had problems, they wanted us to be more progressed than we are right now. They're going to let us push all of this back, and then the Illuminator going to invade. For sure. They want us to feel in a position of comfort where we're winning before those guys come in. Yeah. Nah, dude. This is a ruse. This is a ruse to be like, oh, you're winning. No, you're not. <laughs> no, dude, that's going to be really rough. That's no. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Yeah, posture weak when strong, 100%. Joel. I'm onto you, Joel. I'm onto your bullshit, Joel. I'm onto it. I'm onto your bullshit, Joel. Yeah. I'm glad they gave us another major order, because the game was trashed. Everything got broken. We couldn't play. So I'm glad to see this. Glad to see it. This is good. We're going to succeed in 12 minutes on Astano. Wouldn't be the first time a long extinct threat came back. Well, I mean... Yeah. Hey, uh... It's gonna be real with you. Helldivers devs, I'm gonna give you a major order. Can you, can you make the lightning weapons work again? <laughs> Please, God. <laughs> Let me use my arc shit. I unlocked all of it for a reason. Like, come on. Major order. Fix the arc weapons. Please. Please. <laughs> Ooh, they're working on it though it's going to be out next week um, yeah it's set for Tuesday yeah I miss my arc thrower as well oh it's amazing at crowd control it's just broken right now uh, if you use the arc weapons it actually crashes the game at random yep yep no an issue they talked about it Dude, I'm going to be real with you. Yeah, when the Illuminator arrived, the Major Order is going to be like, don't lose Earth. Don't lose Super Earth. Yeah, that's why your shit was crashing. Yeah, stop using arc weapons. I, I'm going to be real with you. I don't understand why they didn't just disable the arc weapons. They may not have the tooling in place to be able to disable specific weapons right now. But any arc ability, so like the arc shotgun, the arc thrower, or the Tesla Tower, all of those will crash you right now. Yeah. If you, if you hear it and see it, it can crash you in the game. And it will crash anyone on your team as well. Yep. Any of the lightning shit. Any of it. Yeah. Sucks. Shouldn't be like that. Lounge King with $2 said peanuts equals fruit, so PB equals jam, so PB and J equals J and J. Are peanuts a fruit? Are peanuts a fruit? Peanuts are the exception as they're legumes, and thus technically vegetables. What does that make them? What does that make peanut butter? They're not a fruit. They're a vegetable. Peanut butter is bean dip. Yeah, it's bean dip. I'm going to say bean dip. I'll go with that. Yeah. Yeah, we'll do that. Fiddler underscore FM with 500 bits said morning, Captain. I heard you have a technique for resetting your circadian rhythm by staying awake for 24 hours. Yes. Trouble is I can't find any papers that support this, nor any advice on what you are supposed to do for the 24 hours. Uh, play video games. Yes. <laughs> I'm going to be real with you. I guess peanut butter is kind of like hummus and yeah. Salsa? Eh, no, because salsa's got tomatoes, and tomatoes are a fruit. You just stay awake. Let's play a video game. That's a lie? No, I've done it before. I've reset my, my rhythm on a certain timer by doing that. Salsa is a fruit salad, yes. Yes, it is. Salsa is a fruit salad, chat. It's true. Salsa is jam? Yes. Technically true. 
Solstice Jam. It is. Golomance's art with 500 bits said made a beef stew yesterday that filled my 12 cup pressure cooker with one leek, a potato and a half, and three pounds of beef cubes for $15. All right. For those looking to save money, don't be afraid to shop at farmers markets or international markets. Sometimes they sell monster sized produce. I agree with that. So, that one didn't go through to the Discord. So, we're going to go to StreamerBot. I'm going to go to Logs. And I'm going to look at the latest log. All the way down to the bottom of this. Why is this spamming, dude? Wait a minute, what the hell? Oh god, it's eating all the follow alerts. Dear God. I actually can't find the message. I'm going to try this again. Boochkit with 500 bits said, Thor, have you heard anything about the upcoming Star Citizen patch and the groundbreaking stuff they are doing with server meshing? Amazing stuff you might find interesting. I find the technology interesting, I just don't like the game. Because it's too much of a storefront right now. I, I want to see them release the video game more. I want to see more of the in-game systems. It's all very beautiful. But it's also not a video game yet. It feels like a very powerful tech demo with a shitload of monetization around it. Cool systems, though. This isn't logging. Hey, Geosim. This does not appear to be logging. At all. Oh, wait. Wait a minute. Totally is logging. Found it. It's just in a really weird way. So it is actually putting the link. It's just not. <laughs> it's just not putting it into Discord randomly. Why? Why? I don't understand. This is nuts, dude. I think I know why it's lagging as well. I think I know the reason. And it's really funny. It's because of how many of you guys are following. Every time someone follows, it gets a ping over pub sub. And people are going... <laughs> and it's just getting spammed to shit. It's wild, dude. It's really funny, actually. It's doing that. It, it does that every day. A little bit of hug of death. Yeah. I wonder if there's a way to disable those, because we don't actually have an action that's reading that 
listening pub sub. Hmm. Yeah, we don't have an action that's reading that at all. Shit. Well. Yeah. I needed to turn off verbose logging. That's what I need to do. Which I think I can do under settings somewhere. Thank you very, very much for those 10 gifted subs with a holy shit, dude. It's incredibly nice of you. Thank you. Hey, Geosim, where do I turn off verbose logging? Because it looks like verbose logging is actually causing a huge amount of problems. Or it's just spamming the shit out of the log file with stuff that we don't need. It's forced on the alpha? That would be it. Well... That kind of sucks. Because I think that's why this is running so badly, to be honest with you. I think it's because it's constantly writing to the file, and there's just a million actions going through. Like, if you're wondering, in terms of size of file, let me show you this. This log file is already 44,000 kilobytes for today alone. <laughs> And we've only been running for three hours. <laughs> so it's just like filling up like crazy. 78,000 lines of, of uh, logs right now. It's just like constantly spamming the shit out of it. I could revert, but I can't do it in the middle of the stream. I'm going to hit the button. I Z A Z I underscore 3213 with 500 bits said I feel like real life roboticists are forgetting to implement the fourth law of robots, which is they got to make the eyes go red when they turn evil. True. That is true. You have to. It's law, dude. Also, Bezos is here. I love when everything breaks every stream. Do you guys love that? It's my favorite. So yeah, uh, Geosim, there's no difference between them. The one above failed, the one below succeeded. I think it's a Discord problem. Legitimately. I think Discord is dropping random messages. I don't know why. I don't really have a solution here. Sounds like my memory. Who made you this way? Are these ferrets? Yes. I run a ferret rescue here in Washington State. Am I sick? Yeah. Yeah, I have a cold, dude. Yeah. 
Yeah, this is definitely broken. And it's I don't think it's on our end. We have one successful message, we have one failed message, and we both have the exact same throughput. So something is definitely wrong with Discord, I'm guessing, at this point. Because there's nothing different on our, our end. I don't know why, either. Because the messaging is exactly the same between the two. It's really quite weird as well. I don't know why it would be like that. It's very odd. Yeah. Systems breaking downstream on Discord side. So what's ending up... No, it's not follower rate limit. It's nothing like that. What's ending up happening is this. We have a whole bunch of things that go into place where it actually calculates what time the, you know, the, the message goes through and everything like that. And we feed that into a message that we send to Discord. The problem is... We message Discord over a Discord webhook. That webhook is now randomly failing. It's totally at random. Sometimes it works, sometimes it fails. I have no idea why. I'm still answering the questions like normal, but sometimes they're just not showing up in the TTS channel. And this isn't anything on our end. It's 100% everything on Discord's end. So, I can't fix this. <laughs> I don't know why it's like this. I have no clue. Throttle, maybe? There's no throttle on this. Discord's API is 10,000 messages. I think it's per minute. Or it's, it might be per 10 minutes. We're using, like, one a minute. <laughs> so, like, nah. Something's weird there. It's very, very strange. Can you please come work on Apex? I'm going to be real with you. Respawn? has a phenomenal security team. I've talked to a couple of the guys over there that are working on that. They're doing a very good job. You may not be able to see all the stuff that they're doing, and you may think that I'm very effective just because I've shown you a little bit of the stuff behind the veil. No. They are very knowledgeable. They're very driven. They give a lot of shits. They just can't show you everything. So, wait for them and support them. You don't need me over there. You've already got some really good dudes. Just takes time. Can you come and fix Capcom? I'm sorry. I, I'm going to be honest with you. I can't fix stupid. Yeah. It's unfortunate. It's unfortunate. Yeah, I know. I know. I know. I wish. I wish I could. Yeah. Capcom's monetization does seem terminal, and there's not much I can do there. Yeah. I, I tried. I did. Asana just got liberated? Hell yeah. <clears throat> Let's go to the next one. Baby with $4.99 said, Hi Thor. Hello. Nice to see you stream again. I pray Beans recovers easy. Yeah. If I were to create a handheld console from scratch, what language should I code in? <laughs> Bro, wait, what? If you want to make a handheld console from scratch, there's... the amount of... Okay, so, there's a lot of different pieces to that. You've got a hardware layer. You've got to have interfaces to any one of the games that are going to go onto this. You need to have engine compatibility for that as well, for major engines. You need to have manufacturing for the hardware in the first place. And then it has to have community buy-in. That's a lot of shit to go into that. That's a lot of shit to go into that. No, I didn't say no. I'm not going to say no. You should always strive to make cool shit. And there's no reason not to try. But there's a lot of components there. It's not as simple as which language should I choose. There's, there's just a massive, massive amount of components here. Yeah. And it's, it's fine. You can strive for that goal. People have done it. And you can even get things like... Um, if you want to get like a you know a breadboard set up and like set up your own little LCD screen and do your own graphics and display on that, you can do this. I've I've done stuff like that before, but building your own commercially viable console is a very different thing. And you know what it really comes down to? It goes to, it comes down to instead of just what is possible, right, where you can just get it working, to what is stable. Because when you're dealing with a stable environment, that's what you're dealing. with. 
with when you're looking at a consumer device, right? Like that's that's the biggest thing. When you think an Xbox, you think at least a state it's going to work like an Xbox unless it dies. But when you have it just working at home on a breadboard, you have a display working or anything like that, that's not a stable device. That's a custom implementation for that. So when you're trying to do that, that's really what you're looking for, and that's a that's a lot of work, man. I don't know if I'd be able to help you in regards of like what programming language because you can use all kinds of shit. You can use tons of stuff for that. But the, the hardest thing is going to be getting that to be stable and workable with current engines, if that makes sense. Let's join the stream. What are we talking about? Somebody wants to make their own console, which I think is a cool idea. I think it's a really cool idea. It's not easy, but it's cool, you know? Not easy, but cool. The Jocker with 500 bits said, Have you ever heard of a game called Cuisina? No. It's a rouge like dungeon crawler slash restaurant manager. Rouge -like. I don't know much about the dev team. But I've been enjoying it a lot recently and think it deserves a look. I want to see what this is at. Oof. Cuisina. Cute and tasty roguelike dungeon. Flavored dungeon. Roguelite flavored. I like that. Explore a lush world and defeat monsters with your trusty spatula and some boba tea. Then gather in delicious ingredients and bring them home to cook and serve at your restaurant. Really? I like that. To be honest with you, I love the idea of going into a dungeon, killing monsters, and then cooking them. Delicious. Cuisineer, like Pioneer. I like that. Biscotti. What a name, dude. Yeah, I like this. Look at that. I, I love that cute style. Wow, flashbang. Nice. Look at the cute style of characters. It almost looks like it would be a grid system, but it's not one. I like this. I dig that. You get a lot of control of the actual shop, too. That's nice. Look at all the different ways you can build this. Wow, that doesn't suck at all, actually. That's quite cool. I like the different weird character models as well. A lot of interesting character designs in this. Is that a robot? Does she have a robot leg? Oh, it's just a gauntlet. I was like, wait a minute. Oh, I guess she's got kind of a robot arm thing going on. I've always liked the idea of of monsters, like running a dungeon, going killing stuff in a dungeon, and then turning it into food, right? I, I actually think it's quite cool. I've always dug that. Look at the look at the combat actually. Combat in this looks quite compelling. Like, look at that. Really interesting gameplay. That's a cool weapon. Yeah, no, I dig this. Yeah, no, it does remind me of that too. Loken. You got burgered? You got burgered. I dig that. Yeah. Hell yeah. I'm always looking for neat things like that. Like, there's a couple of dungeon... Or there's a couple of game designs that I'll probably always play. Ones that I've always been very interested in. And, like, one of them is very simple. I like killing monsters and turning them into food. I'll always play a game that has that. It's it's like a game mechanic that just always gets me. It always hooks me, no matter what. And then the other one is I like games where you get to build a dungeon and play the bad guy. Something about that's just very nice. Building a dungeon and letting the heroes come in and you kill all the heroes... I like doing that. It's, yeah, like Dungeon Keeper. Dungeon Keeper is exactly what, what I enjoy. So if I can play Dungeon Keeper, or I can turn monsters into food, I'm into both of these. These are fantastic for me, right? And it's, it's always going to be the thing of, like, when I get that in a video game, I'm like, I'm in. If you have those mechanics, I'm in. Like, easy. Anytime. Anytime. You'll have me. You taking a look at Outpost Infinite Siege? Haven't heard of that one. Said, have those mechanics? Something a goblin would say? You're a goblin. You would know. Real Let's Urban Miner with 500 bits said, I didn't buy the game because of this. How many $70 yeah. sales did they miss out on trying to chase $2 add ons? That's kind of what I feel. You know, to be real with you, I, I think that developers, you have, to, you have to really wake up to this. And marketing teams that are at major studios, you have to wake up to this. There are so many of us that are not buying this $70 game because you did this. 
Not because this is egregiously expensive, but because we don't like seeing this in the industry. And it's not everybody, but there's enough of us. And enough of us don't like this that you're losing money overall. You could have just made it part of the game. It would have been fine. Absolutely, it could have been fine. I don't understand the necessity for this. Makes no sense. Makes sense. It's not even $41. It's, it's exactly what Co Carnage was talking about. Co Carnage is brilliant in this. He knows exactly what he's talking about. Let me pull this up. So Co Carnage's take is the problem is simple. When you want to sell something, there has to be a need for it. It's some easy for us to surmise that everything in a microtransaction list, take Dragon's Dogma 2, for instance, is extra unneeded since you can get it all in the game. No harm, no foul. Wrong. When you try to sell items, you try to make a need. When you need, imp you need an impetus for purchase. When you start attaching money onto items you earn in the game, who is to say, quote, the game developers were told to make sure that we limit X item because they are selling it as DLC. You make it harder to get for the normal player so that they feel a reason to buy it. This is super normal in the industry. So I responded to this. I just said, this take is entirely correct. As a developer, I've seen this many times throughout my career. Limiting in-game functionality or access to items features specifically to sell them back to the player. If you've grown up in this environment, you likely don't understand how bad it's really gotten. The last generation got all of these features with the game, not as add-ons we now pay for. That is the problem. You are being sold something that used to be free. You're being sold something we got for free. You shouldn't be okay with that. But many people grew up in an environment where this is normal. You're getting ripped off, man. You're getting ripped off. And I'm watching it happen. And the only reason why I can see that people are getting ripped off and people who grew up this can't see that they're getting ripped off is because I know what it was like before they started doing this shit. It's gross. It's really gross. Anyway, here. Enjoy this. Really gross. Yeah. Which company do you think pushed for MTX? Oh, I don't know. Little old company that started horse armor. We love that. Yeah. Yeah. Good old horse armor. They have you kill goblins in the game? True. What is this? Please comment on the mastery uploading of your content. Tons happening on YouTube without any form of credit. I know, dude. This shit is this shit is awful. I'm gonna be going through and doing a mass DMCAing. If you've re-uploaded my content anywhere on YouTube without making it transformative, you're gonna get copyright struck. We have hundreds of these videos. I'm gonna be doing one gigantic DMCA and shutting down all of your channels. I don't give a shit. You have to actually transform the content. You can't just repost my shit to the internet. It doesn't work that way, bud. And I've already taken down like 50 of them. So this one? Absolutely. These dudes are like trying to say that it's transformative and all they're doing is they're re-uploading. They'll, they'll have like a 30 second clip of themselves and then like 20 minutes of me talking with no edits. No, you're going to get you're going to get wrecked, dude. 100 percent going to get wrecked. No. It doesn't work that way. Yeah. It's even worse, the Apex shit re-uploading me. Do you know why? Let me pull this up. I'm going to show you why the Apex shit makes me mad. It's actually a lot of major creators inside of the Apex community as well that I've been seeing doing this. I had to put out a statement about this. Because they said lots of social media banter about the Apex Legends security situation disregard any clips or snippets you see of me in other videos. Many of these are leaving out critical context and discovery or jumping to conclusions with no evidence. Classic. What they've been doing is they've been taking little pieces of the giant two-hour video that I have and then saying, this major hacker says that you're not safe playing the video game. And then they make some sensationalist bullshit out of it. I'm taking down every one of those. I don't care if you have one sub or if you have a million subs or if you have 10 million subs. If you do that shit with me, to try and use my name to push your narrative, you're going to get banned on YouTube. That's how that shit's going to go. And I cannot wait for the copyright strike to hit you. Because holy shit, that is garbage. You will not use me for that shit. Not even a little bit. Yeah. I feel nothing watching those channels burn. Nothing at all. Literal garbage, dude. 
You mad? Yeah, dude. I'm only mad because I'm angry, though. <laughs> oh, man. Manny underscore Druid with 500 bits said, Yard cheer 500, do you plan on checking out the SCP expansion for Rimwall? Yes. That sounds cool as hell. I'm super into that. Yeah, dude. Zero Definitely. Siphon Zero with 500 bits said, Just bought the demo o mean the game. The demo is free, you goblin. The demo is completely free. The correct kind of petty? No, it's the correct kind of actual brand control. If somebody is using, like, say, like, in this position, right? I'm a security expert. I've been doing this for 20 years. People are using my words out of context to try and push a narrative so they can get clickbaits onto their videos so they can make money off of it. Using me out of context, which makes me look like a dipshit and makes them money. Of course I'm going to take them down. Yeah, stealing authority. That's exactly what's happening there. It's not petty. No, it's righteous. The moment I see that shit, I'm going to crush them. And I will feel nothing doing it. Nothing. Yeah. Somewhat underscore eccentric with 500 bits said, Yarchir 500, hello, Mr. Software. Hello. I like how you teach common sense in pretty everything much you do. Speaking of which, if I say, overheight, must turn, does that mean anything to you? No, doesn't mean anything. Find the proof at Yovo68's no. YouTube channel that has 180 videos of trucks getting ripped open by America's most infamous can opener bridge. <laughs> anyway, what? have a nice stream. P.S. Germa is behind you, peeping no, over not. your shoulder. Don't can't look. Say that. Link. HTTPS colon slash slash www. Why you like this? I like the idea of watching cars get ripped open. I used to, when I was younger, I used to go to monster truck rallies all the time. And I love the shit out of monster truck rallies. There's so much fun. There's so much fun to watch. I used to go watch, uh, there is a, a truck called Grave Digger that is like, he's got like a bunch of gravestones on the side of it. It's freaking rad. It's rad as shit. Rad as shit. Yeah, dude. I got to see that when I was a kid. Big green one. He's like green and black. Yeah. Awesome as hell. Yeah, see, look, everybody's talking about it. Yeah. <coughs> Love that shit. Yeah, I'm gonna look at this. Yeah, none of these messages are coming through. It is a Discord problem. America's most infamous can opener bridge? What the hell is that? What the hell is a can opener bridge? Dude, what the hell am I getting into? What does this mean? Oh. Oh, because it's 11 feet and 8 inches tall. No. It's just slightly too short. So the top of all these big rigs just get ripped right off. And it's like within inches too. Within inches. <laughs> it is a can opener. Oh my god, it just rips all of them open, dude. I'm sending you guys a link to this. You guys, so I don't, I don't like react content. I'm not going to sit there and like take this dude's content and then like do that. I want you to give him the views. Give him the views. That shit is wild. That is, that is wild as hell to watch, dude. No, you got to watch it yourself. I'm not going to, I'm never going to put it on screen and be like, hey, yeah, look, I'm reacting to it. No, you go watch that shit. That's freaking insane. That is, that is insane looking. Can't open her bridge, dude. That's insane. This video was made six years ago. It's got 3.3 million views. But why? I don't know. The bridge is 11.8 inches. It's 11 feet and 8 inches tall. <clears throat> the, the part that's really funny about this is I, I'm pretty sure all these trucks are 12 feet tall. So it's a 4 inch gap. And it's just ripping the top 4 inches of the cab off. It's 12 feet 4 inches now? Oh, did they raise it? Did they actually raise the bridge? Oh, my God. 
That's rough, dude. That's so rough. Yeah, just a little off the top. Just a bit. It still hits people? <laughs> Why would it still hit people? I think they lowered the road. You'd have to. Ugh. What is this one? Yeah, I'm going to link this in chat. So this is actually the original channel. Yeah, this is where all the source video comes from. That's crazy, dude. I've linked it to you guys now. You can have it. I've never seen anything like that. They even have a website, 11foot8.com. <laughs> oh my god, dude. Why, dude? Dude. They had two trucks hit this in 2023. Engineering. They raised the bridge so trains could reach higher speeds. Really? That's interesting. Too bad all of these uh, trucks explode on it still, which is not the best. This is honestly completely wild to me. <laughs> I've never heard of the can opener. Thank you for this. New fear unlocked, basically. Yeah. It's just slightly short. Yeah, it is. Yes, it's just slightly short. 12 days ago was the last video? Shit, dude. That is rough. Jaco Shade with 500 bits said, Hey Thor, hope you got some sleep last night. I did. I read this article on kernel level <coughs> anti-cheat today. After everything you've said about it, I was curious what your take would be on it. I feel like the defense in the article is basically, sure it gives control, but it ain't that bad. <laughs> Article is at HTTP. Let's go look. The gamers do not understand any cheat. Oh dear. Oh dear. In recent years, a number of game devs, most recently Helldivers 2 team, have faced widespread outcry from players implementing kernel level anti cheat drivers in their games. To learn more about this phenomenon, I decided to interview people who've led anti cheat teams on games like Fortnite, Roblox, and Valorant. Okay. What? What's the problem here? Anti-cheat software and protect game guard. Okay. I'm reading through this to try and find where they're actually talking about anti-cheat instead of all the other fluff in here. Here's the thing, quote, anti-cheat is such a cursed field to work in, Chamberlain says. Developers have no incentive to steal your data or hurt your computer, and if an evil developer did want to harm players, then they don't need anti-cheat software to do it. Installing their game would be enough. It's not that. The game itself doesn't get kernel-level access. Kernel-level anti-cheat does. I think this is a misrepresentation of the amount of access the kernel level anti cheat gives you on your gives on your machine. This is a weird article, frankly. Yeah. Quote stealing your nudes, getting your password, stealing your bank info, none of these things require a kernel level driver. They don't. All of that is possible with a regular application that you install on your computer. I don't need a kernel level driver to stealthily record your webcam. I don't need a kernel driver to get your credit card info. That's completely true. But with kernel level access, you can do a lot more with it. And if that ever gets piggybacked, well, guess what? Now everybody's screwed. Now it's a huge problem. I have no reason to give anyone kernel level access on my machine whatsoever. And as a security expert, I'm going to keep that level of paranoia, no matter how much you think I should be fine with it. Not going to change. Not at all. Yep. Yeah, whoever's driver loads first gets to observe or influence everything that happens on your computer after that point. It's kind of like a race. Correct. Yep, famous cheat to do this was WoW Glider, the botting service for World of Warcraft. They were hiding from Warden, which is Blizzard's anti-cheat. That's completely correct. They had a thing called Tripwire, and we beat it eventually. 
When Warden is scanning, it would hide. When Warden wasn't scanning, it would put it back. Ultimately, Blizzard struggled for years to stop Wild Glider's influence, and they only managed to shut down the service down in 2011 via a lawsuit against Wild Glider's developers. We went a different route because their system kept hiding. Tripwire would stop us from re reverse engineering the client whenever Wild Glider was injected. This would stop us from being able to find a code cave so that we can go and build a, thumb, a fingerprint to go put it into Warden. It was really annoying. It was really annoying. And then finally, they went and sued them and they got rid of the damn thing. Lou, I just, I'm just sick. It's, vocal cords are not happy about it. I'll be fine though. Don't worry about it. So with this, yeah, normal shit. Any software you put on your machine can be used to take over. Correct. But not every software gives kernel level access. And to be real with you, I'm never going to allow anything like that on my machine. Ever. Ever at all. There's no reason for that. You sound a bit better than how you started? Yeah, it's because I feel a little bit better, to be real with you. Yep. If any game developer, even those who don't use kernel driver cheats, could in theory steal your information, how can players trust anyone? You already have to trust people who provide the software you run, but when you run software on your computer, it's acting on your behalf. It could do anything you can do. If you can use your webcam, it can use your webcam. Kernel or not kernel, it does not make a difference to the level of danger posed to you by unknown software. The argument is kind of distraction. It's not really a distraction, no. It comes down to one question. Do you trust the people making the software to do right by you? No. And here's the reason why. If we are dealing with a game company directly, that game company alone is one layer of risk. These anti-cheats are not made by that game company. They're made by a secondary company, and they are farmed out to those game companies, which adds another layer of risk. This layer of risk has kernel-level access. It has full access to the hardware and software on your computer. Now you have a problem, because you have two different layers of risk. If we want to look at this in more real-world effect, let's go back to Target. Target itself was not vulnerable. However, through an HVAC company, a vulnerability was present, that allowed them to get into target systems and steal 350 million credit cards. The PI of 350 million customers. When you start adding layers of extra risk with different types of teams and parties that are involved in that, it gets really bad. Yes, HVAC like air conditioning. Bingo. Yeah. I don't like that. I'm never going to like that. It's about risk management. I don't want to have another system running on my computer that has kernel-level access that is not directly the developer. If I'm getting software from the developer, I just want the software from the developer. I don't want a secondary layer of extra risk that has even higher access than the game. There's no reason for that. And coming from the position of actually banning people in video games, we never needed that shit before. We don't need it now. There are other ways of catching people. So it just adds a layer of risk without adding a lot of reward. And on top of it, it's not a silver bullet anyway, so you're introducing all this extra risk without even getting anything out of it, frankly. It's kind of annoying. I don't understand why this is necessary. It's easy to implement. That's fine, right? Yeah. Kernel level access also raises the risk of BSON. Mm, I'd like to see information on that. I've never seen that before. Yeah. How would you go about deleting kernel level access software? If it's as simple as just clicking the uninstall button, it depends. Depends on what it is. Does Intel Divers 2 have kernel-level access anti-cheat? Yes, it does, which is why I run it on a secondary computer and then stream the video to you from this machine. I have a bait machine. The bait machine allows me to run kernel-level access games on it. Bait machine. So, you know, I'm not, I'm not a fan of extra layers of risk. Never will be. Why should they be trusted? They shouldn't. Is the anti-cheat running if you aren't running the game? I don't know. I don't care, it's on that other machine. What is, what is this weird-ass take? Perfect Chinese spying method. The video game can already do that. You know that, right? 
Like, I could, I could do that with my video game without having kernel-level access. I used to, like, part of my job was putting PNGs on a USB that were actually EXEs in the background and then putting things like holiday Christmas party pictures and then throwing it in, a, in like a, I don't even know, like a car park and then waiting for somebody to go plug it into their work computer. And they always would, eventually. And I had full access to their machine. Funny game. Yeah. Don't. If you're cold, they're cold. Take them inside and plug them into your work computer. Yeah. Yeah. You did that once? Yeah, and only once, I bet. That legal? It was my job. So, yes. So, if you, if you don't know me, I've been a hacker for 20 years. My, my job before this was hacking power plants for the federal government. I find vulnerabilities, turn them into companies, and they pay me to do so. That's what I've done for most of my career. I quit that about six years ago, seven years ago, and I've been doing this full-time ever since. Yeah. So, like, that's what I do, man. So, yeah. Legal. That was the whole point. Legal. They paid me to do it. They pay me to be the bad guys so the real bad guys can't do it. That's the whole idea. It sounded like you were doing it in random car parks? No. Bring the game in the VM, minimize the threat of anti cheat. It depends if the game will actually run in a VM. Not all of them do. Grant Walker with $5.05 said, I heard ADHD described as the neurogenetical nearsightedness in time. And as what? someone with ADHD, I finally have a reason why for why some stuff. Neurogenetical nearsightedness in time. Wh what? Also, I have to say that the new the new thumbnail is working great. So if you don't have a photo, it does this now. Which I'm pretty happy with. I think it actually does that for YouTube. I think if you're a YouTube donator, it does this now. Which is perfect. It's everything I wanted it to be and more. Thor loves Java with 500 bits oh, said hi. My okay. name is Thor, but my friends call me Jason the Java Man. No, they don't. These are my career highlights. <clears throat> I started working at Blizzard because no, I love didn't. freezing temperatures. This love for cold climates inspired me to create Club Penguin. I have struggled with a wet cough yeah, from no, a I'm young sick. age. This explains why I've been hacking for the past 20 years. God, it's probably from all the toxic fumes I inhaled while working on an oil rig. Shout out to my fellow rig workers, J Dog salutes you. I'm gonna go brush my teeth, I'll be right back. Thank <laughs> you. 
All right, there we go. Now I can talk a little bit more. Buh. Basically, there's like, it just keeps getting phlegm on my vocal cords, and it makes it really hard to talk for a little while. I just gotta like go and hit some mouthwash, and then it's fine. Yeah, it's super annoying. My voice is still kind of messed up. It's not good. Yeah, no, it sucks. It feels shit. I was sick, and now I just have like phlegm throat. You know. Some hot tea? Yeah, the hot tea doesn't get anywhere near your vocal cord. Generally, right? It's just kind of annoying. What's this piano music? All this music is from our game Heartbound. All of it is. Yeah. A couple new Helldiver voice channels? Sure, let me go do that. I need to add voice channels to each one of the different sections, too. So I'll be doing that. Where's Helldivers? What? Where'd it go? Duplicate. Helldivers 4. Duplicate. Helldivers 5. There we go. Helldivers channels are made. You're good to go. Yeah, no. Only thing you can do is not talk. It's not really an option. I agree. Yeah. Is this a permanent bedroom voice mode? Do, do you think this is my bedroom voice? No. No, that's just screaming, right? Just screaming. Constant screaming. That's my bedroom voice. Yeah. Yeah. You wouldn't understand. Next. Dug Dot with 500 bits said this marketing stunt, while different, reminds me of when Dead Space 3 launched with store microtransactions for bonus resources and such in the single player co op title. One moment. That one didn't come through, so let's go click on it. Dead Space 3 launched with store microtransactions for bonus resources? God, that sucks. God, it sucks. Like, here's what I'm going to do going forward. This is this is going to be my line in the sand. And I'm going to miss out on games because of this. I am. If your game comes with microtransactions or what are normally in-game features or consumables, then I won't buy your game. That's it. I refuse to buy any game that uses in-game features for money or consumables for money. Ever. Cosmetics are fun. Cosmetics are fun. If I want to run around in my video game and look like, a, like I'm wearing a clown outfit for $5, then I'll do it. That's fine. I don't give a shit about that. I don't give a shit about that at all. Have fun with that. But in-game features, consumables, I'm out. You do that, I won't even buy your game. I refuse. Your channel is literally called Pirate Suffer. I, I'm aware. Are you are you trying to make a narrative here in some way? Is there something you need? I I may have been here streaming for seven years. I may know the name of my own channel. I know. Surprising, really. Yeah, astute observation. Yes. What about DLC content? Live service games. What about DLC content? Does it include features that you should otherwise have in game or consumables? as a way to buy those things? Because let me be real with you, I don't know why Dragon's Dogma 2 did this, but every single one of these is counted as a DLC because apparently they don't know how to build an in-game shop. Hmm. Does Helldivers 2 count, dude? No. I earned all of that in-game. No. And they didn't limit any of that stuff. In fact, do you want to know why Helldivers 2 doesn't matter with this? When Helldivers 2 launched, anytime you found super credits in-game, which is the paid-for currency, it only gave you 10. Now it sometimes gives you 100. And if anyone on your team gets it, everyone on your team gets it instantly, whether you actually finish the mission or not. I have thousands of super credits. I've gotten like 6,000 through normal play. The unlockables in the game, they cost 1,000 for a full sheet of unlockables. A total of 2,000. I've gotten 6,000 through gameplay. They didn't limit any of that shit. In fact, I have so many super credits that I don't know what to do with them between now and when the next war bond comes out. It doesn't make any sense. They've, they've actually unincentivized me from buying currency because they've given me so much.
So no, it's not the same. It's very different. Not the same at all. And the difference between those two things as well, these are consumables, man. It's gross. It's really gross to me. You have enough for a ton of war bonds? I know. It's insane. You also get 200... Wait, there's 200 credit drops? True? Hmm. That's ridiculous. Yeah, these are one use. Those are one use items. I was just unsure. Yeah, no. I'm just going to explain my, my standard on it, right? I'm upset that Capcom did this. Yeah, this is... A, this is. Imagine one of your dudes dies, and then you pay a dollar to bring him back. One time. Yeah, this is, this is selling consumables for money. This is a one-time revive for one of your characters. Yeah. Cronus has actually got that there. Thing is, you can get all of that in cash up. No, you can't. It says right here. What does this say? This content requires Dragon's Dogma 2. Stop that. Gain one special camping kit and make them available for purchase at shops in-game. This item is not obtainable in game unless you buy it and then it makes it purchasable in game and it is it is less heavy than the normal one in game. No it is not available in game. It says it right there. It says it right there, chat. You make it available in game by buying it. You can't get away from that. Wrong. So you're saying this is false advertising. Gain one special camping kit and make them available for purchase at shops in-game. Efficient without being unduly weighty, this camping kit is favored by explorers traveling far afield. What, what do you want from that? The item is not available in-game until you buy it. Vendors will not sell it to you until you pay this money. And it gives an advantage because it is less heavy. How am I wrong about this? You can buy them in game after you buy this for real money. So no, I'm not wrong. No matter how many times you try to say that I am. You're not wrong. People are just dumb. Bingo. It's not even pay to win. It's a single player video game. This is a single player game. It's a single player. It's a single player $70 game. This is a single player $70 game that sells you consumables to revive your units. And some of you are defending it because you're Zoomers that don't remember what games were like before they did this shit. You've got brain rot from microtransactions that are now normalized so heavily that you don't know what a game is like without them. Holy shit. What has happened to you? God Four damn. Loves Java with 500 bits said I'm deeply passionate about helping hearing impaired pet owners. This That's is cool. how I was able to obtain three black badges from DEF CON. Then I started streaming on Twitch. It was here I found and married the love of my life, Miss Paint. I still remember the first time we met. There she stood in the doorway. I heard the mission bell. And I was thinking to myself, this could be heaven, or this could be hell. What's Stop trying to buy the demo. I haven't worked on Heartbound since 2018. That's not so true. It's free. God damn it. God damn it. Oh. Literal goblin. That's Bastion what you are. B54 with 500 bits said Thor sounds sexier when he's sick. How many That's diseases do we need to pump it? into him until he wraps back around to no. three second puberty Thor? No. The sexiest no. version. No. 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 <laughs> no. No, I said Lakeside miners yesterday. with 1,115 bits said Twitch ended up making me disable Firefox's tracking blocker to log in. Mm. In other news, I bought my own grocery for the first time yesterday. Small thing, but I feel proud. Hmm. Did you guys see that Chrome is actually going to be blocking Ubaluck Origin? You see that? Yeah. Starting June 2024, ad blockers such as uBlock Origin and many other extensions on Chrome will no longer work as intended. 
Google Chrome will begin disabling extensions based on an older extension platform called Manifest V2 as it moves to the more limited V3 version. So Firefox is about to be real big. That's basically how that goes. Why? Because it cuts into their money. Yeah. Sounds like Firefox is back. Yeah, exactly. So that's pretty interesting. Starting in June 2024. Did people forget about this? Yeah, they did. They did. They forgot that this was going to happen. But yeah, it's starting to hit the news cycle again. Something to talk about. It's quite funny. Opera GX seems like, dude... I know Opera GX is like cool and all, but holy shit, their social media is real weird. Like legitimately to me. It's like they took Wendy's and then forgot that filters exist. That's what it feels like to me. It's like, holy shit, dude. It just gets a little too far sometimes. Yeah. Is Opera GX decent? I have no idea. I haven't used the browser at all, but it's like, dude, their social media is real. It's a little bit much. Just a bit. Opera has a VTuber? Yeah, that's weird. Do you know why that's weird? Let me pull this up. It's weird. It's weird. Yeah, named GX Aura. It's weird. Do you know why that's weird? Or you don't understand it? No, I do understand it. Do you know why it's weird? Because a VTuber is generally a person. This is a brand. It's a brand. It's no different than Ronald McDonald. It's the same. Ronald McDonald is the same as this VTuber. That's all it is. You're not, I'm not wrong about that either. It is a mascot. She even is a nice person. She's a marketing team. Specifically. For a brand. For a company. Please don't tell me you're getting thirsty for the brand. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, God. The kids ain't right, dude. It's not good. Oh, it's not good. What's happening? First, people are like, no, microtransactions for consumables are actually good. And now they're like, I I wish to thirst for the brand's VTuber. Like, what? God. Skynet is already here. It's too late. It's time to disappear into the woods, Chet. This is it. It's too much. The brain rot is real. What the hell's happening? Zonic underscore Eartharnos with 500 bits said amazing video about the whole Apex security breach. Yeah. Learned a lot and got me interested in security. What nice. would be the best way to start learning offensive security? I have a whole bunch of resources for you. Check this shit out. So if you go into channels and roles on Discord and you go to hacking, you can actually select hacking as one of those. It'll actually let you have access to the hacking area of the Discord right here and you can click on resources and it'll give you access to all of this there you go tons of resources for you all kinds of stuff for you to learn that's the whole idea do you know what skibbity toilet is i do know what skibbity toilet is it is the zoomer and like kind of really young millennials take at finally getting into absurdist humor we had the same shit we had youtube poop we had ytmnd absurdist humor every generation eventually discovers it and that was theirs we said words, all kinds of stuff. salad fingers. Yeah. Absurdist humor's fine. Although Skibbity Toilet's a little bit weird. It is weird. Yeah. It's weird. It is weird. It's the new MLG humor? Yeah, it's the same. Same shit. Llamas is in hats? Absolutely. Yep. Absurdist humor is normal. Like, every generation eventually finds it. Although, usually they don't use Gmod to find it. Yeah, Gary's mod used to make such a horrible thing, you know. Usually it's something new. Usually. Yeah. Gary's mod is some wild shit, dude. <laughs> Trash Trip with 500 bits said, Hey Thor, about a month ago you looked at my rage game called Step by Step. 
Yeah. I asked for tips to do better in the future since it underperformed, and you said I should focus on building community. Yeah. I wasn't going to keep you posted, but I thought it might be inspirational for devs out there. I decided to start a YT channel called Trip Rainy and gained 200k subscribers in the last month and my game has sold 200 more copies. Thank you for the advice, I'm shocked it worked so well. Hold up, that is a shitload of subscribers in there. Wow, you actually have. I made a rage game with no experience. 204,000 subscribers. God damn, dude. You've gotten a lot of views. You're getting a huge amount of views on your shorts. This is great. Good job. Really good job. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Proud of you. That is great, dude. This is fantastic. Dude, people are loving it. Keep it up. 100% keep it up. Proud of you. See, I told you. Focus on community. It's all that matters. All that matters. I'm. That's awesome, dude. That's freaking rad. It's, it's one of the things I always, I always tell people, too, is success on social media, success on creating content and things like that, it's, it's repeatable. You can do it, too. You can. It's just you have to focus on the things that are your strengths and show other people. This dude didn't do the same thing that everybody else did. He did the things that he can do very, very well, and he put them out there on the Internet. People like them, and he interacted with that community and kept moving forward. Awesome way to do it. Good job. Seriously, good job. Hell Zero yeah, Siphon Zero with 500 bits said my biggest contention is microtransactions. I feel it drives down the quality of games. Yeah. One developer said from Rareware that did the original DKC series, you're only as good as your next game. I love the DKC series on the SNES WAAAAYY back in the 90s. Pay to win models ruins the experience for me. GTA 5 is a good example with its shark card BS. Yeah. Um... The way that I feel about microtransactions that have any type of non-cosmetic feel to it. So, like, if it's a cosmetic thing, I really don't care. If it's non-cosmetic in any way, if it's actually giving you in-game, you know, resources in some way, if it's giving you any type of, um, like, consumables like we're seeing here or any type of any of that shit, right? What you're doing is you're selling the game short. That's what you're doing. If you want the real experience, you have to pay more money. And it's not good. It's not a good thing, frankly. I came from the time where you just buy the game. And you own the game. You do whatever the hell you want at that point. And if it's a single player game, who gives a shit if you cheat? Right? It doesn't matter. But now we're entering this very weird realm. Where on a single player game, I can tell you to buy microtransactions. Your voice is still different? I'm aware. I'm still sick. Amazingly. So like, we, we came into this time now where it's like, you're in a single player game. You can be banned from a single-player game. You're not allowed to cheat in it, but you can buy cheat codes. That's what that is. You can buy cheats. Like, you're getting items for money. We used to get items for cheat codes. You're buying cheat codes. And if you can't make that connection, you deserve the pay-to-lose environment that you're in now. Because that shit ain't good. It's 100% pay to lose. It's silly, but it's true. The damn Oblivion horse armor ruined everything? Kind of did. It's shitty. Can't I pirate the game and then cheat? With their system right now? Sure. I bet you could. I wouldn't see why that wouldn't be possible, you know? What do you think would be the end of the microtransaction stuff? What do you think would be the last thing they monetize?
I would say playtime, but they've already done that. That's already a thing. They monetize everything at this point. Character slots, consumable items, playtime. Core functionality of a game. Core features of a game. Quality of life features. New Game Plus. What do you have left? Monetizing accessibility features, maybe? Pay a dollar to use a controller? Pay a dollar to play in full screen. Pay a dollar for colorblind mode. I think it's probably like the end game there. There's not really much left. Pay a dollar to exit Vim. That's a lie. You'll never exit Vim. Hmm. Oh, I have an idea. Pay a dollar to save scum. Do you want a different ending? Pay a dollar to go back in time to the other ending. And then heavily restrict the save file. Ooh. There you go. See how evil this can just get? And all you have to do is slowly over time make an entire generation of people feel comfortable with resurrecting a character for a dollar. And then maybe a couple years from now, you push it a little farther. And then a little farther. And since it's slowly happening over time, everyone thinks, well, I mean, it's not so bad. It's just a little bit more. It's not so bad. So I only have one stash tab in my video game now. Oh, whatever, I'll just buy a couple more of them. That's fine. It's not that big of a deal. It's only five bucks. Oh, so I only have one resurrect stone. I'll just buy another one. That's fine. It's not that big of a deal. It's only a dollar. We used to get that shit for free. Don't like that direction. Don't like where it leads. And I don't like where it is now. You're paying for the game twice. Sparker with $4.99 said when I first heard you ask, why is the mole named Avocado? <laughs> I confidently yelled, because one mole is Avogadro's number. Guess it's an extra nerdy pun. That's a pretty good one, actually. I like that. I do LT2 like that. Gunberg with 500 bits said I'm sorry for asking this again, but I missed the answer last stream and that the clips got nuked. Have you played TIS-100? Yes. TIS-100 is amazing. I love the hell out of it, actually. One sec. Yeah, TS-100 is awesome. We have an update for something. Jake has given me an update. Whoop. Why do people put 5k or 10k hours into a game? Because they love the game. That's why. There's no reason to play a game for 5 or 10,000 hours if you don't love it. You must really, really enjoy it at that point. Really, really must enjoy it. You could say GitHub desktop, bleh, but whatever, it's done. Long files are done. Development. GitHub. Lock in. Lib. IntelliJ. Did the TTS get fixed? No, it's on Discord side. <laughs> it's a bug with Discord. No, not with our implementation. That's the problem. Yeah. Not really anything I can do about it. Discord is just randomly dropping Discord hook stuff. Ugh. Wow. Why is that palm bad? Why are you angry? Well, that can't be good. Well, we'll find out why in a minute. It's downloading a bunch of bullshit. Did you fork Mythic Lib ages ago? Ages ago, dude. Yeah. Okami Fenrir with 1000 bits said, Hey Thor, first thank you for being the awesome human you are. I bought You're Heartbound awesome. and can't wait to play what you have made. 
What sort of skills would you recommend having for IT help desk? I'm considering switching professions from my current career to IT, but I don't know where to start. What Thank is your you. current career? Have a good one and sorry for the long message. So let's go pull up an IT help desk job. We'll look at an entry level IT help desk associate. As part of the help desk team, computer support assistants provide technical assistance and support related to computer systems, hardware, and software by answering users' questions, training users on basic system and computer functions, addressing system and user issues, and resolving issues in a timely and professional manner. There's a full description for this that will actually show all of the things that are required for this. So entry-level IT help desk support associate, and this is at Washington Professional Group at Mukilteo, Washington. which kind of near where I'm at, right? Maybe within 40 minutes. You get these everywhere. And they have all the different qualifications in here. So there's a ton of different IT help desk jobs. I apply to that job, well, there you go. If you're looking to find out what you need to have, all of this stuff is listed. And yeah, I'm sick, yeah. Yeah, CompGA A plus is not a bad start. No, it's not. And once you're in there, get Sec plus and Net plus. Both of those are very good, yeah. So like, you've got a lot of options in this, legitimately, and you can find where you want to go, you can find where you what you have to do, it's just go and look up the job application and see what they require, you know? It's super, super important for that. But yeah, I've been sick. I'm sick today. Uh, sick of the 90 cents? Rad. You doing your OCP right now? Nice. Why is this angry? Is this still angry? Let's go validate this. Is this still actually angry? Has the Palm always bitched about this? I don't know if it has. I feel like this didn't used to bitch about this, Jake. Maybe it has. I don't know. It seems to have compiled correctly. I'm just going to ignore it. That seems like the, the best way, right? Yeah, we'll just ignore it. I don't want to think about it. Yeah, I'm just going to let it bitch. I'm trying to sleep. Can you sing for me? No. Dude, I am sick. I can barely speak, let alone sing. Yeah, I think that's a, I think it's a good direction, though. Let's go pull this up. We did it. Finally managed to be around in time to join the Goblin Horde? Yeah, but I'm sick today, so it sucks. It's the worst. Variant 6 with 500 bits said might be better <clears throat> to take a break and come back after a breather. What? Nah, screw that. Blushy Jude with 500 bits said you Thor, good to see you back on. I'll yeah, be dude. delivering democracy while watching you do your awesome thing. I noticed that hunters are spawning at an alarming rate since the new patch with a higher mortality rate, which makes medium level modes incredibly frustrating to play solo. Anyway, if you wanted to join me later on today, if you're up to hell dive, I've reached impossible mode and hoping to get to hell diver mode soon. Nice. Stay being badass, Lord Goblin. XD. Dude, you're badass. Yeah, I'm, um, I actually really want to. I'm going to play some hell divers later today. I think the biggest thing is, I don't know if it's changed. Some planets have different 
rates of spawning. So like different monsters will spawn at different rates on there. Like some of them will have more elites, some of them will have more hunters. There's all kinds of weird shit. Have you considered that it might not be a cold, but some allergy? It's... Okay, listen here, chat MD. It is a cold. I got a cold. I coughed a bunch. I blew out my voice. And it's gone. Now the cold is gone, but my voice is healing. It's not... It is not allergies. No, chat MD. No. No. It's not COVID. It's not lupus. I'm not pregnant. It'd be very difficult for me to be pregnant. It would be. Incredibly difficult. I know. Surprising, right? Yeah, it's not Ligma. You have Ligma, unfortunately. Yeah. You do. You died of Ligma, even. It's actually your funeral right now. Unfortunate. Unfortunate. Uh, whitelist on. Boop. Server restarting. I think you're taking too much Java. Probably true. I'm not Gregnant. You're Gregnant. Congratulations. <coughs> uh. Buh. This is my first stream and I already died, GG. This is your first stream and I just lost the game. Unfortunate. It's unfortunate. Can't believe it. Can't believe it. JFX with 500 bits said Sag the stream the other day got corrupted. Yeah. I'm just having all these technical issues at the same time. The other the stream the other day didn't get corrupted. Um, I had to delete the VOD. Because uh, Heli.GG's profanity filter failed. And I had, to, I had to delete the VOD because someone was an idiot. However, do you want to know something funny? Do you want to know something funny? We found out who it was. The guy was that was posting racial slurs through Pally.gg. What he neglected to realize is that his payment information on file actually tied him back to another donation that he gave where he used his actual Twitch name to request an unban request. Not so smart. So now he's been banned on Twitch and he's banned from our entire community. The way that I feel about this, honestly, is this. Yeah. Yep. Fantastic. Yeah, dumb as hell. You burger him before sending him on his way? No, I reached out to Pally and I said, is there any way that we can tie this to an actual user? They gave me the information to show that we could tie it to an actual user. Then I passed that along to Twitch and I reported the dude's account. Dude got banned from Twitch and got banned from our entire community. Don't do that shit. We will find you. That's just how that goes. Like, really dumbass thing to do. Yeah, not a smart thing to do. <coughs> what did he do? Posted racial slurs through our donation system? It's really not a smart thing to do. Yeah. I don't know why they did it. Idiots. Thought they wouldn't be found. want to hear how Beans is? Beans is doing okay. He's going to take about two weeks of recovery time. He's doing alright. He's actually... He's sleeping right now. So he's doing okay. I'm really worried about him, though. It kind of messes me up, to be honest. Okay. 
Okay. We should be good to go. Is that your MC server? Yes. Nerds abound. Hey Jake, interesting question with this. So, since you made it so that corruption no longer applies damage over time to a PvP immune target, right? That's part of this, which is good. Did you also change it so that it actually has to use line of sight or no? Because I'm wondering if we can still use it through walls and shit like that, if that makes sense. Because I was thinking we could redesign a lot of these. I haven't done that yet. It requires a bigger refactor of the spell code. Yeah, because what I was thinking is this. Because it already does like a radius around it, it actually does a sphere. So this is a like a full any direction sphere, right? So with that in mind, the thing that I was interested about doing is maybe we take the origin point, wherever that origin point is, we go up by a certain amount of maybe 0 0.5 blocks, right? So it's always going to be above whatever the target is. And then we go from there and we do line of sight out of that location in all directions. Does that make sense? And if we detect the target along that disk, then it checks to see if it's in line of sight. Because we, we could just pull the entity. And if the entity is within the radius, then it checks line of sight to it. That's what I was thinking the same thing. I think it's the cheapest way to do this in terms of processing power. Because we'd only have to run a collision line from the origin point to each entity within the radius. And if that collision doesn't go through, then it doesn't go through. We would have to uh, negotiate for doors. Like if a door is, is open versus closed, that has to be checked for. Which I don't know if that's been fixed yet in spells. Are closed doors still blocking spells? Because I think they're using collision. Yeah, see how it bounces off that, but then if you get it just right, it'll shoot right through the window. God damn it. There we go. Yeah, it'll shoot right through the window if you do it just right. Because it's actually collision based and the whole of the door is actually collision, like without collision. If I can get it just right. But I can't, because I'm apparently bad. We've had this work before. It's quite funny. Oh, well. You're not a fan of that? Yeah, I think we should just make them ignore doors. Except for the iron door. I think that was the thing that we were talking about. Is it should just go through doors. Except for iron doors. Like, iron doors should be the one thing that it, it doesn't go through. Because I don't like that people are making, like, a door meta where they're trying to, like, cover all of Merkheim in doors. <laughs> it's just freaking gross. Yeah. MC in windowed mode is so cursed. I just do it all the time when I'm testing shit. Ignore the top half of the door? No. No, there's, there's a door meta, so, like... Jesus Christ, you actual bastards. 
filling my inventory up with garbage again. Every time. Every time I log into this freaking first game. Actively slowing me down. Yeah, so the door meta is this. Where basically a player will make a gigantic long chain of doors. Just make a shitload of doors. And then they start fighting people in PvP, usually using an archer. Because the arrows will go between the doors and the spells get caught on these along the whole way. It's really annoying. It's just like really, really annoying. And it's just, it's just degenerate gameplay, so we gotta fix this. Has the Apex situation boost your views at all? No, this is about normal. This is where we're normally at. Hasn't really changed a huge amount. Gave a lot to the YouTube channel though, so that's kinda cool. Scooby Doo Trench Warfare. It's just so weird, right? There are spells in the MC server? Yes. So here's here's basically what happened. I don't like Minecraft. I think Minecraft's boring as shit. So about two years ago, I played Minecraft for the first time. Not even a joke. It was like two and a half years at this point. And I was like, wow, this sucks. I don't like any of this. This is boring. So instead of just wallowing in it sucking, I was like, what if I turn this into an MMO? So it had objectives and was interesting. And people were like, you can't do that. You'd have to build a modded client. I was like, what if I didn't build a modded client? They're like, that's not possible. And I was like, but what about server-side plugins? They're like, you couldn't do that with a server-side plugin. So we did. And it's fully playable in vanilla. And it's a gigantic MMO with a whole bunch of players. And it has like five classes with dozens of spells and all kinds of shit. Yeah. It even has like powers and set bonuses and all kinds of shit. We've got a warrior, a guardian, an archer, a thaumaturge, and a mage. I've got a bunch of different dungeons and all kinds of shit as well. So, like, one of the ones I'm going to be working on probably of the next 24 hours is I'm going to be extending Krogner's Bastion. Because it's got a bunch of stuff that I just don't think is very good in it right now. Like, the dungeon layout is kind of small based on what I was doing before. But I do like the puzzles that we have in here, as you can see. They're quite fun. Little jumping puzzle. Little crushing puzzle. But the idea that I wanted to do is like set up these like these traps like this. And then this area over here, I'm going to extend this out into a couple of rooms with monsters and shit. Because I think that'll be more fun. Because we have all this space. Might as well use it, you know. Might as well use it. I may actually have it go from here. And then immediately go out here and drop down. And then go down underneath the lava and kind of go from there. I think it'd be kind of fun for that. Yeah. Might do that. Not sure yet. I can implement any kind of ideas you get from Block Wars. Maybe. I might do that. I might do that. That might be fun to do. Our latest thing where Jake updated Clock Game and they were able to get this working has been really, really nice. Basically, if you haven't seen this, the way that this works now... Wow. I can't see anything. Fantastic. It actually uses a plugin to maintain all of the in-game stuff. See? It's great. Yeah, it's called Clock Game. <laughs> it's a great way to do it. Small chance to get a free code for Harpen Demo? No. All this shit is free. There's no monetization at all in the game either. Your, nas your last name has Linden in it. Like Linden Labs? Hmm, I'm on to you. Rare last name, dude. Uh. Clock game, you goblin. Hmm. <sighs> Don't scare me like that. Maybe I will. <laughs> You've made all the stuff in this area? Yes. All this stuff is my design. So, Jake now works on the plugins with me. Um, he started up what? It's been like six months, Jake? Something like that? Five months, six months? And then before that, it was me. And then it was me and Kind Wolf for a little while. And now it's me and Jake doing all this stuff. Yeah, something like that. It's five, six months. The world is full of stuff. But if you look at this, let's go to her profile. You have like levels and experience and professions and all kinds of things. 
So, lots of different stats. Offensive and defensive. And since I'm playing a healer, my PvP damage is quite low. Healers get negative PvP damage. It's a whole thing. But yeah, it's fun. Distant Horizon mod? I don't even know what that is. No idea. How does one start writing Minecraft server plugins? Look into frameworks like Spigot, and then um, use that as a framework for making stuff. You know, you write it in Java. It's easy. PvP optional or mandatory? PvP is normal. You can avoid it. You just got to be clever. You know, it's a social sandbox MMO. It's built on conflict. Interpersonal conflict is pretty normal in the game. What plugin? It's not a plugin. It's a bunch of stuff. All custom in-house. Great majority of it anyway. Insufferable Scotsman with 500 bits said in regards to Dragon's Dogma 2, you can't have yeah. refund without fun. Right? Uh... Movie Nation with 10 Canadian dollars <clears throat> said is this in the logs. Wait, what? No. It's not in the logs. Yeah, everything's broken, dude. It is not in the logs. Yeah, so like... Discord? I don't know what's going on, but it looks like Discord is randomly dropping our messages to a Discord webhook. Did Discord change its webhook parameters? Discord webhook rate limit. Because if we look at the Discord webhook rate limit, there's supposed to be a huge amount. Like a massive amount. Yeah, I don't understand this. I don't understand why this would be a problem. It's really weird, man. Discord is discord.gg slash pirate software. But something is definitely wrong here, where it's just dropping messages at random. Because, like, if I hit this... The goth daddy with 500 bits said, First, your content is amazing. Secondly, what safety precautions do you, as a streamer, take? And what safety recommendations do you suggest for other streamers? Any sure. for people using Twitch in general? Um, if you're really worried about this, this is kind of the two things that I have to deal with, that I, I think about. I think about swatting, and I think about impersonation. Right? So, for swatting, I contact my local police. I let them know who I am. I check in with them usually about once every month. And I say, hey, this is me. This is where I live. This is who I am. This is my job. Uh, a lot of people on the internet know me. A lot of people on the internet can see me. They can also impersonate my voice. There's all kinds of stuff that they can do. And there is a possibility that they will try to get you to come to my house thinking that I'm doing something heinous, right? It's not something good, but it is something that happens sometimes to streamers. So I let the police know about it. So if that ever happens, they can call me and I can say, hey, I will come outside, hands up, you can see me directly. And they know very quickly, if they ever get a call with that, I am willing to surrender, no problem. Then it'd be easy. I'm also in a part of my house that's well lit. They can see my hands from anywhere. Easy. From there, I also contact my bank because of impersonation problems. Bank knows they cannot do any transfers or make any large decisions without me being physically in the building. And since I'm not physically in the building, no one can call in and use an AI version of my voice because there's tens of thousands of hours of my voice on the internet. Which people have already used to make fake TikToks of me talking. So. Gross. But yeah. These are the two major precautions that I take. There's a lot of other ones, but these are the big ones. Those are the big ones. Yeah. Normal stuff. Sucks. Phone sims getting compromised is also big. Yeah, I don't base anything on SMS two-factor. None. Have you ever played in the server Windcraft? I have. I found it to be a lot of weird text and kind of hard progression. It's a little bit awkward. Yeah, a little bit awkward. I would play it, though. It's just a little bit awkward. I think that their, um, their instancing stuff is insanely good. It's phenomenal. We're using AI voice today? No, I'm just sick.
their dialogue system is really iffy, kind of disorienting. I feel that. I could see that. <coughs> you get to play Path of Exile on the 29th. Are they doing something major with it? I haven't seen if that's the case. Keep killing him, man. Thanks, dude. Yeah, I'm really sick today, so, like, my voice is shot. It's kind of how it is. I likely will not be streaming the full amount of time today because of this. It sucks, but that is, you know, my voice is Photon junked. Ninja Live with $10 said, Hey Thor, I watched another coding YouTuber. He got banned through a VPN on a software. When I asked GPT, it said it could be canvas fingerprinting. What? Could you explain this and tell how this is secure? So I watched another coding VTuber, YouTuber. He got banned through a VPN. Why did he get banned? What did he get banned? Specifically. He get banned in a video game? Did he get banned for the platform? Like, what did he get banned in? You, you know a VPN is just another IP address, right? Yeah, another YouTuber. Watch another coding YouTuber. He got banned through a VPN on software. On a software. What? Yeah, I'd have to understand the, the reasoning for the ban. Because that could be a hardware ban. That could be an IP address ban. There's all kinds of stuff there, man. VPNs make you safe. No, they don't. Yeah. Yeah, it could be a hardware ban. I mean, it doesn't even need to be a hardware ban. It could be an account ban. What did he get banned for, right? So, like, let's say you're playing a video game. You have the account level, you have the hardware level, and you have your IP address. You can get banned on any of these. Banned on the hardware level, banned on the account level, has the exact same effect. VPN's not going to do shit about that. VPNs don't make you safer. VPN is not a security product. It is not a security product. It has never been a security product. It will never be a security product. No. <laughs> B-A-Y-K-O-N-8-R with 500 uh, bits said good morning. So what's morning. the life advice you have for today? Um, I don't know. I don't really have any life advice today. You'd have to ask me something specific. And I can help you with that thing. I guess never put off to tomorrow what you can do today. Which is kind of a cop-out one, because it's really easy. But I find more often than not, everybody puts things off. Here's one, and this is kind of a simple one. If you have a thing going on in your house, like taking out the trash, I find so many people will do this halfway. Where they, like, get all the trash together like they're going to do it, and they just kind of pile it up in a spot, and they're like, cool, I'll get to that later. Or their laundry. Or the dishes. They'll like make a whole bunch of dishes and make them soak. No, don't say ADHD. You're not a doctor, Chad MD. You're not a, tr a doctor. No. No. So like trash or the dishes. Or maybe your laundry. People like to do this thing called staging stuff. You're like, oh, I'm, I'm going to stage it. So then later... I'll get it fully done. Why? You've just given yourself two jobs. Just finish it. it. It would only take another couple of seconds, frankly, most of the time. Just finish it. Then it's not on the list anymore. No, you're not lazy. In fact, you're less lazy this way. Do you know why? Lazy people are efficient. We don't like to spend needless time doing the same job twice. I'm lazy. So I get it done the first time, so I don't have to do it again later and waste time. You're not lazy. You're inefficient. It's a very different thing. Finish the damn job. A Tomo Tom Tom with 500 bits said, oh. Hey, Deep Thor, hope you feel better. You have a short about gel, I mean GEL when picking an engine and programming language. But I'm dyslexic and followed the leg model instead. <laughs> I picked C++ and Unreal Engine for my new project so I can oh, start like my easier ideas. I have to gain experience to be able to handle the big project I want to make later, which will need Unreal. Does that make me a naughty goblin? It does not. You at least have a plan, which is fine. Also, Ozupa. With the $50 to the moderators before, I, I didn't hear the alert. Thank you very much for that. And Blue Superman with the $77.77 to the moderators. Thank you. Holy shit, dude. 
That is very nice of you. Thank you. Seriously. If they're lazy, why well, work 12,000 hours a day? I work 16 hours a day every day. Do you know why? Every one of those things is things that I finish. My voice got worse? I know, it's trashed. It's probably, I'm not probably not doing it any, any benefit talking this much, frankly. I'm just letting it, it be its thing, frankly. Yeah. Because you need to sleep? Eh. Optional. Hot drink, maybe some tea. I wish. Perhaps you're not in fact lazy? No, I'm super lazy. I'm really, really lazy. The reason why you can say that I'm lazy, just look at the way that I'm, I'm doing my work. I do things really, really efficiently. Because my god, I don't want to do it again later. Because if I get it all done, then I can chill out and get my three hours of free time every day. And if I don't get it all done, well, everything goes to shit. I can't be lazy. I don't have time to be lazy. Not really. So I have to be efficient so that I can be lazy. Efficiency allows me to be lazy. And if I was just kind of screwing around and not being efficient, then I wouldn't have time to be lazy. Shitty. So all you have to do, really, throughout your life, be efficient. Get shit done. If you're going to have a task, just finish the task. Don't do half of it and then do half of it later. Don't stop in the middle. It's going to have a huge amount of problem for yourself because you're not going to get anything done. And then you're going to be like, oh, and I'm so overwhelmed with all this shit. Of course you're overwhelmed because you half-assed all of them. Half finishing a million projects is pretty trash. Don't do that. It's, it's worse because what ends up happening is this. When you want to finish something and you cut it in the middle, you actually spend a whole bunch of time getting that thing done and prepping for it. And then you spend a whole bunch more time trying to prep for it a second time. You actually waste a shitload of time doing this. We got ads, by the way. We're going to wait. We're going to wait for the ads. How, though? Simply finish the dishes. This isn't a how. Just do it. Just finish doing the dishes. Until there are no more dishes in the sink. Like, put the laundry in the washer. Hit go. Like, it's not... These aren't, like, insanely difficult tasks. Just do the thing. What if the dishes have really stuck on food? Then why do they have really stuck on food? Because you were inefficient before that and allowed for that to happen. Dishes should never have stuck on food. Did you finish eating? Do the dishes. Why did it dry on there in the first place? What are you doing with your dishes that this has happened? Why? You shouldn't have to soak anything. Ever. Clean that shit. What? <laughs> the hell's going on in your house that there's eggs stuck to your dishes? Sound like my dad? Good. Your dad sounds like good people. I bet he did his dishes. You should as well. Insane, dude. Thor is streaming and can't do the dishes. Move your computer into the kitchen. Do the dishes. <laughs> do it. All right. The ads are over. So here's, here's kind of how I approach tasks, right? So let's say that I need to cook something. Let's say that while I'm cooking, I have to do a little bit of prep work. Let's say that um, I need to do, I don't know, grate some cheese, right? We're going to grate some cheese. The grater is going to be really covered in cheese and gross. Some people will hold all those objects, the cheese grater, the bowl that the cheese went into, all that kind of stuff, and they wait until the meal is fully prepared, fully done. They'll eat off of dishes, and then they go and do everything all at once. Why? Throughout the entire time that you were cooking, there were moments of downtime. Clean that shit while you are cooking. If you... Do things as you go, 
during downtime you're doing nothing in, all of this goes faster. All of it goes faster. All of it. Multitask. Multitask all of it. And when you do multitask, finish it. You shouldn't have to soak dishes, because if you're soaking dishes, it means that you didn't finish it before. If you're soaking dishes, it means you ignored them to the point that you now need to soak them. There is no reason for that. There is never a reason for that. If you have shit that's burnt onto your frying pan, you are not using your frying pan correctly. I cook for myself every single day. All of my meals. If you burned your food into the pan, you are not using your pan correctly, and you need to go watch some YouTube to find out how to cook properly without doing this. That's not good for your pan, and it's not good for you. It should never happen. What if I really suck at cooking? Then you should get better at cooking. It's a skill just like anything else. And you can. You can. Go watch some YouTube videos. Get a shitty cookbook. Watch, watch some videos, man. That's it. That's all you need to do. Seriously. Just do it. You just walk. I love my walk. Hell yeah, dude. I use a walk. I use cast iron stuff. Hell, I use my steel pans when I want to use them. And to be real with you, you know what I find more often than not? For a lot of people that are first getting into cooking, they turn the heat up way too high. And they burn absolutely everything into their pans. And it makes no sense. They're like, oh, if it's up really high and I just put it on for a few minutes, then it'll be fine. And they just burn everything. It just turns grim. It turns grim. Mistakes will happen and pans will get burnt? Yes. But when they do, clean that shit. <laughs> Looking is patience, my dudes. Looking is patience. It is patience. Turn that shit on low. Dandelion95 with 500 Doesn't bits work. said, Hey, Thor, I just got done helping a friend making a DND oh. character for a one shot tomorrow. He is a level 16 Jabin, chinchilla rodent person from the Humblewood setting, cavalier fighter who rides around on a mountain lion and makes himself everyone's problem because of all his area control abilities. That's freaking awesome. I gave them good armor and a magic shield so their base AC is 23 and attackers have disadvantage on him. Also, he can force attacks on the cat to hit him. Instead, his name is Seer Daffodil. That's freaking wild. That's a very strong character, though, to be honest with you. It's an incredibly strong character. I think it's quite funny. See the NASA d and I did, Mahoodles. I did. You stoked to try it? Help, let me know how it is. Let me know how it is. High heat cook faster, kick W. Dude, I'm going to be real with you. There's so many people that actually think that way. In fact, I was talking to somebody recently who's like a good buddy of mine, and they don't know how to cook. And they were like, I'm running out of money. I'm going to go homeless. I was like, okay, let's take a look at your financing, right? And I was sitting there talking to them about their financing. This dude spends $1,300 a month on food. And they're alone. What the living shit is happening there, dude? So we, we sat down and we worked on it. We got him down to, and I, this is still very high for somebody who's alone. We got him down to $200 a month in food just showing them what to cook and, and showing them some meal prep shit, and they're not going to go homeless now. They thought this was normal. And I'm like, dude, that's... Like, what are you doing? Yeah, it's rent. That's rent. Do you want the... Do you want to raise? Do you want to raise right now? Like, legitimately, do you want to raise right now? Learn to cook. That's how you get a raise. You learn to cook... And it reduces your bills. There's your raise. That's how that works. Like, this is like the, it is the best augment to your life that you can have. It is a reduction in your bills. It's an increase in flavor. And it's an increase in your health. There's no loss for learning to cook. There is no loss at all. Like, in any way. You just win when you learn to cook. Yeah, learn to cook, but don't be wasteful. Get an instant pot. <laughs> you can be lazy about it even. Like, yeah. Learning to cook is massive, dude. Huge augment for your life. Are they just exclusively eating $200 in takeout every day? No, that'd be even more. That'd be $6,000 a month. You lose a lot of time? No, you don't. 
You do not lose a lot of time. Get an Instant Pot. You know how long it takes me to make eight days of jambalaya? 12 minutes. You throw it in the Instant Pot, you walk away. Woo. <laughs> Uh. Yeah, you can make beef stew, same shit. Sounds like witchcraft, because it's an instant pot, dude. They're the best. Pressure cookers are god. They really are. They're amazing. Post recipe off the 10 with 500 bits said, Hi Thor, how can Hi. I become a player in DND when I have been a forever DM? It's tough. That's a very hard thing to do. A lot of people get kind of hung up about that, actually. Like, it's hard for me to go play a character. Mostly because, like, I, every time I go to play a character, I'm like, dude, I could be DMing right now. Yeah. Is generational wealth good? I don't know. Does it matter? Here's, here's what ends up happening from generational wealth. And I know a little bit about this because my family on my mom's side is rich as shit, right? What I found very quickly is people who grow up with a lot of money end up not having a lot of kind of problems in their life. And because of that, they have to make new problems. Problems that don't make any goddamn sense. My mom's side of the family is very rich. They have not worked in the last three generations. That's not going to happen for me. I've worked for everything that I have. And I'm, I'm happy with that, to be honest with you. Because what I found growing up is that that side of the family is very much so like Kind of like the show Arrested Development, but without jokes. It's just a bunch of people that are kind of awful to each other all of the time because they don't know what real problems are. So because of that, they have to make up problems and treat each other like shit. It's really awful, frankly. So when you ask if generational wealth is bad, I think it depends. It depends on what people do with it and how they treat each other. And if they make up problems to fill a gap where they don't have any other ones. It's real shit. So yeah, it can be pretty bad. It can be really bad. You know? Yeah. YouTube donations go through? It all does. All goes into the same thing. I've never been happier that I'm not rich. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm, I am happy that I went through my whole life working. I am happy that I have done all of this because I watched that growing up and it was just shit, dude. It's really sad. What was your first job ever? I, <laughs> it's really funny. Um, in like elementary school, I used to make bookmarks and sell them at, in class. <laughs> I used to draw bookmarks and sell them for 25 cents. It's not even a joke. Yeah. It was like the first time I ever made money. Not even a joke. It was like a huge thing. And then uh, I was a freelancer for like five years later in life. It was like, I think it was my first real job, you know, first, first actual job kind of a thing. Yeah. It was like a thing. It was a thing that I did, you know. It's very funny. So bookmark demos? No, you goblin. I swear to God. Yeah, no, I, I find that it can be really dangerous, though. I think, I think it can be incredibly dangerous. But if somebody goes through life and actually realizes there's, there's problems out there, it changes your perspective quite a lot. And it changes the way that you treat others. Because you realize what real problems actually are. You don't just need problems. You know. Making bookmarks is dangerous? Why? <laughs> How is that dangerous? What? I grew up poor. Hey, King Cathalian. I grew up poor and lived paycheck to paycheck as a young adult and was never comfortable until I got lucky with streaming. Yeah, I think the big perspective change that I had, man, I was homeless for a year. I lived out of my car. And I, I lived out of my car because I had kind of like a business with another person and we were splitting it 50 50 and they wanted to make that 80 20 in their favor and i said no well at the time i didn't really have a lot of good idea about how copyright and control and all that kind of stuff would work and they took all of our work and open sourced it i made no money and because i wasn't very good with financing at the time either i didn't have any savings so i went homeless Within a month, <laughs> I got wrecked. I got wrecked really bad. And it was because I didn't plan accordingly. Now I do, always. 
And that's when I learned to be really frugal with stuff. That's why I cook all my own food. That's why I don't spend money on shit I don't need. That's why I own two pairs of pants. Like, this is the reason that I live this way. And I'm happier for it. Yeah. Yeah, I love that life. I have to break into an apartment I got evicted from. Wild times. Jesus, dude. Yeah, that's rough as shit. I just learned, learned to live really frugally. Really frugally. Bought your games? I hope you enjoy them, man. I hope you do. Pants are overrated? I like my pants, though. Do you really only own two pairs of pants? Yeah. I have. I actually am going to own one pair of pants soon because I have to retire one of them because I, I lost 80 pounds and my pants are too big. <laughs> they're like they're like gigantic. I have to wear a belt and the belt makes them all like scrunchy, like around the waist. It doesn't. It's not good. It feels really bad. Yeah. Yeah, it's not good. Dude, buy some? Why? I have one pair that fits and another pair that doesn't fit, you know? <coughs> Thor is a VTuber or a robot? No, I just don't need any more, right? How'd you lose the weight? So, uh, I used to weigh about 265 pounds. It was a bit chunky, right? I'm six foot two. So, 265 LBS. And I am six foot and two inches tall. I am now down to 180 pounds. And all I did was I stopped drinking soda. <laughs> the reason why is because I cut so much sugar out of my diet that it changed how things tasted. And that immediately made me want to taste other stuff. Like cucumbers are sweet now. They used to taste like, uh, didn't even have a flavor. They just had cardboard texture, like a wet cardboard. So I stopped drinking soda. It made them sweet. And I was like, hey, I really like tzatziki now. I really like yogurt now. I really like salad. It actually has flavor to it. It's not just water and sadness. So, like, it changed how I eat food, which made me lose all my weight. And I'm not on a diet. I eat whatever I want. But the difference is, is what I want is different now because I don't drink all the soda all the time. It's about it. It's really easy. Just kind of, that was the piece, you know? Yep. You go straight to other sugary drinks? I didn't. I found that I didn't. You know what they taste like to me now? Awful. <laughs> like, if I go, if, if I break any of that and I go and eat like a, like a hamburger at like a Wendy's or something like that, it tastes like candy. That shit is so sugary, dude. Like the sauce in like a, like a burger now, it's crazy sugary. It's weird. A soda tastes like just awful. It is so oversweet. Yeah, too sugary. It's just oversweet. So because of that, I'm like, oh, like this is so gross tasting. It's just so bad. American food is so sweet. It can be, yeah. Yeah, it's a lot of sugar. It's just a lot of sugar. It's not necessary. So like now I just cook for myself all the time because it's what tastes best, you know, because I don't have to deal with it. It's funny as hell. Yeah. No. Oh. New teaser for Helldivers, by the way. Ooh. Did they fix the bug yet? I don't know if they did. No. I I use the arc weapons all the time, and there's a bug right now where if you use arc weapons, it'll crash people in your games. Actually, King Cathalian in chat, we found that the other day, and they, they're fixing it now, but it's not going to get fixed till like Tuesday, I think they were talking about, which sucks. Like, that's not what I want. I hope I hope that they fix it sooner, but I, I don't think they will. Right, because there's a weekend. Devs have to do it. Game also has bugs. Yeah. I mean, we have to kill those. That's, that's kind of how it goes. I've actually switched over to the laser cannon now as a result of this. So I'm using the laser cannon and I'm using um, the plant scorcher. That's what I'm doing now. Because it's just, it's still good. Yeah. Ice crash using the arc. Yeah, no, it crashes all the time. Which unit do you go to? What's your mother's maiden name? Same hat. Stealthy MR Ninja with 1000 bits said good morning Thor. I'm currently at an impasse. I would like to go back to school and get a degree. My problem is that what I'm currently making at my job now is more than I would start out entry level after my degree. Oh. Should I just grind it out and take the pay cut for a little bit? It depends. It depends. Do you... Can you survive off of that? Do you think you're going to make more money in the future by making less money now? Is that risky in any way? What's the risk associated with this? 
is there a chance that you will miss out overall? The way that I see money a lot of the times now is like points. Once you make that dollar, that dollar is yours forever. Well, the amount that the government lets you keep anyway. So with that in mind, you get those points, and if you didn't get more points later, for less points now, it might be worth it. So you have to think about it. How many points do you get? Do you get, like, let's say that you reduce the amount of points that you get right now by 20%. But in the future, you can increase the amount by 200%. Might actually be worth it. Might be really worth it. This is kind of how I feel about debt, too. So student loan debt, this is a really big part of this, right? So, like, when you're dealing with student loan debt, you're like, okay, it's going to be like $200,000 in student loan debt. Here in the U.S., this, this happens all the time, right? Yeah, the answer TTS isn't working. It's actually a bug with Discord. There's nothing we can do about it. Their service is shitting itself right now. I wish I could do something about it, but I can't. Yeah. So like, yeah, no, how 200K? I've got buddies who are like this. Like one of my buddies is an audio engineer and he has 200K in debt. And he had a job that was making like 60K a year. Dude's going to have that debt for the rest of his life at that point. Yeah. It was like 180K, something like that. So like... This is something that happens in the U.S. It's very common here. Way, way common here. You'd be very surprised. Doctors get it too. Doctors have a lot of debt, generally. So when you think about that, we think about the amount of debt that you're incurring. Is it worth it? Are you actually going to be able to pay that back? Or are you just going to have that debt for the rest of your life? Because that's like... Like 180K is like a house. <laughs> it's like a down payment on a house, dude. So like when you think about this kind of stuff, it's it's sort of wild. Yeah, John Oliver did a, a special on student loan debt. I don't think I actually saw that one. Yeah, I don't think I saw that one, to be honest with you. But it's it's something to always think about. When you're entering these types of agreements, when you're entering a financial agreement, even if it's student loan debt or it's like, I don't know if I'm going to lose money now and gain money in the future, you have to do a cost analysis. It's not about emotion at that point. It's about math. You just sit down and do that math and be like, hey, is this actually going to get me more points in the long run? If the answer is no, then why would you do it? You know? Like it's <laughs> yeah. Free college in my country? Some countries have that. The United States does not. Yeah. <clears throat> Can I rescale my character at a save point? Dude, what? Thanks to you, I'm now building a game. Awesome, dude. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. You're awesome as hell. Thank you. Acidophilus with 500 oh, bits broken. said, Hey Thor, I know hey. that you probably have already answered this, but what do you suggest for someone who wants to get into game development but has zero programming experience or anything of the like? Thank you so much for all you do. No, thank you. You're awesome as hell. Let me go look at this. Damn, I wish the Discord webhook shit was working. Once again, any game development has zero programming experience or anything of the like. So stop thinking about it like zero programming experience, right? Think about it as zero programming experience now. Right now. Not just in general. And I know that may be what you meant, but it's important to understand that there's a different, there's a distinction between... I don't have any experience, and I don't have any experience yet. So, go join some game jams. And I know that may seem weird. You're like, well, I don't even know what I'm doing. Good. That's the point. So let's go to itch.io. Jams. Check this shit out. Look at all these game jams that are going on right now. Go join one of these. Take maybe a week. Go do a game jam. Try to make a video game. Do it real bad. And you're going to learn a whole bunch of shit while doing it bad. And at the end of it, you're going to be more of a programmer or a writer or an artist or a musician than you were at the beginning, which is the entire point of this. So do it. Don't wait. Don't wait. I'm a 20-year senior programmer. I still have no idea what I'm doing. Dude, none of us have any idea what the hell we're doing. I may seem super put together. I may seem like I know what I'm doing all the time. No, I don't. I have no goddamn... I have no goddamn clue. I'm just adapting forward while failing randomly. Like this. 
<laughs> I'm good at some stuff. I could be better, though. Like, that's kind of how that shit works, right? We fake it till we make it? No, we don't even fake it. None of us know what the hell we're doing. With none of us. Not a damn one. Yeah. It's just, we're just adapting to all of this shit all the time. We get better at adapting. I still fail at shit. Constantly. It's kind of how it works. It's how it always works. Don't feel bad about that. It's part of the process, man. Iraq ATK with 500 bits said yard cheer 100 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 good evening goblin lord good evening I'm so glad to hear that beans is all right I love yes. what you've done because you've given us goblins the power to save ferrets like beans with the power of our eyeballs you guys are it's amazing. a superpower and I love that yeah no you're awesome as hell um I wouldn't be able to do that without you guys so thank you seriously like I I really mean this um yeah, Beans would have died the other day. It actually really messed me up. Like, really bad. And I, I I can't believe he survived. I've never seen anything like that. No, and the vets had never seen anything like that either. It's freaking wild. So, thank you. And it's it's literally just from you guys watching that channel. It's just the ad revenue. Being able to do all that stuff. What happened? Um, Beans, one of our ferrets at the rescue, suddenly became really lethargic. And he had a mass in his abdomen. And he had back leg weakness. He was weak in his back legs. And we're like, oh God, what the hell is going on? Like, we immediately thought it was going to be juvenile lymphoma. Because we were like, dude, this doesn't, like, the mass was huge too. It's like the size of my thumb, right? Well, check this shit out. Let me show you this. It was the size of my thumb. He had swallowed a piece of blanket weeks or months ago, and he didn't pass it. So what happened was his fur wrapped around this as he was eating his fur and grooming, and it turned into this in his body. It's sitting here on my, on my desk in this like little jar. It's slowly dissolving because the, uh, the chemical is eating away the fat, but it's fat and hair, dude. It's huge. It's the size of my thumb, dude. It's freaking massive. Yeah, like a Bezor. Basically exactly the same. It's a cursed object. It really is. So the thing that's crazy as shit about this is he should be dead. It's not a tumor. It's hair and fat. It was in his intestine. You keeping it? Hell yeah. He made it. Keeping it. So the thing that's crazy as shit about this is you guys saved his life because you watched the ads on that channel. 100%. I may have driven him there to get him, you know, get it fixed, but we had the option right away when they walked in, they're like, hey, we recommend euthanasia as an option. We're going to do some checks to find out what's going on first, but this may be what has to happen, right? Because it makes sense. You get this big, massive object, right? So we do an x-ray and the thing is radio dense. Well, that's not a good sign. So we do an ultrasound, and you can't see through it. It's just black. And we're like, for most families, that's where it would end. Because the next step is exploratory surgery. And that's expensive. It's about $3,000. We did the exploratory surgery. And it turned out it wasn't a tumor. It was hair. And we saved his life. That's how that shit goes. Yes. Because it's exploratory emergency surgery on an exotic animal. Now understand something. If you have animal insurance, it doesn't cover a lot of shit like this for ferrets. Because they're exotics. So if you're wondering what it's like to own a ferret, I have been collecting items that we've extracted from ferrets. And the reason I'm doing this is so that I can show other potential owners that are interested in this how expensive this shit can get instantly because it's they're exotic animals they're exotic animals they're crazy expensive yep yeah euthanasia is they put them down yep very are exotics yes they are yep they can only be seen by exotic veterinaries all that kind of stuff how are they exotic exotic animals not dog and cat wow you must really love your little ferrets here, 
If you didn't know this, I run a ferret rescue, my dude. Beans is one of the rescues at our, well, one of the ferrets at our rescue. See? They're all sleeping right now. It's nighttime. They sleep 18 hours a day. They aren't native to the United States? No. Ferrets aren't native anywhere. We wiped them out. The black-footed ferrets are trying to be reintroduced, but no. Yeah, it's not a thing. There's only about 150 to 300 in the wild. You can see we rehabilitate, so Shay is actually holding Henry in this video, and Henry has uh, vestibular disease, so he has balance issues. And you see all these little goblins. Let them go. I think this is the oldies crew here. Yeah, it's the oldies crew. Let me see if the, the young ones are out on this one. This is when all the young ones are out. They're probably running around doing something stupid on this. You smell it from here? They don't smell. We feed them a full raw food diet. None of them smell. They haven't the entire time. The only time they smell is when they have very heavy adrenal disease. And then they smell gross. It's grim. What makes an animal an exotic animal? Anything that's not dog and cat, generally. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Shay is an exotic... Like, uh, basically, Shay works at a exotic vet already. So Shay is an, what is it called? Exotic vet assistant. And I do all the research for nutrition and new treatments. Yep. Any bird is an exotic? Yes. You have to take a bird to an exotic vet. Yes. Yes. Parrots are exotic. Yes. Bunnies also go to an exotic vet. Yes. Do they reproduce? No. We have them fixed. Yes. Would you need a farm vet? That is generally seen as a large animal vet. Those are different kinds of vets. Different specialization. Are pandas exotic? Yes. They also eat a lot of glue. It's true. It's true. Yeah... We got ads, by the way. We're going to wait. I see you eating the glue. I see you doing it. Don't you do it. No. I'm watching all you. Why are your voice sore? Because it was sick. <coughs> Tastes good, though? No. Don't you do it. Yeah, parrots are 100% exotic and expensive. I have a 31-year-old... Malukan, Malukan Cockatoo. Love the work you're doing, Pirate Suffer. For your ferret rescue, and much love to you. Thank you very much. Why would they make the glue so tasty? God damn it. How much have you spent on your pet? They're not pets. They're animals we have rescued. That is what we do. Yes. There are 35 ferrets in the rescue right now. And by the end of the year, we'll have capacity for up to 100, is the idea. What do you think of Unreal Engine? I love it. It's great. <laughs> 11,000 people here for your voice. Dude, my voice is trashed right now, too. They stay at the rescue for the rest of their lives. Yeah. Do you own the shelter? Yes. Yeah, so I own the rescue. Um, Shay and I run it together. Shay does the Shay is doing all the medical because Shay is an exotic vet assistant, and we pass everything by the veterinary that Shay works with at the clinic that Shay works at. And I do all the nutrition and research for new treatments. We've saved a number of different animals because of this, uh, many of which are at the brink, and we bring them back, and they've lived for years now as a result. So we work very, very hard on this. Every day I work on this every day and it's something that i i find to be really emotionally fulfilling 
I really much enjoy it, frankly. And uh, Shay really enjoys it as well. When is Shay getting upgraded from assistant? I don't know, dude. Shay's, Shay's got some problems at work. <laughs> Shay's mad at work, so. Snail's is the name of one of the first ferrets they had to pass on. That's correct. That's why we named Snail's House. Are visitors allowed now or in the future? Um, depends. The reason why is because ferrets can catch COVID from you. So it ends up being a whole thing. You have to go through a number of different tests before we allow anyone to see the ferrets. Ugh. Ferrets have ACE2 receptors just like humans. They can catch the flu. They can catch COVID, all kinds of stuff. I couldn't be near them when I was sick, but I'm not sick anymore. I just have a throat that's been damaged from coughing. So, Can I buy some? No. Yeah, Felix is saying domestic ferrets are a different species than other related polecats and black-footed ferrets. They cannot survive in the wild. That's correct. We, it, we basically turn them into pugs is the best way to put it. Yeah. Is Shay planning on becoming a full vet? It is many years of going to doctor school to be a vet. It is incredibly expensive. Some of the things that we're trying to do right now, though, um, we've got a number of friends who actually are vets that want to open up their own clinic. And something that I, I would very much so like to do over the next maybe year or two is do the business side of that. Because clinics need business managers. So if I do the business side of that and then have the veterinary be able to do that and then we make sure that it's actually paying people out and doing that correctly, I could have a side business of running a exotics clinic, which is something I've wanted to do. Something that I think would do a lot of good in the world, right? It also gives us a good option of being able to do medicine for the ferrets at the rescue in a way that is sustainable and good, right? Because then we won't get upcharged for all the treatments that we have to do. What my voice change? I'm sick. Well, I'm not sick. I was sick, and now my voice is shot. It's going to take a couple of days to get back to normal. Can you need more time on your clock if you had that? I won't, actually. Do you know why? Because it takes the same amount of management that I'm already doing. And I'm already delegating a lot of this stuff away. So, easy. Yeah. Ah. You should name the clinic Fer Fergard? What, dude? What's the matter with you? <clears throat> If you think about rescuing other exotics, I could, but I don't have the capacity for that. Ferrets are pretty easy to get a whole bunch of them together in one like smaller area. And I think that's, that's fine, right? I think it's a fine way to do it. So we can have a whole bunch of ferrets in a smaller area. My hope is to build a building where we can have 100 ferrets, which is what Shane are working on designing right now. Yeah. Yeah, we're, we're working in designing that right now. Do they recognize you? Yes, they do. But not all of them care. <laughs> Ferrets don't give a whole lot of shits most of the time. Sometimes they're like, oh, it's him, whatever. Yeah, they just don't, they don't care. Mouse cares. Mouse, mouse cares. She always comes up to me and she's like, she does the little uppies thing. Yeah, it's kind of how she is. Ferrets are trust-based creatures. They're pretty good. Yeah. Ferrets are very smart. They're also really dumb. Yeah. Do they all get along? No. No, they don't. Nope. They fight each other all the time. And some of them have rivalries. They don't like each other. Depends. How's the raven training going? Really well. We feed them peanuts, and then they give us trinkets. It's fantastic. Yeah. Oh, like Asgard. Okay. Pickle is obviously the smartest. I don't know about that one. Is Thor a Disney princess? Well, all the crows and ravens that come around, I give them treats, and then they come by and they give me shiny trinkets. Sometimes it's a can tab. Sometimes it's a coin. Sometimes it's nothing. It's kind of nice. It's really nice, actually. Because they're all cool to me, and they don't shit on my car. Which is a nice thing to have. <laughs> uh. yeah they're all unsalted they're in the shell um, the reason why we give them in the shell is because they like to break them open it's a little puzzle for them and they enjoy it Yeah. bird friends are awesome dude yeah you're leaving the crows now yeah but the new place has eagles which is crazy I was actually, I was sitting in my backyard at the new place, and there are six bald eagles in the sky. 
because they're in mating season right now. And I was just watching them go around each other and just scream at one another. It was just screaming bald eagles. And I was like, that's the coolest shit I've seen in my life. And then I was like, I'm glad I don't have a cat outside because they'd just be gone. <laughs> uh, it's like, you know, like this. That's what that, and you know, they're big. They're big and spooky. But, you know, it's bald eagles. They're really scary. They're gigantic birds of prey. And they scream, dude. You could see, like, just barely a little dot. And you just hear the scream. And they're just screaming at each other. Yeah, it's freaking loud as hell. It's wild as hell, dude. Yeah, cat, dog, baby. Eagle food. Eagle food. Yeah, eagles are enormous, dude. The, the ferrets are inside animals. Do you think you'd win a fight against an eagle? Yeah, I'd just go inside. Roland Titan with 500 bits said question 4, I'm a starting dev but am making a game website. What should I avoid streaming as I develop it for safety of future users? I have lots of enthusiasm and time but lots of ignorance. Hmm. Hmm. Let's take a look at this. Starting dev but I'm making a game website. What should I avoid streaming as I develop it for safety of future users? Uh, any of your passwords. Passwords, authentication tokens, access tokens, any of that kind of stuff. If you're using any type of API that requires authentication access, they may have you give like secret codes or anything like that. Just don't stream those. Rest of it, do it all. Who cares? Doesn't matter. As long as you are not showing other people's identifiable information or codes like secret secret access tokens, then like there's no reason. There's no reason not to. OAuth can still use secret access tokens. It still can. So do keep that in mind. Yeah. Yep. Do not stream your stream key, I swear to God, dude. By names with $5 said I'm new here, but why ferrets in particular? Even like if them. it's just because they're neat makes sense to me. Yeah, um, they're nature's hacker. I always wanted them when I was young, and I lived in California where they're illegal. So I moved up here to Washington, I got some. And the two that we got were Loki and Snails. Well, Snails died about four years in to her life, but we got both of them from the University of Washington. They were laboratory animals. Laboratory animals are put to death after a year. So she didn't really die early, even though it kind of felt like it. She died three years after she would have if we didn't intervene. So I realized, like, we bought her four times her lifespan. And it felt bad, but it was a good thing. So I said, let's do it again. So we started doing it more. That's why it's called Snail's House. Yeah, that's the reason. So I just want to keep doing that. And we've bought a lot of different animals a lot of time. Like Grandpa, who's with us, he's had a number of years. Max lived to 10. He did very, very well. Little guy kicked ass. Haven't seen an American ferret reach 10 ever. It's insane. Eddie came to us and he was... His ass was actually out of his body. He had what's called a prolapse, a rectal prolapse. He was bleeding to death. Saved his life. Yeah. All kinds of shit, dude. We've, we've saved so many animals in so many bad conditions. Just by putting in the effort and the time and the money. You know? And like, we're able to do that because you guys watch a channel on Twitch. <laughs> you don't even have to sub or throw bits. Just the ad revenue does all of this. So like, it's such a wild thing, frankly. It's like a really, really wild thing. And I don't know. I can't thank you enough, man. It's awesome. I'm eating, thanks. Not anymore, you're not. <laughs> Are ferrets poorly constructed? No. No. They're poorly bred here in the United States. So, in the United States, they are generally bred by a company called Marshall's Farms, which is the primary breeder of all laboratory animals in the U.S. They're federally funded to do so. Ferrets in the U.S. are largely used for, like, infectious disease because they have ACE2 receptors just like human beings. The only other animal that you can get with that is humanized mice, which are genetically modified mice to have those receptors so they can test them for COVID and flu and everything else. So they use ferrets because they naturally have those receptors. The problem with this is 
the way that they've been breeding them is they don't really care about the longevity of the animal, so they've had really shitty breeding practices. So the United States version of the ferret lives about five years and then dies to cancer most of the time. The European version of the ferret lives for 10 years. Their lifespan was halved through poor breeding practices. They could have done the same thing with laboratory animals and producing laboratory animals without damaging the genetic lineage of the animal, but they didn't. And now we're here with really messed up animals. And I get to clean up the mess all the time. And that mess is living creatures that don't deserve the hand they've been given. It sucks. It pisses me off every day. Every day. You have no idea. Yeah. There's a rumor going around that Destroyer 2009 accomplished what he did via webhooks. What? Webhooking through what? I, I'm going to be real with you. Stop listening to rumors. Yeah, stop listening to rumors of any kind. None of that shit matters. You know what matters? When Respawn announces what it was. We've investigated a whole bunch of different things. We have a large pile of possibilities. We don't have an answer. Do you know why? Because we don't have all of the information. Respawn does. Give them some time. Yeah, give them some time. Who gives a shit about rumors? Who gives a shit about, oh, it's probably this? The only thing that matters is what it actually is. And we've investigated all the things that it could be. So we sit around and we wait. There's nothing wrong with it. You know, it's easy to get caught up in that kind of internet zeitgeist of that. But to be real with you, the people that are leading the charge on that are just trying to get you to click videos. And they're going to say anything that they can to get an emotional reaction out of people so that you generate more ad revenue for them. Don't. Just wait. It's okay not to know right now. Bubblegun NM Crusader 2028 with 500 bits said Hey Thor, hey. I sent an email about some questions you might be able to answer regarding a project OS I've been working on. Oh. Just letting you know it exists. Love your streams, and wishing you and your ferrets good health. Thank you very much. Hey, look, that one went through. And I don't know why. I don't know why. Bird flipping that finger one went with through. 1000 bits said Dude, just thank you for being so positive. I'm quitting my toxic software engineering job Monday. You've Dude, been sick. a real anchor of hope that I can fall in love with just making things again. Proud of you. That's awesome as hell, dude. That's awesome as hell. Legitimately. Hmm. Also, you know who you are. Thank you for turning those into Jake. We're going to get right on those. Good job. Good job. 100%. Troy Tech with 500 bits said picture this. Crash landed on a ring world you stumble upon an abandoned spaceship wreck. Despite mm. its scorched state it is in serviceable condition in fact the ship's computer is fully intact. You get out a small generator and hook it up with thick cables directly to central power to start up diagnostics looking for areas needing repair. Scavenging parts across the ship you restore power and mend components running cable to patch power where needed restoring flight beginning your adventure. That sounds like it'd be really fun. Like really fun actually. Yeah. It... <coughs> I like little systems like that where you have to build kind of like automation. But not even automation but like efficiency sort of stuff, you know? Power management, resource management, and kind of a restrictive environment is quite fun. Yeah, answered TTS is working now. I didn't change anything on that. Yeah, Factorio is Factorio is really fun. Yeah. Yeah. Is Thor sick? Yeah. 
Well, I'm not sick anymore. It's my throat is messed up. Why do you think I sound like this? It's not great, is it? Finally able to catch your stream? Thanks, dude. Yeah, no, I my voice is like super shot right now. It's not correct. It's all messed up because I've, I've been sick. Yeah. Chill Thor voice is good, too. I sound horrific to me. I may not sound really weird to you, but to me, it's resonating in my head wrong. So, like, I can hear... I know what my voice normally feels like, and it's it feels wrong. Where it's, like, resonating in my sinuses incorrectly, and it just sounds like gravel. Yeah. You sound weird to me 100%. I'm not surprised. Use Google Voice Changer while you're sick. What does that even mean, dude? Yeah, I sound a bit gruff. I feel a bit gruff, you know? You've become the submarine. What? Grainy damage vocal cords. Yeah, a little bit. Third puberty? Dude, I hope it doesn't last. Uh, how long does it take for vocal cords to heal? Two to three weeks. Oh, God. Oh, God, no. <clears throat> oh, God, no. The nightmare is real. Don't spend your entire day talking. Hmm. Hmm. I feel like talking all day is my job, though. Talking and making things. Do you do all your code in Notepad? No. My code is not generally done in Notepad. I'm actually working on patch note stuff. Did some design stuff earlier. I do want to build out that environment. I'm actually going to start working on that. Oop. Oh, that would be a mistake. Oop. I think the way that I have this set up. Yeah. It stops players from getting out of this through natural means. But I think I want this to go kind of off to the side immediately. We're just like stuck right afterwards. Hmm. Gargle pickle juice? Not because you're sick, just for fun? What's the matter with you? Actual goblin mode, dude. Yeah, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to make this kind of go downwards because this is all just empty space you know what I mean this is all just empty it's all empty space wait hey, why is this like this a little bit weird what well that's fixed now on I don't know how long that's been different in that corner I have no idea When did I do this? I don't remember when I did that. Yeah, I think what I need to do is make this go off to the side over here in this direction. You know? Kind of make this go off in here. Make a bunch of different platforms, different areas. Maybe make it go underground. Yeah. Saflock hack then made 3 million hotel doors vulnerable? No. Although they were already vulnerable. Hackers can unlock over 3 million hotel doors in seconds. Cephalic has a fix for the vulnerability, but patching may take a long time. Oh, it's an encryption issue. From Dormacabo, uses known as MyFair Classic. Demonstrates how easily they can get an, open a Saflock keycard. Starts with obtaining any key card from the target hotel. Book a room there, grabbing a key card out of a box of used ones, then reading a certain code from that card with a 
RFID read write device. Three hundred dollars? No, <laughs> you can do that with way cheaper. Finally, writing two key, key cards of their own. Okay, so they just get they get the seed or they get the uh, the unique code for that. Easy. Nice. That's wild. Yeah. Okay. Why were you off for the last few days? I don't stream on Thursdays, and Friday I was sick. And now I am... My voice is shot. Because I was sick. Well, two things happened on Friday. Beans almost died, so we had to rush him to the emergency vet. And then also, I got sick. It was great. It's a good time. All at once. Buh. He's okay. He's alright. He survived. He just had surgery, but he's all right. Maybe you have a hairball? Dude, maybe. Segfault with $5 said I spend a lot of time prototyping ideas but never seem to get that last mile. Any advice to get over the hump of and finish a project? A lot of time prototyping ideas, but I've never seemed to get that last mile. Any advice to get over the hump of a finished product? Any advice to get over the hump and finish a project? I think a lot of the times we don't like finishing projects. I think that last piece is just so difficult. But if you don't practice it on smaller projects, you're never going to do it on larger ones. Many people are like, oh, I just want to move on to the, the next cooler project. Well, finishing the project is part of the project. You have to finish the project. Practicing finishing projects is a big deal. It's an incredibly big deal. And it's part of the skill set. And you're ignoring that. Is Beans okay? Yes. He is healing. He is resting. He should be okay within two weeks. It's going to take some time. How long till he can go back with the other ferrets? Two weeks. Yeah. Start finishing stuff, even if it's shitty. Small stuff. Yeah. Doesn't help that the fun part is usually the first 67%. No. The fun part is the entire thing. If you're chasing one specific portion of a project and saying that's the fun part, you're never going to finish it. The whole thing is the fun part. Solving puzzles is the fun part. Even the shitty parts are the fun part. Because you're making something. Something that didn't exist before you. And no one else could make. Because it's specifically made by you. All of it is the fun part. Gotta change your perspective on that. Ketuth with 500 bits said, Yeah, cheer 500 since you just talked about 5G earlier. I thought about checking out how 5G is covered in my city. We only have one street that is covered and everything there is, is one home improvement store and people driving. Oh. Every other street where many people live is either 4G or 4G+. 4G+, Welcome plus to is Germany. not very good, but 5G is insane. So, for those who don't know, I'm actually going to be able to move the ferrets to the new house already. And the reason why is because we have a 5G router at the new place. And I've got 5G internet there now until we get the fiber in. Fiber is going to take a couple of months. So because of this, we're actually getting about 300 down and 20 up over cell phone towers. <laughs> They don't throttle this connection. Yep. And the way that I know this is because we're doing about 300 gigs in about a day and a half, two days, and they haven't throttled it. So, kind of happy with that. <coughs> yeah. Using Verizon 5G at the moment. Do you have a Verizon 5G connection, like, uh, as a home internet connection? Are you using that? Because I'm wondering which, which companies actually provide this. HomeNet, do they have any throttles or anything on you? Have you ever hit any, like, data caps or anything like that? There doesn't seem to be any data caps on this stuff. And they have no no limits on any of it. Waiting for the 10G, 10G that fries my DNA? I'm ready, dude. Not that I've seen, and the price is locked in 55 for five years? Yeah, dude. It's nuts. It's crazy. That's my Wi-Fi at home specs? I know. It's crazy. When I run a speed test, I get the same speed results. 
but I never get those results on downloads. Why? I use T-Mobile 5G. Um, so if you're having problems with the actual downloads not hitting that, it could be a, a throughput issue somewhere else. Google Fiber for the win. I'm getting a I'm getting a different kind of line. I'm getting a business line, so it'll be three gigs up, three gigs down. Yeah. What does 300 down, 20 up mean? This stream is going up at 8 megs. 8 Mbps. At all times. Twice. Because it's doing it once to Twitch and once to YouTube. So, because of that, we need 16 up. For this stream. But the ferret stream just needs 6 up. And it'll need it. It'll get it. It'll be totally fine. <clears throat> Oh, congratulations to get fiber in your neighborhood. That's awesome as hell. Yeah, that's great, dude. Did I get third puberty? No, I I, I got sick and my voice is shot. Liam Where's Weeks with five Ferrets Canadian dollars, dollars said it's one hundred dollars Canadian, and it can't be modded in that case, right? Whoa. Whoa. No, it can't be modded. No, no, no. We're talking about Dragon's Dogma two. No. <coughs> you cannot mod the game because it is banning people for deleting their own save file, which is. Frankly, shit, to be honest with you. Yeah. Honestly, Connor shit. Connor the Tall with 1,000 bits said, I think you should try Pseudoregalia. It's a been a blast so far. Pseudoregalia. Let's go look at this. That is super bad. It's ass. I, I won't buy the game. Yeah, I'm not buying Dragon's Dogma 2. I refuse. Oh, no, no, we talked about this. We talked about this a ton. Yeah, I love the animation style in this game, dude. It's so freaking neat. It's like low frame rate animations, but high frame rate gameplay. It's really interesting. And like, look at the platforming, dude. The platforming is nuts in this. Like, check this shit out. It's like an old school, like N64 style game, but with like 120 FPS. Yeah, it's really good. The platforming is like nothing I've seen. Oh, we got ads. We're going to wait for the ads. Ass huge also? Dude, are you looking at that like all two vertices of ass? Are you... You like stuck back in... In like the early 90s. Is that what you're doing over there? Getting dial up ass. Just can't handle yourself, can you? Okay. Here. Yeah, a little bit of Tomb Raider moment. Original PS1, dude. She got a butt like a triangle, dude. What's the matter with you? I swear to God. Don't judge. I'm judging. Outwardly. Yeah. No, that game's cool, though. It's really, really cool. How many of these have we gotten through? Oh, hey, I've done a lot of them today. Nice. He is horny, but he is free. Oh, God. We'll put him back. I don't want that free. By the way, I'm not going to be streaming a huge amount of time today. I need to rest my voice. It's not great. You look cute? Thanks. Oh. Democracy, maybe. Who's the chunkiest wiggler? Probably Lucky. Lucky's a big fat boy. Yeah. No, I don't even think it's Mocha. I think it's Lucky. I think Lucky might be heavier. I'll have to ask Shay. Shay weighs them all. Have you ever tried to grow a beard? Yes. It's a nightmare. How many vertices do you have? Yes. Yes. We could spread some democracy. Democracy, we could. Have you played Scorn? Yeah. Hell yeah. All right, next. No, this game looks sick. Angel of Revelation with 500 bits said, "Yar cheer 500 high once more." I do apologize once more requesting this again, but the You're cursed fine. face I was looking for is not the one you asked me to use. Oh, also, get well soon, both Thor and Beans. Yeah. Stay safe. Also, 69, very nice. God damn it. Um, are you looking for this face? Let me pull this up. He 
Is is this what you're looking for? Because if that's the one you're looking for, you just have to screenshot it. You know? There it is. Yeah, cursed, isn't it? Here, I'll go put this in Discord. I'm putting it in stream chat. Right now. There, it's linked in stream chat. And now I'm pinning it. Message pinned. <sighs> There's so many weird pinned messages in here. God damn it. I'm unpinning so many of these. You literal goblins. Alright, there we go. Now both of these are pinned, as you can see. Enjoy those. NMBR underscore six with 500 bits said, why do you think military simulation games are way less popular than games like League? IMO League takes a similar amount of learning like Milsim games. I think the reason why is for a lot of people that are very much so into military simulation games, they're into it because of the history. Like a lot of people are into it because the it is as close to real as it could be. And people, some people really like that more people want to have a video game that takes them out of reality. Like, that's a that's a big one for a lot of people. Yeah, Milsims are less of an escape. It's more of a, well, that's not right, because that tank has to be exactly correct based on the real specifications, and then you get, well, you get the War Thunder forums, and you get, you get a bunch more leaked military documents. Yeah. Shit. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That tank is not to specifications. How do you know? Because I have clearance. And everyone goes to jail. <laughs> Every time. Happens all the time. Yeah. Asni Ninja one with 500 bits said over the years the random songs I've made from time to time, I've had multiple friends tell me they sound like music from a game. I was wondering if you knew the best way for someone like me to be able to get into the music making part of the game industry. Thank you mm. in advance, Yar Heart. The music making part of the games industry, the best thing you can do is start producing music and then putting it online. Um, maybe get involved with some game jams, show some people what you can do. And then as you build up that kind of, you know, reputation of making this kind of stuff, you'll get invited onto projects. Look for indie games, apply your skills, apply for those positions for smaller teams. It's a great way to do it, man. And like, I'll give you an example. Stein now owns a studio. Stein's first big break was Heartbound. Whole career came out of that, right? And that's a whole thing. Is your clearance still active with the work you're doing? I don't know. Should you be able to know that? <laughs> Uncle Jasivan with two Canadian dollars said butts too. Imagine, imagine asking a former government employee for information about his government employment. Hmm. You think I would answer any of those questions? What do you think this is? The War Thunder forums? Come on. Come on. Butts too. Evangeline with two dollars said butts. Fantastic. Spyro1701 with 5 euros said I have started a course in cybersecurity and something came up that you might know more about. Oh? If you don't mind, could you talk about Log4 Shell? Hmm. Let's go pull this up. Ah, oh, this came in that time of just annoying vulnerabilities with names and websites. Yeah. Alright. This is the... Arbitrary code injection, I believe. Yeah. Yeah. You can pull this up. Log for shell, Dredex, and Conti, even today, and log for shell. I think there's a thing for this for... Let me pull this up. Yeah, with the Java logging framework. Was that... Did that hit Minecraft? 
I can't remember if it was Longford Shell that did this. There's Longford J. Is Longford J different from Longford Shell? Longford J. Verse Longford Shell. Yeah. Yeah, this shit sucked. I wanted to make sure that they're all the same thing. Here, here's the thing that I hate about vulnerabilities all the time. Yeah, it was the, it was the CVE for Log4J. The reason why I hate all these names, I hate when a, a vulnerability needs a website. <laughs> and it's always like Heartbleed. And it's like a website with a logo and a stupid ass name. And like this felt like the same thing. This one was really bad. This one was really bad. Basically, every Minecraft server forever was vulnerable, which was ass. Yeah, Zulcher Lord, Log4J, my whole week with patching recently, it's so ass. It's so ass, dude. The amount of patching that had to take place for like every Java ever, like every Java implementation ever was just, a, it was a nightmare. It was such a nightmare. Yeah, Java's so naturally exploitable. Well, the government wants you to use it more. <laughs> I was at a bank, Log4J took months to correct. Yeah, it was a nightmare. I think it was one of the biggest things about it was this. It was just so common like the vulnerability was so common that there was just so much work for anyone who's, well, a sysadmin like Zoltron. <laughs> Imagine dealing with that shit. Finding all instances in a corporate was nightmare. Yeah, it was. It's a super big nightmare. Yeah, even VMware vSphere was exposed. Wait, was it really? Let me look that up. vSphere. Oh my shit. VMware vCenter instances. Oh. Oh. I didn't even really realize Log4J hit that shit. Oh, that's gross, dude. Oh, that's gross. Boo. Boo. Yeah, it was a zero day. Yeah. You know every vulnerability is a zero day. You realize that, right? You know what zero day means? It means it was found that day. That's all. <laughs> it's like wow we didn't know about this before it's a zero day yeah yeah this is rough dude so basically what it was is there was a um a java logging framework called log4j which is like a super common logging framework and log for shell the vulnerability allowed for arbitrary code execution inside of that basically the worst shit you could possibly imagine because it was so so widespread that you you had this thing where it's like wow i guess i'll just turn my whole network inside out give me the next seven months oh it's already being exploited in the wild fantastic wonderful wonderful it's great <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, the payloads were super easy, too. Yeah. Did you say netcode? You did. MCM dev. It's funny. Got owned. Said netcode. What do you think of the, the release of Dragon's Dogma 2? I won't be playing the game. I won't be playing the game for one reason. And I, I talked about this a lot at the beginning of the stream. I grew up at a time where when you bought a game, you got the game. There are people in the next generation right now that will defend this. These are core functionality systems and, con and consumables for the game. I find that to be disgusting. When I grew up, you bought the game... And this shit was called cheat codes. Now you buy cheat codes. This is a $70 game. Why are you selling me the ability to use Town Portal? Why are you selling me the ability to resurrect my allies? Why? Why is this here? This is a $70 single player game. Why can't I reset or delete my character? Why are players having to go and reset and delete their characters by deleting save file data directly on their computer and then getting banned for it? Because it counts as modification of game files. Why? 
why is there only one save character slot instead of a game that has a character creator that lets you build wildly different characters except for the fact that they monetize the character editor. The reason why this is gross isn't just that they're selling it. The reason it's gross is because through the act of selling these things, they have to create a need for you to buy them. So they reduce the game's functionality to make it so that you should buy that thing. Monetizing the character creator, monetizing the character editor, means that they have to restrict it to one character and not deleting your character because you'll just make a new one. Now it costs money. Why? Like, what the hell is this? This is trash tier shit. And because of that, they're sitting at what? 46% positive? For like one of the most long-awaited games? And the game looks brilliant, too. The game looks brilliant. This monetization is just disgusting to me. So I won't, I won't support it. I refuse to. Yeah. Being a game dev for that game must have sucked. It's sad, too, because the game looks awesome, dude. It looks fantastic. So the devs knocked it out of the park. But, like, this monetization is so gross that I just can't support it. I, I refuse to, because I don't want to see that in our industry. Why would you even buy that? It's insane. Yeah, I won't do it. I won't do it. And I, I feel for the devs. I do. But I just won't play the game. I refuse. Because I don't want to see this stuff in our industry. In fact, Coke Carnage had a really good take on this. Let me go pull this up. Coke Carnage had a really good take on this. He said, just don't buy the microtransactions. Easy. No, for many, that's not how it works. The problem is simple. When you want to sell something, there has to be a need for it. It's easy to, for us to surmise that e everything in microtransactions list, take Dragon's Dogma 2, for instance, is extra or unneeded. Once you get it all in the game, no harm, no foul, right? Because you can just earn it in game, right? No. When you try to sell items, you try to make a need. You need an impetus for purchase. When you start attaching money into items you earn in the game, who is to say the game developers were told to make sure that we limit X item because they are selling it as DLC? So maybe when the game designer was going to put it in a super rare item drop on that hard boss, or maybe at the end of that hard dungeon, but nope, they end up putting a lesser item there to influence folks who want to buy the particular rare item as DLC. This is exactly what happens. So I actually put a response to this and I said, this take is entirely correct. As a developer, I've seen this many times throughout my career, limiting in-game functionality or access to items features specifically to sell them back to the player. If you've grown up in this environment, you likely don't understand how bad it's really gotten. The last generation got all of these features with the game, not as add-ons we now pay for. You are getting scammed. You are getting ripped off. They are selling content back to you that we used to get for free. And I just can't be a part of it. I refuse. I find it to be very gross. Next. <clears throat> Grant grows ganj with oh, five hundred bits. Again. Said hey Thor, in getting my degree in cybersecurity. I love your vibe and community. Just curious you. if you have any recommendations for certs or things to do on my own to progress in the field. Security Thank you plus less and than three. Plus. Yeah, Security Plus and Network Plus are two big ones, and also do bounty programs. If you join our Discord, there's a whole section in there for hacking if you get the hacking role. And then go down to resources, and it's just a bunch of resources for you. Just run in that direction. Do a bunch of shit. Do bounty programs. Have fun. You know. Awesome way to do it, man. Invincibly with 500 bits said I am the go-to guy for games at my workplace so my junior manager asked me about Dragon's Dogma 2. I wow. really didn't know much about the game but now that I have seen this I got to tell him that the game he was looking for is a simple cash grab which hides core gameplay behind a paywall. Really pains me to disappoint a fan bible thump. It's, it's even worse because it's not actually hiding that stuff behind a paywall. It's just making it so that you can buy it behind a paywall. And it's like... People don't realize that that diminishes the actual game because they have to design it around the idea that you can buy it instead. That's the problem, is you don't know what the real game would have been now. Because instead they have a system in which it has been modified to incentivize the purchase of those features. There's no reason for that. It makes the game actively worse. And you may feel fine spending the $1 to get that feature back, but... If the game didn't go that direction, you'd just have it. Do you know how we know that? Go play BG3. That's it. 
That's all that that is. You don't need to have these types of things purchased. None of that shit is good. I think it's sad as hell. Does not need to be that way. Did he want a new game option? Yeah. It's it's not even greed. It's it's short sighted shit. It's not even greed. It is selling the game's future out for a quick buck right now. And the worst part about it, if it was actual greed, they're doing it wrong because this is going to end up making them less money overall. You would think that people who want more money would, I don't know, manage their product better in a way that would incentivize people to buy more of it. They've baited themselves into making less money overall by disillusioning their players. What? Why? What a shitty magic trick. Look, I took something everyone wanted to buy and turned it into shit by putting 99 cent microtransactions on it. What? Why? Why? Why would you ever... You could just take those... You could have launched without those and more people would be buying your game right now. It's insane to me. The game is already $70. You, you threw that away for 99 cent character revives. What brilliant marketeering person did that? What absolute stunning example of corporate bullshit decided this was a good idea? And they're one-time use transactions, too. And the worst part about it, it's even dumber. Do you see this? You can only get it once. It's a one-time use, consumable, and the DLC is permanent. They didn't even build an in-game store correctly. They did it through Steam's DLC. Why? Why? What are you doing? What are you doing? You look dumb, and you are being dumb. This makes no sense. This makes no sense, dude. It's insane to watch. God damn it. You didn't even make a ripoff correctly. Why? Rat Queen Jesus. Arts with 500 bits said, I think the issue isn't only about getting these things for free. The bigger issue would be buying a $70 game that is essentially broken without further purchases to revive a dead character. Yeah. You died to that first boss. Game over. No more game for you. Thank you for the $70. And because you can't delete your character right now, yeah. Yep. Hate this is my first message, but Jack Walsh Capitalism strikes again. I don't even know the reference, to be honest with you. It's Forest Hardcoreborn? Pretty much, yeah. You can load your save? Somewhat. Until it auto-saves over it, which is exactly what happened to some people in the comments on there. Which is why the game is sitting at 46% positive. Go read the reviews. You'll find a whole bunch of people in there that got stuck in softlock positions, and they can't delete their character. Because the game doesn't give you the option to. So a number of them went into the save file, actually on your computer, and deleted it manually. And then Denuvo banned them from a single-player video game for modifying game files. Yeah. Enjoy that shit. It's all over that. It is all over it. People are pissed. There's a reason people are pissed. Because that shit is stupid. It doesn't make any sense. Because you can't delete your character otherwise. On a $70 game in 2024... Do you, do you see why this doesn't make any damn sense? None of this shit makes any damn sense. Like, yeah, none of it makes any sense. Consumer affairs is going to be real busy. I know, exactly. That's wild to me. Really wild to me. How do we stop it then? Well, here's what I'm going to do. I'm not buying the video game. You can buy the video game if you want to enjoy it, if you think it would be good for you. I refuse to buy that. They won't, I know I'm just one person, but they won't get my $70. I was looking forward to the game, too. I wanted to play it. I probably still would enjoy portions of it, but I don't really want to push that business practice forward. I think that business practice is disgusting. I'm sick of seeing it in our industry, and I refuse to give them my money. A little bit of willpower. Yeah, I'm going to miss out. I'm totally going to miss out on that game. And you know what? Fine. 
Maybe they should stop doing stupid shit. Easy. Dat Gamer Life with 500 bits said next practice area for my flipper zero. Truck stops, with permission of course. Always, always with permission. Don't do anything you shouldn't do. Important. Zay Piatu with 500 bits said hello Thor. Do you know about Archipelago? It's a multi-world yeah. multi-game randomizer with a huge yes. number of supported games. What it means yeah. is that people can have items of another player in their game. For example, player A can open a chest in their Zelda game which contain an upgrade in player B's Super Metroid game. It's a lot of fun. HTTPS colon slash slash so, archipelago dot GG slash. Multi-world multi-game randomizer. This shit is insane. It is completely wild. I'm going to link this in chat. The website's going to die when I do this. It did last time we did this. It's crazy, dude. It is completely wild. What are you doing? Oh. What are you doing? Are you digging? I need to go check the ferrets real quick. Give me a moment. Sorry about that. Wanted to check on him. All right, next. Lizreal with 1000 bits said I once had all my account passwords and emails stolen. I yeah. changed everything OFC and ran Bitdefender. Is there anything else I could do to be safe? Was an unsafe download from a person that stole the Discord ACC of a friend. Yep. So that's a that's a pretty common attack. It's a really normal one. Basically what'll happen is somebody will steal a Discord account. And when they steal that Discord account, they'll go and message everybody in the friends list. And they'll say, hey man, I've been working in a game. Can you play my game? The moment you get any message like this, can you download this thing? Can you do that kind of a thing, right? Whatever it's going to be. All you have to do is say, sure, just contact me over voice. So you can walk me through the install. <laughs> Every time. Every single time. Be like, yeah. Call me, man. Done. Easy. You win every time. And they won't They won't do it. And you go, why won't you do it, man? Why won't you do it, man? Every time, dude. And they'll try to weasel out of it every time. And you'll realize really quickly, wait a minute, this isn't my friend. And then you have to contact everybody and be like, hey, quarantine this account. Stop listening to them. This dude's been totally hacked. And let us know, too, if it happens in our Discord. Because we, we have this all the time. Our community is largely very vulnerable to this because we're game developers. So if anybody ever contacts you and says, hey, I made a game, can you download it? The answer is no. Every time. The answer is no. They'll even do things like, hey, here's my game over on Steam. But uh, I have a demo and the demo is from my website. And the Steam game will actually be a real Steam game, but it's not their Steam game, even though they say it is. And they'll have a website set up for that Steam game but still not their actual Steam game. They've gotten really sophisticated with this. It's quite wild, frankly. I made a funny game. Please download. Yeah. 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 Uh, the negative reviews on Helldivers 2? Let's go look. Because I know there's some significant problems with the game right now. 
assume new negative reviews? So a lot of it right now is going to be based on these crashes. They have a crash right now, which I am blown away. Absolutely blown away, to be honest with you, that they didn't revert their last patch. Their last patch made it so that any arc weapons in the game will randomly crash a client that views the, the lightning. I don't understand why that's in the game right now. They're fixing it on Tuesday. Like, I... I don't understand. Yeah, any arc weapon, the Tesla tower, the arc thrower, or the the arc shotgun, they're not fixing this until Tuesday. You've been using arc weapons, non issue. No, it's not a non issue. If it's not crashing you, it's crashing other people. They've even made a public announcement about this, saying it is specifically the arc weapons. We tested it on stream. King Gathalian and I did. We couldn't get through a mission at all. We, it's something related to graphical settings and the arc weapons. You are crashing other players. <laughs> if it's not crashing you, it is crashing others. All of the arc weapons are doing this. Look, we'll go to their Discord right now. Official announcements. We have identified the cause of the freezes many players have been experiencing, and we're in the process of building a patch to fix that. Should be ready to deploy within the next early next week. In the meantime, we advise against using the arc thrower, arc shotgun, and Tesla tower, as those appear to be linked to the issue. Stop using those weapons. You are crashing players. And yourself. <laughs> <laughs> yeah so like this shit's bad shit's really bad yeah it's not good at all so with that in mind like people are mad about the arc thrower secondarily they changed something and what they changed was they changed the calculation for how effort is achieved in the game and they had a major order go through and they changed this in the middle of the major order and suddenly everyone in the game was crashing we didn't accomplish the major order because the game was completely unstable. Not only did our, our total progression get cut by about 60%, but on top of it, our arc weapons were crashing players all the time. So everything went to shit, and we failed the major order. And then they gave us a new major order that's different. So yeah, it's of course people are going to be mad right now. Like 100%. Players are going to be angry about this. There's no way around that. Why didn't they revert the patch? I don't know. That the only thing I can think of is that they technically couldn't, right? There was some kind of a problem that stopped them from doing this. I'm surprised that they don't have anything in place to disable specific weaponry. That's the big question for me is like, why is that? Not? I'm hoping they build that functionality because they should they should just disable the arc weapons to stop this from being a thing. Like, I'm, I'm quite surprised that that's not the case. Hopefully they do something to compensate for the troubles. They didn't. Not that I've seen so far. So I, I think the biggest thing that I'm hoping that they do is going forward, give your, like, they need to develop the functionality to disable weapons because this isn't going to be, the, you know, an isolated incident. Are you losing your voice? I got sick the last couple of days. My voice is slowly recovering. Yeah. Yeah, I'm sick. No, I've been sick. I've been sick the last couple of days. I got sick on, like, Thursday. Sucked. Ugh. Voice is getting better, though. I wasn't even able to talk yesterday, not really, anyway. Beans is doing well. He's going to take two weeks to recover. No, I'll be okay. I'll be all right. It would be better if they added it as a modifier? What do you mean a modifier? No, they should just disable those weapons while it's broken. Like, with, with the arc weapons crashing people in the game, they need to have functionality to disable specific weapons and be like, you can't put this in your loadout right now. Yeah. You just can't. You just can't do it. Dude, what? It was a real treat opening up my socials and seeing you quite literally everywhere. That's funny. Over this Apex stuff, it actually... It actually made my morning. That's awesome, dude. I'm really glad. Um, I'm really waiting for respawns. So I've talked to a number of people from their, their security team. And uh, they absolutely are running a proper house over there they know exactly what they're doing and my hope is that they're able to communicate with you guys their entire investigation right knowing full well that that is a difficult ask because 
legal teams are really shit when it comes down to it. So my hope is that they do that. My hope is that they do going forward. And we'll just have to wait and see. That being said, I'm glad they're communicating with you guys now. You know, I'm glad Respawn is because I think it's really just a communication issue. I don't think it's an issue of the devs being lazy. I don't think it's an issue of the devs sucking. I don't think it's an issue of them demonetizing their security team or any of the, the weird claims that people are making. Um, it is an issue of communication. It's an issue of them not being able to talk to you guys. And I, I'm hoping that changes for them going forward. Because to be real, the amount of positivity hitting the studio right now is enormous. Like so many people's minds were changed about security because of these talks that they've started getting a lot of praise from from players and i don't think respawn is used to that and i'm hoping that they adapt to that And they're like hey we should communicate more that's my hope is that the internal is like wait a minute we should actually be doing this because like look at look at how positive this is i know i'm super horse today dude i'm not a little horse i'm very horse today yeah it's not great it's not great i've been sick the last couple of days a little bit of haunts a little haunts and <clears throat> Just watch the breakdown. Amazing job. Yeah, no, we're just waiting on it. We still we just still don't have any uh, proof of, of remote code execution, but I'm leaning... The way that I feel like it is happening now, the way after everything is done, everything is done and said, right? I feel like the end user's clients, which are like um, Imperial House and stuff like that, is that they were able to make graphics appear on the screen and control player movement but not actually download and execute code. Does that make sense? Because I think that that graphic that showed as like a cheat tool, I think it was fake. I think it actually is just using the in-game graphics because all the text on it is actually the same font that is used in the game, which wouldn't happen. So it's a ruse. I don't think it's really the cheat tool. I don't think they're actually downloading stuff and, and running it on the machine. So because of that, I'm pretty sure that that's what's happening, which is cool. That's a crazy vulnerability. I can't wait to see the exploit chain that caused that. You know, it's neat as hell. Outside of that, I, th I think he's got some other other tools to do this stuff for like the server side. The PAX thing is the most interesting. I'm waiting to see how he did the PAX thing. Yeah. Like you said, piece of yarn keeps getting pulled. Bingo. We just keep pulling in the sweater until it falls apart. We got ads, but they're going to wait. What about the aimbot? Same thing. You can control the client from there. You just can't execute code. You just, you know, display stuff. Make things move. Ninja, are you okay? I'm looking back through all of your messages and they make less and less sense the farther I go. I look like a chatbot. Are you a chatbot? He's gotta be a bot, right? Here, everybody at ain't like this dude. At him, ninja. With the words keyword. Just say keyword at him. See what he does. He respond to it. <laughs> Look at all the keywords, Steve. <laughs> uh, it's over on Twitch side, by the way, YouTube. It's super weird. I was looking at his logs. It's strange. He just keeps saying some weird thing about Angel Colon. He's like obsessed with it. What the hell is this, dude? He's totally a bot. No, he's 100% a bot. He hasn't responded to any of this. Everybody in chat added him and he didn't say shit. He's 100%, 100% a bot, dude. That dude's a bot. What the hell is this weird bot doing in my chat? I kind of, like, I want to study it, you know? I forgot to mention this. I actually used your website to show a school of kids I was speaking to on how to get into game dev. They're literally all following the site now, according to the business teacher. Oh, that's awesome, dude. That's awesome as hell. I'm really glad. I'm really glad, to be honest with you. Free viewership? No, it's weird. 
I want to know who he is. I want to know who made him, you know? Who's your who's your programmer dad, dude? Who made you? Why did they make you? And why are they making you spam <coughs> Bob Ross and talk about Angel Colon underwear? Who the hell is Angel Colon? Who is your dad and what does he do? That's my question to you. Why? It's a goddamn automaton. It is. It is, dude. I'm waiting to see more from it. It's like a... You guys don't understand this. I love when a bot shows up in chat because I'm like, where, where did you come from? Like, the walls of bots, boring. The individual unhinged, like, street corner screaming robot that we're seeing right now. Like, it's hard to tell if that's like a, like a drunk guy or a bot. Because it could be either, right? It could be either one of those things. It could be a drunk dude that's just at, blasted out of his mind. Or it could be a bot. I don't know which one. Which one are you? Are you a drunk bot? Are you Bender, actually? And ironically? He just said police. Police Department Chicago Tribune. You're totally a bot, dude. Oh god, he's actually a bot. He's a drunk robot, dude. Holy shit. Yeah, no drunk robot on YouTube. It's actually Bender. You know what? I'm gonna let him stay. We've talked about him long enough. He's kind of like furniture now. I feel like if I got rid of him, it'd, it'd feel weird, you know? Every once in a while I look over and there's like some weird shit about Angel Collins, and then sometimes there's like stars in Bob Ross. You know? I'm just gonna leave him. He's, yeah, he's like wallpaper. I don't want to get rid of him now. I'm fine with this. I don't even know what I don't even know who made him. I don't even know why they made him, but he gets to stay. <laughs> A Viking warrior with 500 bits said your hair is majestic. <laughs> oh, thank you. That's very nice of you. It's really nice of you. Thank you very much. Lazy T Studios with 500 bits said I am the digital antivirus engine, but you can call me Dave. Oh. I made a devlog for the game and it has gone really well. You've inspired me to work on it more and turn it into a full, the Stanley Parable, like experience. That's awesome. Thank you for everything you do for the developer community. HTTPS colon slash slash www dot u That's awesome as shit, dude. Your game was really cool, too. I liked it a lot. Here. Yeah, Dave is really cool. Here, I'm going to link this in chat. What an it was such an interesting idea. Such an interesting idea. Cool as shit, dude. Really, really cool game. Awesome job. Fantastic job. Seriously. Kelvin Ernst with two euros said love the YouTube shorts continue being great. Dude, you're awesome. Thank you. You keeping the bot as a pet? I mean, yeah. Dude, are you telling me if a robot just wandered into your house, you'd just let it go? It's not... Oh, man. Felix banned him. Felix, that was... It's my bot. Emergency? What's up? What? Wait, is that what that is? Really? Here, what was the account name again? Here, link it in chat, Felix. Oh, you're linking to me there. Hold up. I'm going to hide something real fast. What? That's the one. Got it. One sec. Oh. 
Yeah, so, uh, yeah, that last one is definitely banned. Yeah, report the account. Report it. It made a death threat. <laughs> oh, man, I thought you were a cool bot for a minute there. You were posting, like, Bob Ross and stars and shit, and then you made a death threat. Uh, Could have been cool. Could have been cool. Yeah, I didn't realize that. Thank you for killing it. Thank you for putting it down. It's always the saddest when you have a really interesting bot, and then... And then it just dies like that. It has to do that. Deeply unfortunate. Yeah. Yeah, it did a 180 real quick. It did. Not a bot, just some weirdo. I don't know, dude. It's always like, so like, this is the problem, right? In the last month, there have been 3 million total unique accounts on this channel. Now we're going to do a little bit of math, chat. If 0.01% of those people are unhinged as shit. How many people is that, chat? Huh? I'm going to give you the calculator. I'm going to give you control of the calculator. We're going to take 3 million times now 0 0.01 would be 1%, right? So 0. Point How many zeros, chat? I'm going to let you have the control. How many zeros do I put? For 0.01%. My God. You want three? That's what you want? How many think this is correct? Let's do a poll. Hey, Mods, can we do a poll for this? How many people think that this is the correct math? <laughs> We're doing a poll. There has to be a poll for this. A poll for how many zeros? I can't wait. I can't wait to see how many of you don't know math. I'm ready. I'm ready for this information. Oh, no, we're doing it. We're doing it. I'm ready for this information. How many zeros after the decimal? We'll say that. Is this correct? Chat, please tell me you're trolling. Chat, please tell me you're trolling. 58% of you have said no. I don't even need to end it. I don't even I don't even have to see the rest of this poll. 58% of you don't know math. 58% of you said this is not correct. I was going to troll you. I was going to troll you and say it wasn't correct. We were going to do a whole bit for this, but you actually unironically think that this is not correct. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, God. So anyway, on average, at least 300 of these people are going to be unhinged. <laughs> I'm glad you know how to do math, chat. At least some of you. <laughs> so that one that just got banned means there's 299 of you left. And we got all month to go. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, wait, 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 wait. I think I saw another one. He's gone. Disappeared into the front. He disappeared, Chet. He could be he could be anywhere now.
You know what I might do? I might actually keep a running tally. Or like the unhinged ones. I'll be like, oh, that's an unhinged one. 298 left. Chat doesn't know math. Chat doesn't know math. What are we doing? Making fun of chat. <clears throat> Lizreal with 500 bits said, have you seen the game called Secrets of Grindia? It's a great co-op yes. game and reminds me of Secrets of Mana with Legend of Zelda. Yes. Yeah, no. Secrets of Grindia. I think I actually have some hours on the game. Let me go look. Yeah, I only played it for three hours. I should play it more. It was a long time ago, too. I think they've upgraded the living shit out of it. Yeah. I played it back in 2015. So, long time ago. Long time ago. There's so much more game in this game now. Like, look at this. Look how wild that is. It looks really good. I mean, look at that, dude. The hell is that? Look at him. Look at him. The environments look really awesome. Characters look cool. Ridiculous hat. Love that. Wild, dude. I love those animations. Look at that shit. I love that. Phenomenal. They've added so much to this. They've added so much to this. Holy shit. Dude, a bedroom you get to make now? What? Okay. They've added so much game to this game. Undertale vibes? What? What about the... What? What do you mean Undertale vibes, my dude? You know Undertale didn't invo like invent the pixel art, right? What about any of this feels like Undertale to you? The battle system? What about this looks like a bullet hell trapped inside of a box? <sighs> Panoptic Emu with 500 bits said AI says, you humans used to get air for free. You still can get it for free, but you have to work for 12 hours before you get a breath. <laughs> or you can pay us for it. Yep. Nah with $9.99 said you would love Crawl. Crawl yeah. is a brawler indie no, game. Crawl is awesome. Randomly generated yeah, dungeons yeah, yeah, yeah. with one player as the hero and the others as spirits who possess yep. traps and monsters in the environment to kill. Crawl is awesome. If you manage to kill the guy who's currently the hero, you get to be the hero. It's freaking awesome, dude. Be cool if it would actually get into the into the trailer so you can see this. Yeah, crawl, be the hero. But also, you get to be all the monsters. It's so good. It's so good. I love the shit out of it. You played Veltharis? Wild Metal Platformer, Pixel Fusion Game, but never played that Arctics. Never heard of it, actually. Such Undertale? You're Undertale, you literal goblin. I think it's freaking rad. I want to see if we can get this zoomed out version of this, because there's a zoomed out camera version. I don't think that one shows it very well. There we go. There we go. So, like, you can take over the traps. You can take over the monsters, and then you try to kill the player, and if you kill him, you get to be the hero. It's quite good. It's very cool. This reminds me of Shower With Your Dad Simulator. Really? Really. Man, I love in Shower With Your Dad Simulator when you get to go into a pentagram and turn into a skeleton. That's the best part of that game, you know? Especially when you kill the hero and shower with your dad simulator. You guys remember that? What an awesome moment it was. 
in Shower with Your Dad Simulator. When I turned into the gigantic, horrible beast and killed a man with my bare hands. Tamakisama with 500 bits said, Ya, hey, hello, Thor. Legend of Keepers is kind of that game. You are the bad guy in making a dungeon yeah. to the NPC heroes. Is that also on seven Yar cult? Legend of Keepers. Yeah. Career of a dungeon manager. I love this shit. I love dungeon manager games, dude. I love this kind of shit. Try to defend your place. God, it's so cool. I want to make a bunch of monsters. I want them to kill heroes. That's freaking rad, dude. That kind of shit is awesome feeling. I really like being the bad guy. I just like making dungeons. I just like making dungeons. And I like watching heroes go through them. Dungeon Keeper is really good. The latest iteration of Dungeon Keeper was like a phone game and it was bad. Yeah, like old Dungeon Keeper. God, that was old. My God, the old Dungeon Keeper. Yeah, there was like a phone game Dungeon Keeper that was not very good. Mighty Quest for Epic Loot is very good. I like that a lot. You, you actually, you know what's better than Mighty Quest for Epic Loot for me? It's Meet Your Maker. Who here has not seen Meet Your Maker? Who hasn't seen this game? Who's never seen this? I love the shit out of this game. I, I have 119 hours on record in this game. I love this game. It is phenomenal. It is Mario Maker meets Quake. That is the best possible way I can describe this. It is made by the Behavior Interactives, the people who make Dead by Daylight, and it is a post-apocalyptic, brutalist design Mario Maker in which you make Quake levels and other players try to go through them. It is freaking fun, dude. It is outrageously fun. And it is hard as shit. Like, you're a closed beta tester? Nice. You show us? Sounds great. Yeah, I can... Let me, let me link this to you. We should play this on a Wednesday. We should definitely play this on a Wednesday. Thoughts on Twitch Turbo? It's awesome. You don't get any ads and the streamer still gets paid as if you watched ads. It's great. I know, I should play this more. Saw Co play this, is so cool. Yeah, I've been playing since the very beginning. I love the hell out of it. Yeah, no, it's, it's so good, dude. It's such a good game. And it's hard. Because it's as hard as, you know, the other players make it. Oh, dead. And when you die, you come back instantly. You gotta redo it. By the way, when you die, you don't lose anything, but the person who made the dungeon gets stuff. So, like, you want to make dungeons that are deadly, dungeons that are fun and ingenious, that draw people in and then make them want to beat it and then they die a bunch, because then your dungeon levels up. Your dungeon actually gets XP. It's freaking awesome, dude. They announced that they're closing the servers? When did they announce that? Wait, what? Is it shutting down? Wait, link me to this. Link, 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 link. If you have that kind of a claim, I want to see it. The forums aren't relevant. They're using, they use Discord. They lowered their price to $20? Okay, lowering their price is not them shutting the servers down. What's wrong? The hell?
Interesting. One moment. You know, you can't hear anything. sick. Oh, I'm really well aware, Jake. I'm super well aware. Just a moment. his damn name. Give me just a sec.
Interesting. Hmm. Yeah, I thought you extra banned them on top of it. Very interesting. Hey, Jake. People are saying they can't destroy anything, but they're in the wilds? Oh, wait, they're, in, they're not in Markheim. All right. Very odd. Yeah, I'm not seeing anything in here, man. Very odd. Super, super weird. And there's no console-driven command that's actually happening here. I said a really weird thing, and I'm like looking into it now, and I can't see any console request that's actually happening here, Jake. That's why it's really confusing. Because I'm like... There's no actual console request happening, even though it appeared to be a console request. That is not a console request. Does that make sense? Did they just make it look like one? Hmm. Hmm. Very weird. Yeah, a little bit of a monk of hmm. A little bit of a monk of hmm. Anyway, did anyone get any of the lot the video to show or a link to show that this is actually getting shut down? Because I hope it's not. It's not. It's not. Okay, good. Yeah, don't say shit like that. You scare me. I love this game. Just adding new shit. There's nothing in this that says that it's changing things. Yeah, there's nothing changing. This happened a couple of streams ago as well. Yeah. This came out on March 13th. Yeah, just closing the forums. Closing the forums is not closing the game, though. Yeah, that's fine. Whatever. Yeah, it's just the forums. I don't give a shit about the forums. Nobody used them. Everybody used the Discord. Are you sick? Yeah. <coughs> My voice is all shot. Yeah, Jake, if you if you notice there's nothing in the logs there. So I don't really know what's going on there. It's like super weird. Hmm. 
trying to figure this thing out real fast. Who is Jake? Jake's one of the moderators. He helps work on block game with me. Thank you very much for the five dollars to the moderators. You rock, dude. Yeah, no, Jake, there's nothing in here. Hold up. interesting. Is that what it is? <laughs> what? What? Really? What in the name of shit? All right, all right. Sitting, we're sitting here freaking out, thinking that somebody had compromised my server admin account on our block game server because somebody posted the thing where it, it literally, as console, says their name is great, and I was like, "What the hell is this?" So I start looking through the logs, and we see this thing where it says "basic command," which is the Z menu shit, and when you click on it on the cake, it says "is great" as console to everyone in the entire server. I didn't make that. What are those devs doing? I have to remove this menu now. Like, what? Why is that like this? It's so stupid. It can't be exploited for anything, but it's just dumb. Like. <laughs> uh, well, I'm going to go remove that shit. <laughs> And it's gone. All right, it's fixed. <sighs> yeah, Jake, it's fixed. Fun detected, dude. I was just like, what the shit is going on here? We're like freaking out a little bit. And we're like, well, there's two factor on my accounts. So there's no way they're in there. 
Thank you for the bread. I know, right? So, security. We're actually going to do bug fix for this one. Well, that was stupid and scary. It's okay. I only had a slight heart attack. I know, right? Because I was like, dude, that is a console command. I was like, what the hell's going on? I banned him instantly and then unbanned him because I was like, what's happening here? Sim swap, though? It's really hard to have a sim swap on a software defined two factor. What? But? I think that $10 to the moderators, dude. Very nice of you. But yeah, so I said there's no longer a hidden menu with cake. <laughs> uh, why ban them? Because their account ran a console command and we had to shut down the situation to find out what the hell was going on. And we fixed it. <laughs> You're going to get a temp ban when I try to figure out what the hell's going on and then unban you, you know? Like, console commands are scary shit. It's been there forever? No, it hasn't. It's been there for like a week. That menu is new. Alright. I think we did the $3 the mods, by the way. Oh yeah, um, for those who don't know, now we are, we are actually deleting all those, uh, what are they called? All the VODs? Because the profanity filter kept failing? Well, it can't fail now, number one. Uh, because it doesn't show people's names, but I can still see the names in the tip feed. And then number two, we found out who did it. And we banned him. Because, amazingly, the guy used his actual Twitch account name on one of his other donations, and then thought he was clever by using different account names. Yeah, all your payment information's on file. It links all your stuff together. So when you post a racial slur, all of that is logged. So then we took that and we gave it to Twitch, and now that guy's account is also banned there, too. So, not clever enough. Not the brightest. Not the brightest. Yeah. 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 Not the brightest at all. Honestly, that shit's dumb, though. Yeah, to be real with you, like, don't, don't do that kind of shit. No one, no one thinks it's funny and you're just an idiot. And I, it makes, it makes stress on the people who are actually like doing this kind of stuff. Like it puts stress on the mods, puts stress on me. And, uh, when there's stress like that, I just, you make me want to solve the puzzle. So then I did. Not the smartest move, right? Yeah. But a racial slur is a name through Pally. And I had to, I had to reach out to Pally. Pally was able to associate the accounts and that was it, you know? Yep. How's Beans doing? He's doing really well. Yeah. Beans is okay. He's got to heal for about two weeks. I think my voice is finally starting to drop out. <laughs> it's starting to fail. Uh. <clears throat> yeah, he's going to be okay. The hair bullet quite nasty. It's sitting on my desk. The fat is dissolving now, because the liquid that it's in dissolves fats. Horrifying. Ugh. Why is it on my desk? So, I've talked to Shay a little bit about this, and I kind of want to do this. Um, ferrets are very hard to take care of animals, and a lot of people will just jump into ownership without realizing how expensive they really are. Beans' surgery, his emergency surgery, was $3,000. Because he ate a piece of blanket months ago, and it didn't leave his system, and then it slowly coated itself in hair and fat until it almost killed him. Yep. You can't get veterinary insur insurance for ferrets because they're exotic animals. A lot of the times it doesn't cover shit, and we see it all the time. So what ends up happening is, if people can't pay the price, they euthanize. Beans would have been euthanized if he was owned by anybody else. If he wasn't here at the rescue, he would be dead today. So, this happens all the time. And that's an important thing. Does Shay not do surgeries? We're not doing a surgery at home. What? That's... What? <clears throat> no. That's not how that works. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, dude. Uh, so, yeah, most of the time it would end up in euthanasia. 
what we did instead, we were like, okay, well, it, it is likely a tumor based on the size and the location. But let's throw the money in and do exploratory surgery to make sure. So we did. And it turned out to be a hairball. The most horrifying, gigantic hairball any of the vets had ever seen in their lives. Actually insane. Actually insane. So, yeah. He doesn't have to be euthanized. He has a big scar on his belly. It's a big cut on his belly. And now he has to heal over the next two weeks. Did you keep it? Yeah, it's sitting on my desk in this little jar. Even beyond that, if you want to see this, kind of, kind of horrifying to see how large this was. Uh, here it is. Yeah, that's not small, my dude. That's enormous. That was trapped in his intestine. In his intestine, dude. Yeah. And it's radio dense. Like, x-rays don't go through it. You thought there was a squirrel? It looks like a cat turd. That looks like a full, normal-sized cat turd out of a ferret. Like, it's enormous, dude. Yeah, it's huge. So, like, this was in his body. And we saved him. So, one of you was backed up just a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. Man cooking up a record dump. This took months to build. So, he had that piece stuck in him. And then over months of time, it slowly built up and slowly built up until it became this. And that's it. That hair, it has a CR rating. Dude, that hairball has a health bar. That is some wild shit. How'd you figure out what was wrong? Uh, it was very clear we picked him up when he wasn't feeling good, and Shay could feel a lump in his belly, and we're like, oh, no. Oh, no. Because we thought it was cancer at first, because juvenile lymphoma in ferrets spreads real fast. It gets real big really quickly. So we thought it was that. So, yeah. When I talk about ferrets being expensive, this is what I mean. And most households can't absorb that kind of a cost. But we can because you guys watch the Ferret Rescue Channel. They paid for everything. So, like, that's a big deal. How old is your ferret? We have 35 ferrets, actually. We're in, we run a rescue for them. And it runs all completely on Twitch. It's wild, right? Yeah, it's huge. It's absolutely enormous. But he's going to be okay. At least, we hope so. He's sleeping right now and he's very lazy. But he's doing it. He's surviving. Okay. Hmm. Is there a fun for the ferrets? No, no, no. Just watch the channel. Here. Let me pull this up. There are currently 963 people watching it. There you go. Yeah, Beans is only two, man. By the way, we are moving the rescue in the next couple of days to the other house. So that's going to be a thing. You'll see a different camera angle. There's going to be a lot more ferrets on stream. All kinds of different stuff. We're rebuilding everything. Yeah, everything, everything. And I, I'm probably going to have to take like a day or two off when we do like the full move for it. So do keep that in mind. Yeah. Do you have any certs for security? No, I have three black badges from DEF CON. I never got any certifications of any kind. Didn't need them. So, yeah, it's a lot of this. The new, the new room is much bigger too. I'm really excited for it actually. It's quite cool. One sec. One moment. Goddamn IRS. Goddamn IRS. One moment. So I talked to my tax guy and he was supposed to take the tax, like the IRS was supposed to take the taxes out on the 25th. It's the 23rd. They took him out two days early. 
<laughs> They're not supposed to take them out two days early. There's a standard for this. What the hell are you doing? Uh. All right, there we go. <laughs> On a Saturday, no less. Jesus. All right, chat. My voice is trashed. I keep trying to, like, have a conversation, but my throat actually hurts. I think we need to raid somebody five hours early, which I don't like doing. Yeah. Yeah. I really don't want to do that. I really don't want to do that. Raid in-game? Oh, that's a good idea. He's a really good buddy of mine. What happens to the TTS? Okay, so for those who don't know, for the TTS stuff that's in queue, because we currently have 53 messages in queue, right? If I don't answer your TTS, I don't keep the money. The way that this works is we actually calculate the debt. The debt goes into here, and it goes into that. So we will give this to charity. That's how that goes. So those messages go into there. Also, the answer TTS was broken as shit today anyway. I can answer how many are on there. There's 53. I'll answer three more. So that we have around 50. MSC yeah. Killer 64 with $5 said opinions on demo derbies. Demo derbies? I don't even know what that is. What the hell's a demo derby? Demo derby? Demo, oh, demo derby. It's pronouncing it really weird. What's a demo derby? I don't even know what that is. What the hell is demo derbies? I've never heard of that before. Demo derbies. Oh, demolition derbies. Dude, when you say demo derby, I think of a bunch of like video games, like indie game demos in like a, a race of some kind. Like my brain was not at demolition derby. I freaking love demolition derbies, dude. That shit is rad. I have watched that shit since I was a kid. Bunch of cars getting crushed by gigantic wheeled bullshit. Love it. Love it. I hate acronyms. I do. It could mean anything. It could mean anything. Star underscore the underscore derpy underscore octoling with 500 bits said hello Thor. I know Whoa. this is my first message in this channel, but I have a question that I'm trying to get myself into game development with my friends. Sure. We already got what we want to make. My question is that, after we get an engine to work on what should we focus on first, story, designs, or the basic functions of the game? Yes. You do all of it, right? You do all of it at the same time at that point. When, when we're talking about like basic functions, basic functions are informed by the other things. So you do basic functions at the same time as doing the other ones. You don't do them one at a time. You do everything at once. You have one person that's working in the story, right? That person is writing out what is going to go on further into the future. You have one person working on design ideas on paper, and you have one wor person working on your functionality. With the basic functionality, it's like, cool, we get the basic functionality now. Let's see if we can get the design to inform new functionality on top of the basics, right? Yeah. And then the story is going to make it so you can have new design ideas to go along with that. Basic functionality is usually done in the first day or two, generally. It's quite fast, especially with a lot of modern engines. It's very easy to build a lot of that kind of stuff. Then you start building custom functionality based on the design and story for that. You kind of do all three at the same time. I know that may seem weird, but that is really how that goes. Like, Heartbound, Heartbound, all three of those things happen at the same time. It's very simple. Very simple to start building. And I just keep, keep adding new functionality to it as I need. Out of the three, who's paid the most? I don't know. <laughs> it depends. Depends on the team. Chat 2 play 247 with 500 bits said, Hi Thor, I found you on YT Shorts. Can you give Hi. me some constructive criticism for my Steam page? Sure. I have been grinding hard on my multiplayer survival game called Hardcore Survival. HTTPS colon slash slash store dot steampowered dot com slash app slash 2797710 slash hardcore underscore survival slash question mark UTM underscore source equals TW.
Online multiplayer, 200 plus player servers. PvP focused survival with proximity chat. And no respawn tickets at the end of wipe. So you need to rat your way to an extraction point to, to win. Stranded on a dinosaur infested. I don't even know what a respawn ticket is. Encounter other players and their loaded shelters. Okay, number one, I don't know I don't know what a respawn ticket is. No idea. Never heard of that before. Yeah, Russ Tarkov. Interesting. <laughs> So it's Russ Tarkov Dinosaur. Okay, number one, I would say you don't have a Discord on here. You should definitely set one up. Go set up a Discord, put a link to it in here. There's no reason not to, frankly. Yeah, Russ Tarkov arc. I mean, that sounds fun. I dig that. I think the environments look quite cool. You know, you kind of have that sort of low-poly aesthetic to it. There's nothing wrong with that at all. Yeah, it's a good combo. You have people wishlisting it right now. Yeah, I would set up a Discord. That'd be the first thing that I would do. I would stay away from this. The game should be out of early access in one year, two max. Don't say that. I would honestly stay away from saying that. I would say what kind of things you want to put into early access, generally. Because you never know. When you say one to two years, that could be anything. That means you don't know. And it's disingenuous to say that you do know when you don't. Yeah, my voice is shot. I'm actually going to be ending the stream in a minute here, dude. I'm, uh, I got sick the last couple of days. And my voice is like, Ugh. So I, I would, I would be careful about that. And I would definitely put up social media stuff, Discord, things like this. These gifts are good. I like seeing that. I would want to see a video up here. Even if that video is just gameplay. Because you have all these models and stuff, but you don't have, like, videos up here? You know? Also not ready for early access? That isn't true. Early access is totally fun. Early access can be as early as you want it to be. It's nothing wrong with that whatsoever. Not, not at all. No issues there. You know? I also... I would want an explanation... <sighs> of what a respawn ticket is. Because I don't know what that means. I don't play games like this, so I don't know what it means. And I guarantee there's going to be other people that don't know what it means, too. Yeah. So it's important. Why is Tarkov taking so long for beta? I mean, Google Gmail was like six years in beta. Who gives a shit? Does it having the tag of beta on it really bother you that much when you're playing the video game? Or do you just play Tarkov? Right? <laughs> Who gives a shit? <laughs> Alrighty. I'm gonna go sleep. I am I am not feeling great. My voice is on fire. So I'm gonna do that. Yeah, Warframe is still in beta, is it actually? Is Warframe actually in beta? Warframe in beta. Do you wanna know one of the reasons that games stay in beta for a super long period of time? tax purposes. A lot of the time they get marked down as research and development when it comes down to costs internal to the company. So if it's still in beta, it still counts as research and development, which means it gets marked off in taxes in a different way. A, which is why Gmail was in beta for so long. Even though it had millions of users. Isn't that fraud? No, it's not. It's tax avoidance. Tax fraud is very different. Welcome to legal tax avoidance. No, not evasion. Avoidance. Avoidance, chat. <laughs> you're not evading the taxes. You're avoiding them. It's different. Avoidance and evasion are very different. <laughs> Loopholes. All right, we're going to go find somebody to raid. I am not feeling good.
But I hope you guys had a fun time. Sorry I didn't stream the full 12 hours like I normally do, but I am slug mode dude. I am not feeling good. Um, I know who you can raid. I know who you can raid. Somebody I never get to. A really good friend of mine, actually. He's, um, he's very funny. If you guys like dry humor, you're definitely going to like his stream. Because he will spend 50 years setting up a joke just to have it fail live on stream. And it's, <laughs> for me, it's the funniest shit on the planet. It's hilarious to watch. It is, it is really, really funny for me to watch. So, we're going to raid in-game asylum. He's a funny dude. And I don't think I've gotten to raid him in ages. It has been a very long time because he's always asleep by the time that I end my streams. So, you guys have a wonderful night. Good night, everybody. Fill this chat with bongos. Do it. Fill this chat with bongos. Yeah, my core temps, dude. It's just taking my core temperature, alright? It's not weird. It's not weird. Every human being does that. Don't make it weird. It's not weird. It's not weird.